takes ownership of it, has seven freshmen that are hey, key players today, around him, no excuses. He is big day very the, uh, well respected you know, by all excited, his teammates and coaches, and he became an day, instant so leader when he transferred into that you guys well, join me here. Too, he started out at Nevada, and Chris Alta, a long-time head coach, right, and one of the pistol officers, so well. well. Colin Kaepernick had a very Stay candid conversation with him and said, with what we like to do, you're probably never going to play here. So then he transferred by myself at the moment, bro. I told everybody to bring him in the common drafts or in the draft since the AFL NFL merger in 1970. Mike Perez, Ed Luther, and Steve DeBerg in 1977, who had the history of just falling right behind the worst quarterbacks you could possibly fall by. He was behind Roger Staubach in Dallas. He was behind Joe Montana in San Francisco. Everywhere Steve DeBerg always went, he seemed to find oh, yeah, Hall of Famer in front of me. It's never going to happen. We mentioned A.J. McCarron. He's been an interesting situation because this is a kid that did nothing but win. And he said something at the comment, which I thought was very interesting. He said, I feel like because all I've done is win, people have held that against me. Any truth to that? I don't think so. No, I, that's, I don't think that's held against anybody. I think it is a case where it doesn't necessarily matter at the pro level how many games you won. It's obviously if you have the physical athletic ability and the intangibles and everything else you need. As I said before, Todd, we have to see if he's a right-handed Matt Liner. Is his arm good enough? Is he just a system fit? I think let's go with offense. Yeah. He could maybe be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Put yourself in his shoes. He goes 36 and four as a starter, wins two national championships, and every all of a sudden the college football season ends, and all everyone's talking about is negative. All right, pick is in Philadelphia. Of a whole round, number 101 overall. The Philadelphia Eagles select Jalen Watkins, defensive back from Florida. Okay, this is interesting. Jalen Watkins, what, what the defensive back speak? out of Florida, is the half brother of Sammy Watkins, who went fourth overall in this draft. And when we started this process a year ago, Mel, we were talking about uh, Marcus uh, Roberson, we were talking uh, about uh, Luchez Kirifoy, uh, uh, and Jalen Watkins. It's not surprising. Because after you did the tape and watch this year, and then you look at some of the times with the other guys, not surprising that he's the first of these Florida uh, corners to come off yes, the, the board. He was the most consistent. He, brought, uh, he ran the best 40 times, and he became a ball hawk and a guy that you could really rely upon in the moment. He was late in his career. He was late in his career. He was late in his safety and defense. He starts at safety. He starts at corner pass. He's third leading tackler. He liked up his safety. 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 He liked up his Jalen and Sammy have never played on the same football team together. They exchange text messages before every game. And I'm Sammy Jalen has this to say, I can't put into words how proud I am of him. And why would the Eagles be proud to have a playmaking corner, hopefully? Well, their pass defense was dead last in the NFL. Last year. 290 yards per game. They definitely need to upgrade that situation. So that, of course, is what the Eagles have done, going with Jalen Watkins after taking a defensive tackle on a couple of wide receivers earlier in the draft. But then we get to the case of Michael Sam trying to become the first openly gay athlete drafted in the NFL after oh, yeah, Missouri, SEC well, Co-Defensive well, Player of the Year. For more on Michael Sam and what to expect, let's go upstairs to our six-time NFL Executive of the Year, Bill Polian. Bill, Michael Sam said at the combine after he made the announcement in February that he is gay. He wants to be judged as a football player, and he will be inside the locker room. But you know, having dealt with all kinds of things with your time with the Colts, the Bills, and the Panthers, there will be so much more than football interest in Michael Sam for the team that drafts him. How should the team handle that that picks him? Here's how you have to handle it. You have to recognize that your public relations department is probably not equipped to handle the maelstrom that will come from mainstream and even non-mainstream media, non-football media, non-sports media. So you've got to get outside help to deal with that. You also have to isolate Michael from that. Let Michael be a football player. Let him meet the media one time, as Manti Teo did, and then go away and become a football player and let others handle and speak to whatever the sociological issues may be. He can't succeed if he has to have a foot in both camps. In order for him to succeed, he has to have both feet solidly uh, planted in the football camp. 
All right, Bill, thanks very much. So that's what the team should expect and how they should handle it, according to Bill, when they draft him. And that leads us to the question, who will draft him? And what are we hearing about that? For more on that, let's go back up to the other side of the balcony where ESPN Insiders Adam Schefter and Chris Mortensen are there. Ward, Adam, what are you hearing about the team that may take that draft pick and go with Michael Sam today? Trey, before we go to specifics, a couple of things to keep in mind here. I speak to a couple of teams during the offseason who said that even before the combine began and Michael Smith came out as the first openly gay player trying to make it into the NFL, one team said it had classified him as an undrafted free agent, taking him off the board then before this announcement even occurred. And so there are certain teams that won't even look at him just for his football abilities alone. Well, there's no question the, the league is monitoring this, but there are teams out there that look at this guy and see a guy who has a very high level of effort, great motor. Uh, you know, when I look at a team, somebody who feels like they have a, the right type of organization, right type of leadership in different places in the locker room among players, certainly with their head coach in the front office, I think of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Rooney family that owns them, owns them, like Tom and their head coach and some of those veterans that they still have left over. So that's one team that I, I think about. The Pittsburgh series is certainly one. And they've got compensatory draft picks in the sixth round, which will be an area to watch out for if the Pittsburgh Steelers were to go ahead and decide to make that decision, Trey. Right. All right, Morton Adam, thanks very much. By the way, already by not being drafted, he's made a little bit of history. He's the first player since the first defensive player here in the SEC since Kamiko Ryan in 2006 who went in the second round to not go in the first round of the draft. And again, when Michael Sam is drafted, we will have that moment for you and we'll bring it to you in conjunction with the ESPYs who are giving Michael Sam the Arthur Ashe Award for courage and bravery uh, in sports. So we'll have that to look forward to today. We'll keep you updated on that. Meanwhile, we have Another pick to keep you updated on. The Washington Redskins have made a selection, and they've got a run on defensive backs. Now it's Bashad Freeland, the cornerback out of Clemson. It's a neat area. This is a team in the secondary, both safety and corner, could use some help. Bashad Freeland had a good year, a very good year for the Clemson Tigers. Look at that. Leading the Tigers in pass plays on the third team. Five years and a half, 197 pounds. Pretty good athlete. You think about his size, his toughness, his aggressiveness. That was evident game after game. This is a kid that had five tackles for loss. Four interceptions, did a good job, fits and tackles with 74. What I want to see more discipline and coverage and making tackles. A little overly aggressive at times, missing some open field tackles. But he came on this year, played well, only ran a 4 6 2 at the combine. But when you put together the tape and you watch game to game, he shows up, he's tough, he's physical, and he did a pretty good job overall in coverage and in run support. I like this pick because I, I think you have to put him in the right position to succeed. They're going to sure. have deep coverage over the top of him. They're not going to ask him to turn and run with yeah. fast receivers. Allow him to play some underneath zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow him to press so guys. He's only going to be 22 <laughs> years old as a rookie. Still yeah, developing so. as a player. Yeah, so. He does miss some tackles now. I don't take over aggressive over a lot of the other tape that I see from the cornerback position. Yeah. He's got at least physical, he's willing, like you said. That translates well to special teams. Well, it was a three year starter. Yes, Clemson. So that speaks volumes. Yeah. Let's just as we look at this board here for the Washington Redskins. We knew that they had most of their offensive weapons set going into the draft, the trade, or not the trade, the signing of Deshaun Jackson after he was released by Philadelphia. Then you get Morgan Moses, uh, who Todd Steele perfectly said yesterday, say it. it's a cab ride to get around this guy as long as he can move out of Virginia. Spencer Long, one of a couple of guys, name Long, that have played on the line for Nebraska, and Trent Murphy, the kid out of Stanford. They've addressed some needs, and they hope they protect Ryan Kerrigan and Brian Arakto with the line out of Trent Murphy, a tough kid out of Stanford. Meanwhile, Atlanta has made the selection, and it's Devontae Freeman, the running back out of Florida State. This is my guy right here, Devontae Freeman, running back Florida State. He's going to step in day one and be a pro in the Atlanta Falcons. He's going to add some toughness. This kid, like I said earlier, doesn't like football, doesn't love football. He lives for football. The Atlanta Falcons need more guys like this. Straight tough guys who can bring their lunch to work every single day. He will contribute to the Falcons immediately. Well, listen, they need him to. They were last in the NFL in rushing last year at 78 yards per game. Obviously, the injury to Steven Jackson early in the season didn't help that, but... This is a kid, if you don't know his story, you want to talk him. about a character guy, a guy who will be the football in the locker room. The eldest of seven children in Miami's Liberty City Ports and Beans Project, one of the toughest areas of all of Miami. 
when he was 13 years old, he had to hold down three jobs to sort of be the man of the household and make sure all his other siblings were clothed and fed. And of all people, the guy had told him at 13, you have to stand up and be that man you can't have a normal childhood. Luther Campbell, Uncle Luther, Uncle Lucas, they call him, all those Miami Hurricane fans, okay. the lead singer of Two Wild Crew has become very active in youth football <laughs> in the Miami area, a big reason why. Well, I'm kidding me, I was telling about 13 that. was holding down three jobs to make sure the rest of his family was taken care of. But more on this, let's go upstairs to Bill Foley. Bill, what do you think of Devontae Freeman? I love this pick. He was part of a three-back uh, rotation at Florida State. He reminds me of Dominic Rhodes, who we had with the uh, Indianapolis Colts. He's an energizer. When he carries the ball, everybody feels better. Your offensive line perks up. The crowd perks up. This is exactly what the Falcons needed to energize their running game. But if you have three jobs, you got energy. No question, Bill. Thanks very much. When he was 13 years old, he was cutting grass, working at a car wash, and also working at a funeral home just to make ends meet. Devontae Freeman, you got one job now is to be the best running back you can be for the Atlanta Falcons if it's sorely needed. We are just getting started on day four of the draft. We will see what unfolds as we come back. Lots of big names, lots of quarterbacks still out there. We'll see what happens. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first a passenger crossover to offer an EPA estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales Event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. What does that do? Not sure. Looks awesome. We heat the room to 110 degrees. Uh-huh. She's fine. Oh, you're right! What'd you get? No clue. But it's jacked with protein. Wow. In a world filled with fats, it's nice to get back to basics. Seriously, dude? Meat, cheese, and nuts. Seriously. New B3 Portable Protein Pack. It's 13 grams of serious protein without taking itself too serious. It's the original protein. It's Oscar Mayer. How do you know? That was actually pretty cool. That bunny's hungry. Oh. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Hey, you go. Adaptive one brakes, guaranteed noise free for life. Noise free. Yeah, thanks to Napa Know How. Oh, hard, hey, brakes, dude. Sorry about last night. <laughs> You're still mad at me. They don't make a sound. Brakes. Come on, I get out. I get out. <laughs> Insist on adaptive one brakes. The Big King you love, just chicken down. Introducing the new Chicken Big King with two crispy chicken patties and our signature king sauce. The new Chicken Big King, now part of our two for five dollar menu. Only at Burger King, or taste is king. Chicken Jimmy's eat real in an opposing lead. The next best must rise in Brooklyn. Portland heads home with a lot to prove and little time as the top seeded Spurs hit their stride. The NBA playoffs. Heat Nets at 8 Eastern on NBC. Spurs Blazers at 10.30 on ESPN tonight. ESPN's cover to the 2014 NFL Draft is presented by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. And in part by GNC the official vehicle of the NFL, and new D3 portable protein pack. It's the original protein. It's Oscar Mayer. 
back inside Radio City Music Hall. The Jets have made their selection, and it's we got a run on Jalen's. Two Jalen's going to start the fourth round. It's Jalen Saunders, the wide receiver out of Oklahoma, Mel. Yeah, it wasn't Fresno State where he did a real good job. 12 touchdown reception back we talked about early this year as a sophomore in 2011. Average 21.3 yards a catch at Fresno State. Goes out to Oklahoma. You think about, okay, what's he going to do with the Sooners? Again, produces some nice plays, both in the passing game and as a punt returner. That again will be a future right away. It might be throughout his career. This is a dynamic return man. This past year, had a 15.4 yard for a punt return at two for touchdown. Not solved in two games. Now, one more thing. But a reverse and a punt return could go from zero to 100 like that. And why are we showing this footage? That's his Uncle Webster Slaughter. Pretty good. Played 12 years in the NFL, most notably with the Cleveland Browns. He was a two time Pro Bowl and had over 8,100 receiving yards in his career. And oh, by the way, as you look at the Jets selection board, this is the first Oklahoma player we've had taken in this year's draft. It is the latest we've had to say Cooper Sooner since 1997. So two Jalen's starting things off early in the fourth round here. The, the Patriots have now made their selection and going for a little bit. I love centers, and we've got Brian Stork out of Florida State. I'll tell you what, an underrated football player, Brian Stork. You talk about a guy who was a key and started 13 games at center in 2012. Started at both guard and center early on. Like the way he sustains his blocks in the run game. This is a kid can really get after you. And pass protection as well. He can anchor against the bigger defensive backers they face. I mean, he's not going to be pulled over. This kid is strong. He's powerful. He's smart and he's versatile. Well, yeah. And I think when you look at the ability to play that center spot, the guard spot as oh, well, he's yeah. a very yeah. underrated player for the Seminoles. All that skill position talent led by Jameis Winston, Devontae Freeman, they had offensive line, the two guards, and Cameron Irving left tackle. They have a great future in the NFL. But this kid was a key, pivotal performer for the Seminoles. He grew on me, Mel. At first, I, I watched the tape and I, just, I saw a very average player in terms of his physical ability. But as we talked about yesterday, Trent. Centers don't have to be the most exceptional athletes. This guy makes does everything right technically. He takes the right angles. He finishes blocks. He's not an overwhelming road grader, but he sets the tone with his aggressive play. And I love a note that I got talking to coaches, not overly vocal, but when he speaks, everyone in this locker room listens. Well, I think another thing is the New England Patriots offensively are very scheme-driven. Jimbo Fisher of Florida State, that's now that's the sixth, seven of the so far in this draft. draft. Probably the most sophisticated offensive yeah. system in college football. He's had to learn a lot. He's had to apply a lot. That means his transition in the NFL will be much easier. Well, he did win the 2013 Remington Award, presented annually to the best center. And oh, by the way, this is the sixth Florida State Seminole selected the most of any team so far. And what you would expect from the national champs. And, and what do you need if you're the New England Patriots? They have interior offensive line issues. They, they're trying to solidify the group. And when you have a quarterback in Tom Brady, what's the most important thing? Direct traffic. Right, 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 right up front. Because you don't want him to have to move off of his spot. So this is a big pickup for the Patriots. But Guess you know what? We, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I have the San Francisco 49ers. Amazing draft. They just selected Bruce Ellington from South Carolina. Todd and I have been saying he's the best player on the board. I thought he was the best player on the board midway through the previous round. Look at Mel. And just it's 49ers in a different direction. Unbelievable. Good. Here's a Keep big going. No, no. Player Your show, baby. The Keep only, going. The only player in the top 60 that was available coming into today. Preach, Mel. And Ellington, we talked about the point guard for three years in South Carolina, still developing. And I think he's got explosive qualities with the instant acceleration. Also, great route running skills and very solid hands. I'm surprised he lasted this long, obviously, and I think he's only going to get better in the NFL with more game experience. Ironic. I guess I can't criticize because Terrence West became a Brown because of the move with the 49ers. 49ers, this is a pick from the Cleveland Browns. What are they doing? Well, and, and, and Terrence West. They want to get Terrence West. Now, this is a pick they would have had. Bruce Ellington doesn't go to the Cleveland Browns. goes to the San Francisco 49ers. The rich get rich. So go look at the 49ers draft right, and was... add Stevie Johnson into it, which I'm sure Morton Adam will inform us later, basically was a free pick. 
because of what they did in this draft. The pick they gave away to get Stevie Johnson, they've now gotten back. Right. So they've dominated the draft. Pick up Stevie Johnson two years ago was a top shelf receiver in the National Football League and already added it to arguably the most talented roster in football. It's kind of a drop the mic walk off the Trump ball for you, right? Well, he wasn't just a basketball player. As a freshman, he led South Carolina in scoring. It's just under 13 points per game. But you mentioned it. When you look at this draft, and we do, we all think a couple of teams have done pretty well. Is there a team that has executed a game plan to this point better than San Francisco? They've really frustrated me real quick. St. Louis, they've been exceptional. Right. But then you look at San Francisco and say, oh, they've been just as good. They, yeah. They're better than us. In the same years. division. Right. That NFC that West is oh, going to be something to watch this year, I tell you. Okay, so let's talk about quarterbacks. We have not had one taken yet today. It is Savage, McCarron, Logan Thomas, Aaron Murray, Zach Mettenberger, Keith Wenning of Ball State also. And you mentioned David Fales. Lots of guys to be uh, taken. So which one will go first? And what's the latest? We're hearing about which quarterback may go. For that, let's go back upstairs to the balcony and check in with the insider duo, our dynamic duo. I'll let you guys decide who's Adam Schefter. Thank you very much, Trey. The next quarterback quarterback hot spot in the draft will be the St. Louis Rams at 110. There's been a lot of talk that the Rams could go quarterback. There certainly are a handful of teams looking for quarterbacks today. And the focus really will be on three SEC quarterbacks. The M&Ms. We have A.J. McCarron. We have Zach Mettenberger. And we have Aaron Murray. When you talk about A.J. McCarron going through the interview process, a number of NFL executives said that A.J. McCarron who was unexpectedly slipped into the fourth round of the draft when some people thought he would go as high as the second round of the draft rubbed them the wrong way. Didn't come off very well to executives during the interview process. That's one of the reasons that he slipped. You're still talking about a guy who's been instrumental in Alabama's success, who has the chance to be a really good quarterback, tweeted earlier today that he's got a real chip on his shoulder about the way this is unfolding. Just wait to see what he's going to do at the next level. But NFL teams weren't thrilled with what they saw when they saw A.J. McCarron during the interview process. They're talking with about the SEC. Even Chip Kelly, the Philadelphia Eagles coach, when he drafted Jordan Matthews, the wide receiver from Vanderbilt, said you get great tape, game tape, on all these SEC players against defenses and cornerbacks for pro-style guys, pro-athletes, and coaches who are getting well-paid, throw pro-style defenses at these guys. So guys like Aaron Murray, Zach Mettenberger, Murray from Georgia, Mettenberger from LSU, those guys are coming off late-season ACL injuries. Murray a little bit undersized. Now, Mettenberger, he played for Cam Cameron, the former uh, Ravens offensive coordinator, certainly been a coordinator in the NFL a long time. So people got to see a variety of throws there. But his diluted sample at the combine raised some red flags. Of course, he said it's because the physical therapist told him to drink a lot of water. But that came back as a red flag. And there were some character questions when he actually transferred from Georgia and went, eventually got to LSU because Aaron Murray was well secured in that position with the Georgia Bulldogs trade. All right, Ward Adam, thanks very much. And, you know, as you look at this, one of the things that I think gets players sometimes in the wrong mindset is what the agents tell them. And for example, I, I, AJ McCarron came up, I said, what are you hearing? He said, anywhere between 16 and 35 is where he was being told he might be taken. Of course, that's nowhere near where he was going to be. Like, nowhere near anything you guys heard, correct, about where he might go. You put on the tape and you see that he's, he's, a, he's a late day two, early day three quarterback. And this process is, is frustrating and it's sobering for a lot of players because, especially in A.J. McCarron, just put yourself in his shoes, as I said before. You win 30, you're 36 and 4 as a starter. You win two national championships as a starter. And then all of a sudden, the season's over. And you turn on ESPN, you turn on NFL Network, you start watching this draft coverage, and everyone's talking about what you can't do or what you're missing and why you're going to project as a day two or day three pick. He's frustrated. He's angry. He doesn't understand why, and I get that. But when you look at the evaluation, you study the tape, you don't see exceptional qualities. And he has some, a lot of work, I think, to do on his mechanics, but he is a winner. And he can steer a team if it has all the parts in place. Well, I want to dig a little deeper on the process thing, though, because who are you listening to? Yes. That's exactly right. right. Here's what happens in this process is you're talking to a coach, let's say. So you think coach is the decision maker, and coach wants to date you. Coach thinks you're pretty good looking. Hey, I like you, AJ. You're tall. You're good looking. You're a winner. You have a lot of traits we like. 
Well, AJ, quarterback, if anybody interprets that as, well, this guy wants to marry me. No, he wants to date you. He wants you to like him back. The issue in this process is who is going to marry you, who's totally invested in you, and who's making that decision. And that's the decision maker for whatever the, whichever organization you're talking about. So a lot of people want to date these quarterbacks and tell them how pretty they are. Very few want to marry them and be long-term invested with them. And that sort of is some of the problems, for lack of a better term, that have come up with this extra two weeks that we had going into this year's draft. You get more and more voices in your head, whether it's one of your representatives, whether it's one of those coaches. And suddenly, you want to filter out the bad and you want to focus in on the good more than anything else. And that sometimes can be the detriment of the player. Listen, it's no different than high school recruiting. These big colleges are giving out nine offers to quarterbacks. And every one of those quarterbacks thinks, wow, I'm going to be the dude at Alabama. Well, no, it's a contingent offer, right? It's a, we'll only let you commit if you come to camp. Once we've decided we want to marry you, not just date you. It's the same thing in the NFL. Uh, and again, it's the process, and we'll see where we are with not only A.J. McCarron, but also Aaron Murray and Zach Mettenberger, but of, of those three, nobody won more at the collegiate level than A.J. McCarron. Where will these quarterbacks go will be a huge part of day three of the draft here. We'll continue right after this. <laughs> At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first eight passenger crossover to offer an EPA estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales Event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. My name is Johnny Williams, and my dream was to have a beer with my friends at America's Highest Bar. Shock Top made it happen. A life full of flavor deserves a beer full of flavor. Shock Top, Belgian style unfiltered wheat. Live life unfiltered. Ooh, I'm absolutely a spray of French toast. Top with cinnamon roll plenty and cream cheese icing. Cinnamon lovers drink. Don't miss new cinnamon swirl. One of three brioche French toasts at IHOP. It's like French toast. I have French toast. Yeah. For more than 60 years, Wrangler's been making jeans more comfortable. Feel good, wear strong. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans are built with a U-shaped construction. They don't cut into you like jeans with a V pattern. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. The Indy 500 has inspired a new tradition, the first Grand Prix of Indianapolis. Today at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. From the very minute you have this idea that you want to be in business, you need to have that card. Presentation is everything because they're not only first impression of you, but now you're handing them this product that really is kind of going to define your business in their mind pretty quick. You want a very thick uh, card that feels nice in your client's hand. I think it's nice to have a choice because sometimes you want a glossy card. But for other projects, I don't want necessarily want all that. Your business card is a reflection of you. It should say exactly what you want. With the range of design, stock, and finish options at Vistaprint, it will. Get 250 business cards starting at just $10. Plus, we'll give you the shipping for free. Just enter promo code TV250 at Vistaprint.com. That business card, when I make a connection with someone, has to be phenomenal. It has to be elegant and invoke all the things that Diamond stands for. Just that professionalism is going to make you, as a business owner, more successful. Just right off the bat. Vistaprint.com Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. We continue inside Radio City Music Hall, taking a look at the last five selections. Brian Stork, Bill. 
Remington winner for the best center. Goes to New England at 104. The point guard slash wide receiver that Mel and Todd both are, Bruce Ellington, goes to San Francisco as the Niners continue to do an exceptional job on this draft. Justin Ellis, the defensive tackle out of Oklahoma, goes to Louisiana. Cassius Marsh. Pressure, pressure, pressure. What won the Seahawks the Super Bowl? Goes to Seattle. At 108. And Russ Cockrell, quarterback hey, out of the two, goes to the Bills. Why is that significant? He is the first two player drafted before the second yeah. round. Since Chris Coons went in the sixth round in 2000, he's the highest two player drafted since Lenny Friedman, the offensive lineman, went in the late 90s. Lenny Friedman, of course, played with Mark Schlereth. Uh, a little bit in Denver. But Justin Ellis, let's talk about him. And Justin Ellis goes to the Oakland Raiders. Six one and a half, three 334 pounds. He entered the program at 390 pounds. His nickname, Jelly Bean. Like it. As you would guess, mm -hmm. he's a two-gap space oh, eater. He's a big run stopper, nose tackle that fits well in the middle of your defense. He's not going to be much of a pass rusher. But when fresh, he's going to give you a good effort. And when he keeps his pads Raiders. down, he does a nice job of taking up space and taking on those two blockers. I think this is a good fit for the open lane. Players have done a really nice job in this track. We've been a sleeper so far. If you look at what they've done, Will Mack, obviously with the first double pick, and everybody loves Will Mack. I think they get their quarterback in the future in Derek Carr. Uh, and he has some time to develop now. He doesn't have to be thrown into the fire right away. Gabe Jackson, you guys both love him as Justin Ellis. Has those athletic traits you're looking for to be that space eater in the middle, big body, plays hard. Yeah, I'm excited to throw a bunch of big, tough guys yeah. that try to be more physical, obviously. You know what's interesting here, if you look at the Raiders draft and you look at the Cowboys draft, two teams that have struggled, not only on the field, but in the draft in the process the last couple of years. They seem to have made very sound. So whether they pan out is a is why. Separate, wise selection, smart board choices. Cassius Marsh, is he a smart selection for Seattle now? I think he is. Well, they're back and forth down to take Cassius Marsh, and you saw a guy who can bend and use his hands extremely well. This is a kid who's that very athletic. Think about what he did in the tight end. Operated tight end for a touchdown pass for the second straight year. But I like the fact that he can locate the ball, blue power type, hustles, plays in strong hands. What he needs to do is get more powerful. Lower body strength needs to improve. Upper body strength dramatically needs to improve. Well, he did 14 reps at the combine. Gets hooked. Has to get stronger, but a guy I think could be a rotation type. And that's what Pete Carroll wants. He's going to bring him early. He's going to bring him off and He's going to rotate. He's that guy's fresh in the fourth quarter. I just throw out there because he's so athletic. He didn't catch a touchdown pass each of the last two years. That's a tight end. Look at the Seattle Seahawks. Now, they start heating up, drafting right around round four. You throw John Snyder and Pete Carroll, Ruffle Stilskin. They turn head into bull <laughs> in these rounds. And you look what they have coming up now. They have 111, they got 132, 172. Actually, they just traded one okay. to Cincinnati. But look for the Seahawks now in these mid rounds to develop not just starters, but possible Pro Bowl players, because that's what they learned how to do. Well, just go back to Richard Sherman in the fifth round. Who was the Super Bowl MVP? Malcolm Smith, linebacker that Pete Carroll knew out of USC, taken in the seventh round. You know, this, this is, for lack of a better term, has been modus operandi. That's Latin, by the way, uh, for the Seattle Seahawks. Todd, 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 Todd. Tell me about Russ Cockrell. Russ Cockrell, Todd, Todd. Career starter and overachiever for, the, for Duke. He really, he's got the size. He's 6'1", he's 191 pounds. He didn't really run real well at the combine, ran into the four sixes, cut down that, or the four fives. Cut down that time into the four fours of his pro day. This guy has exceptional instincts and recognition skills. He doesn't waste any steps. Fast eyes, quick to diagnose, impressive awareness in space, and he's a coach on the field type. He doesn't have the biggest hands, and he drops some balls, but he still has very good career production. 41 pass breakups, 12 interceptions in 49 starts. He's never going to be an elite outside starter, but I think he's ready to play in the NFL right now. You know, I'm just curious. You have been an exceptional evaluator of talent for, what, 10, 15 years now? Maybe two. I was marginal. Two of the 15 is going to call me last night. I'm mean, being nice. <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make is, whenever you are talking about a selection, and of course the fans here at Radio City Music Hall are fantastic. Do you hear it? Every time you, all you hear is, Todd, 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 Todd. From fans here, from fans of the, basically, the, the, thank you. Thank you. Your crowning achievement 
is being mocked by Frank Elliott. It has changed my life and not for the better. No. <laughs> no, I think it's fantastic. So you just keep doing what you do. And Frank, you're doing what you do. Uh, by the way, just, right. yeah. who made him a star? Yeah, yeah. You. Yeah. 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 See, it's really a big one. Our arms get tired by ourselves on the back right here. We'll move along from this touching family moment to the next pick in the draft. Rams with the safety, Maurice Alexander out of Utah State. Rugged football player, Tyler. You know how many kids have the kind of size you want? 61 and a quarter, 220. Who from linebacks for the safety? No footballs off the team in 2012. Came back this past year. 80 tackles, 9 tackles for loss. Three and a half sacks, an interception, six pass breakup, and two fourth fumble. This kid is aggressive. He's a big time hitter. He's athletic. All state football, wrestling, track in high school. Put together one heck of a campaign. Mo Alexander did. Yeah, you have TJ McDonald. Think about what he's going to be able to do now that you have a Reese Alexander in the mix. Also being a big time special teams player as well. This kid will hit you. He shows up. He's impactful. He did a heck of a job coming back here. So sitting out from here and going to linebacker to safety. And Lamarcus joining, too. So you've got this front four that's exceptional. Like you got a bunch of guys that are going to get heat on the quarterback. What do you want? Guys behind them that can go make plays on the ball when quarterbacks are forced to put the ball up before they want to. And that's what they're doing. They're continuing from last year's draft of linebacker. Now this year's draft, two defensive back guys that can play the ball. You know the only problem with the way it's draft, which is exceptional, it's absolutely exceptional. the same guys the same and Seattle, obviously, but, but those two teams have done a yeah. national job of working the board and finding players that they believe <laughs> will get for their needs. So we'll see how that pans out. And say, Lewis has done a great job. Well, there he is, Michael Sam, ladies and gentlemen, waiting, perhaps a little anxiously at this point, to see and listen to when his name will be heard. Trying to become the first open UK athlete drafted in the National Football League, and again. It could be a very historic afternoon for Michael Sam. We'll have it for you when it happens. The draft continues right after this. Keep it on the ball, okay? Yes. All right, buddy. All right, here we go again. You ready? Ready. Focus on the ball, all right? Nice. Nice. Very nice. Give your backyard a fresh new look this spring. Just in time for Mother's Day, you get this two-person swing for $98. Wondering what that is? That, my friends, is everything. With the Quicksilver card from Capital One, you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on everything you purchase. Not just everything at the hardware store, not everything until you hit your cash back limit. Quicksilver can earn you unlimited 1.5% cash back on everything you can possibly imagine. Say it with everything. One more time. Everything. With that in mind, what's in your pocket? If they make this, I'll eat the blazing wings. <laughs> This is no time for a change of heart, because before contracts with our size of Texas, a man's word meant something. So get back out there and show them what you got. That's good! Grab a seat. The game is on. This season's gonna be awesome. I'm going to be best friends with that guy and that guy. We're going to work so hard, our moves will have moves. I'm going to make my mom proud. Good game, good game, good game. We'll be doing this a lot. We're going all the way. But I only get to play if my coaches are heads up football certified. On an all new Guys Girls Room Games, this Mother's Day, it's a Triple J salute to mom. Today, it's all about honoring mom. We know that you're devoted mom and very talented. My boys are getting 
I'm so proud of the home for bringing home the bacon, baby. It's over the top crazy. It's the mother of all shows. Oh, this is a special day. I've got to bring a very special person in my life in. That's my mom, Penny. As Guy's mom kicks off a brand new season. Go on, mom. Go get him, lady. Guy's Grocery Games. All new season, all new games. Premieres tomorrow night at 8. Only on Food Network. You never told me Autotrader.com had new cars. I'd love them in 2014. These are sweet, but what kind of deal can I get? Okay, just special offers. Now, compare brand new cars from local dealers and special offers. Download so you can find the one new car your head and heart can agree on. Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. We continue inside Radio City News. Oh, see that building right there to the right, guys, with the whole squirrely statue right there? Time Life Building. My dad worked in there for 27 years. Time Life Building. A lot of memories in that building for me. A lot of memories being made inside Radio City Music Hall today as the draft continues with the fourth round. Yes. I love centers. Russell Bodine, center. Goes to Cincinnati, traded up to get this kid. Now, what do you think, for Todd? Uh, either way, I, I love centers that are big and strong and can play guard, too. And that's what Bodine brings to you, versatility and power. 42 reps on the bench press. Most of anyone at the end. 42 reps. 42 at 225. Most of anyone at the combine this year, and it doesn't matter at all unless you transfer to the field, and that's what he does. You see the power in his upper body. I like his awareness. Getting off of blocks, combination blocks, second level. This guy's a good football player. And third round grade on him, I think is a really strong pick for the rest. I think about the starting three games at guard this past season. Uh, you think about that, Todd, how important that is. Not only is he a powerful kid, he moves well. He gets to that and we fire out of that middle linebacker. It was a good anchor for North Carolina with the necessary yes, versus the as well to take the guard if you need him. By the way, uh, I always say I love centers. Apparently the NFL does too. This is the fifth center selected in the first four rounds. Most in a single draft since 2009 when six went in the first four rounds. Next pick up. Daquan Jones, shocker, another Penn State defensive lineman gets drafted. Big kid. I think about 6'3 three and 3 quarters, 322 pounds. Second year as a starter, lay for Penn State. That's a big line. 11 and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. Think about one of the guys who the tape that's really like to watch. Hold strong at the point, sheds the block in fast fashion, makes the run fast, but really can flat against the pass and get after the quarterback for a kid. 6'3 three and 3 quarters. Over 320 pounds. Think about his athletic ability. I like that. Plays with good leverage. Generates speed on the quarterback. And you can see some time at defensive end, despite that huge frame he brings to the defensive line. Fourth defensive lineman out of Penn State draft in the last three years, all coached by Larry Johnson, who's also done the likes of Jim Kennedy, Tom Ali, Aaron Nathan, Jared Hodrick, Courtney Brown, Michael Ames, all unbelievable players. And look at the Titans sack leaders last year. Jarrell Casey was there at 10 and a half. Derek Morgan at six. They're hoping to get an interior push from Daquan Jones out of Penn State. Cameron Wimbley has bounced around a little bit at three sacks as well. We continue to go through the picks and hey, one of the big boomers in the running back position last year, Andre Williams, interesting kid out of Boston College. He was a high school <laughs> yeah, really interesting kid. I spent the day with him doing a game day feature. He's teaching a class of incoming freshmen. He's writing a book. He does he writes poetry. And this guy is very unique as an individual, and teammates love him. What I love about him on the field, Guy's a grinder. He grinds out yards. He breaks tackles. They were eight, nine, ten man boxes every single week. And they continued to feed him the football and he continued to produce. He produced against this defense. It's pretty good. Florida State. He produced on third and long when they needed him and everyone was loaded up. He was there two minute drill. Let me repeat that. He was there two minute drill. The guy was the entire offense of DC this year. He is tough. He cannot catch the ball very well. He's not going to be a big help for the New York Giants. He's going to fit a role, and he brings that toughness and the inside power they need in the running back position. He works fits. He's a one-plane runner, downhill runner behind his pads. 
perfect fit for the New York Giants. Well, listen, he's an interesting kid in a lot of ways. You mentioned the poetry. His nickname on the Boston College team was Edgar, for Edgar Allan Poe. He was asked once, what would you do if you wouldn't play football? He said, I'd probably live in Madagascar with sheep and chickens and cows. That's actually sounds pretty good right now. This is a guy who we were has, talking about that last Don't time. do that. This is a guy who has a lot more going for him outside of football, but he was very productive on the football field last year for Boston College. He would read poetry before meetings. Uh, let's go upstairs to Bill Foley. Bill, do you like the poet slash running back, Andre Williams? I love the toughness. I love the Boston College smarts, as I'm sure Tom Coughlin does. He is a perfect Tom Coughlin player. I question acceleration in the hole, and that's the thing that separates great running backs in the NFL from just role players. I'm not sure he has the kind of acceleration in the hole that you need to really be great. Everything else is terrific. All right, Bill, thanks very much. Again, extrapolating on that point, at Madagascar it said, I go live the simple life and make my own cheese. So we'll see what if he doesn't make enough cheese in the NFL, maybe he'll move to Madagascar and have that going. An interesting choice, and obviously the Tom Coughlin connection going back to Boston College for the Giants. He's a running back. What about other running back trade possibilities? For that, let's go upstairs to ESPN insider Adam Shepard, who, by the way, also makes his own cheese. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Trey. We have a trade that just got completed moments ago. The Buffalo Bills traded a fourth-round pick next year to the Philadelphia Eagles for Bryce Brown, the running back. Now, that pick could be a third-round pick in 2016, depending on certain conditions. But you remember, earlier this offseason, the Philadelphia Eagles went out and traded a fifth-round draft choice for Darren Sproles. They now go get rid of Bryce Brown. Buffalo gets another running back with Craig Jackson and C.J. Spiller, both entering the last year of their contracts. Some uncertainty in Buffalo, and the Buffalo Bills have taken a step forward, getting Bryce Brown from the Philadelphia Eagles for a condition fourth round pick. All right, Adam, thanks very much. That trade makes a lot of sense, but Bryce Brown is one of those fascinating guys. He never started a game in college after moving around from Tennessee and other places, had flashes when he played for the Eagles, had a fumbling issue, and it is interesting in Buffalo because Fred Jackson, the pride of Coe College, has done a lot of work on those legs. You wonder how much more he has left. He gives them another weapon to work with here. Uh, we'll see how that works out for Buffalo. Meanwhile, we have another pick. It is Aaron Colvin, the cornerback out of Oklahoma. Well, suddenly got to run on Sooners. And he goes to Jacksonville. Not the 49ers. They're usually red shirt players coming off an injury. The Jaguars get Aaron Cole. But this is a real shame, Todd. You see him injured. Go down there at Mobile. Sing your ball practice. But this season, this past year at Oklahoma, another good campaign. Very consistent football player. Understands how to play the game. Very assignment savvy is Aaron Colvin. Versatile as well. Back as a strong safety in 2011 with the Sooners. Led to Oklahoma with 84 tackles. Pretty good ball skills. Good contributor against the run. Doesn't have tremendous upside. But when you think about where he can play at the pro level, cornerback or safety, he looked to be probably an early to mid second round pick. Then, down at the Senior Bowl practice, had a great Monday. Looked like maybe he could maybe move into the late first time. They made a fortunate injury for the ACL, ACL on Tuesday at the Senior Bowl practice. Now it's probably actually red-shirted, getting ready for 2015. Yeah, and that rarely, rarely occurs. And I think he had a great start to that week, and I think it helped him. And I really, maybe he drops around, around and a half, but at the end of the day, he's a really good football player. Shaq Evans, the next player off the board, is someone who really benefited from that senior bowl this year. A lot of guys did. Two-time All Big 12 selection in Colvin. And keep this in mind about Williams. We gave you a little bit. He's hoping to write uh, a very nice verse with the Giants. Andre Young has already written 80 pages of a book called A King, A Queen, and A Conscience. We'll see if he puts that all together and can finish that book. As now he'll be running with Tom Coughlin and the Giants. Stay with us. Right here at Table 9, little Lauren Driscoll and her dad shared a special moment during our daddy-daughter night, and Chili's helped a peewee football team raise money to get to state, and that was just at one table, at one Chili's, in one community. More life happens here. Efficiency. Performance. Safety. Integrated technology. These are things you can learn. And then there are the things you're just born with. 
Now, well qualified lessees can lease a well equipped Dart SXT for 149 per month or get a $2,000 cash allowance. A lot of people are going to say, yeah, here, the unknown. The thing is, you're not a lot of people. So you ask one question why not? That uncomfortable feeling is your comfort zone. It's refreshing. And refreshment is what you're searching for. Fewer calories, fewer carbs, more of the forwards. Make a little ultra. Long live the ultra. Chili's new mix and match fajitas with fresh new toppings. More life happens here. Keith McGill, Raiders. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You can qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. We also have other pain-relieving braces available for shoulder, ankle, and your back. Call the number on your screen right now to immediately receive a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost. Homeowner Protection Services can help save your home. We specialize in foreclosure assistance, and that's all we do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Homeowner Protection Services now. Homeowner Protection Services has a network of attorneys, and our agents are available to speak to you now. New laws are in effect that may save your home. So call Homeowner Protection Services now. Oh. Tied in. Who's it? Yeah. Okay. Welcome back inside Radio City Music Hall. We continue here. This is the end of the fourth round. Take a look at what's going on with the New York Jets. And they take wide receiver Shaq Evans out of UCLA. By the way, they took Jalen Saunders earlier this round. First time in the common draft there. The Jets have drafted two wide receivers in a round. Shaq Evans. He doesn't have elite top end speed, but he does somehow get vertical at times. He saw that big catch he had against Nebraska earlier in the season to that uh, comeback victory for UCLA. He's got really good hands. He's kind of average to go a little above average everywhere else. I think when he gets in the league, he's going to have to establish himself. He's going to have to improve his rut running ability. He's probably going to level off as a number three, number four possession receiver type. He started his career at Notre Dame, transferred, much more productive this past season. As I was mentioning earlier, wow. he had a great week at the Senior Bowl, and I think that really helped him and turned a lot of teams on to what he potentially can do if he continues to develop. Well, it's pretty clear that whoever's playing quarterback, what they're trying to do now, obviously outside of the first pick of Calvin Pryor, is to get them weapons. You have Jalen Saunders and Shaq Evans, they took Jason Morrow, the tight end out of Texas Tech. And what did we say all last year, Trent? The Jets were bereft of playmakers on offense. Yeah, and everybody wanted to come to the defender oh, this thing. decision about Geno Smith, and you yeah. can't do that until you surround a quarterback with yeah. some guys that can make plays. The Jets are going to I like to move to tight end, and I'll get the receivers late, and obviously Rex Ryan adding to his already stout defense. I like what the Jets are doing. You can't decide on a quarterback's career after one year? Well, I, I think the world thinks you can. No, I personally don't think it's fair. Well, you know, this year didn't even get a calendar year. So, you know, quarterback. This is the no fair league. league. So, uh, I thought that was the no fun league. It's both. So, it's both. Uh, so, we'll see if people dunk a little bit. We all love it. You know, it's, it's interesting. We're absolutely. <laughs> it's I mean, awesome. It is going to be interesting to see how this shapes up for the quarterback situation for the Jets because that was the. That was the refrain we had all of last year. It doesn't matter who the quarterback was because they didn't have anybody they could throw to. 
not only you saw all those draft picks that they just took, they also went and got Eric Decker. Say what you want about Decker, and whether or not maybe they overpaid for him with a $31 million free agent contract. He's a proven receiver yep. that had 87 catches last year for the Denver Broncos. And it's development. I, I can't say that. This is developmental week. Marty Morgan went offensive coordinator. Ooh. They will do great quarterback developments oh. in this league. They will do everything in their power to get the ball. Oh, my God. From the standpoint, teaching them the offense standpoint. To understanding the complex defensive schemes is going to see. None of that matters. Unless you have teams that can hit open, so you can get the ball and get it out, and let the better athletes go do something with it. Let the Jets win. We'll see how the Jets win. Get off the ladder. Raiders starting. The Raiders won with a defensive back, Keith McGill, out of Utah. Oh, actually, Keith was a preseason converted him. To us, uh, cornerback. They didn't train. Everybody wants that Seattle Seahawks cornerback. Everybody wants Richard Sherman. You look at Keith McGill, six three and a half, two hundred eleven pounds, four five one speed. That they got over the vertical jump. They say, hey. than the 40 time at the next level prove that he has that ability but we've seen a lot of great running backs run 4 40 times and go have success in this game he says i have great game speed i'm not a track guy and that may be true but the character issues that you have to be concerned about in december 2012 charged with a misdemeanor assault and disorderly conduct those charges were dropped but then in, uh, later on he went to an arizona men's basketball game at the McHale center got into an argument with a security official there and played the do you know who i am card not a good card never what you want he was suspended for the season opener because of that one so we'll see if the dean gary can stay on the street and narrow and maybe be a, a solid backup to matt Forte. okay it's the guy not named Sammy Watkins, the wide receiver out of Clemson. Octavius Bryant going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like this pay, Pittsburgh Steelers, you're a wide receiver, big physical guy. Todd, I know you love this guy. He's, he's what you're looking for. First of all, he's got the size. He's 6'4", 211 pounds, and then this speed runs a 4'4'2 at that size. He's got great flexibility and body control. Yeah, he's got the open his hips, jumps to the football, he's outstanding. I'm going to take that and start saying, wait a second, why are we talking about him as a potential late first, second rounder? Well, there is some character damage, some character and some intangible concerns with him, and also some drops. But what you like about him, as I said, his ability to get down the field. Maybe Ben is going to be one of his He needs receivers to get across the field and track. Look at him yeah, tracking that ball over his right. shoulder. It's what he does best. That's what I said before, too. The acceleration of the line is going to be the there. For his size, you just don't see many guys like this. You know, he's a great record. I'm saying he's AJ Green. I'm just saying when you look at the build and the flexibility and the swivel hips, this guy has a lot of the same movement skills that AJ Green has. This is a great. Hey, 
receivers in this draft. His average will catch at 22 yards with the best of all of them. Every one of them. Look at that size and that athletic ability and the getting to him with that kind of talent at this point in the draft. The Steelers put that themselves a real gem. He's stuck in the rock ball with a lot of underneath stuff. He needs to get a vertical up. Well, look, he could be filling a huge need for the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. You mentioned the 4 4 2 40. They lost Emmanuel Sanders to Denver. They lost Jericho Cottry this offseason. They lost Mike Wallace a year ago. They need a guy who can go downfield and track the ball from Ben Roethlisberger. Because what does Ben like to do in that offense? When the machine breaks down, let's go have some fun out there and play a little backyard ball. And that is what Ben does best. And as you said, he'll track that ball for Davies Bryant out of Clemson. It has been an interesting fourth round. He's lots more coming your way. They may look the same, but one's different. A little more intense. A little wilder. A little more loco. The Cool Ranch Doritos Locos Taco has a new spicy twin. Taco Bell's all new spicy chicken Cool Ranch Doritos Locos Taco has arrived. Hey, Dad. Whoa. Easy, Chief. All right. I heard you tell Mom that wires are ugly. I was talking about the cable wires we used to have dangling from our TVs, but now we have direct TV. We don't have to see those wires anymore. But are my wires ugly? No. Buddy, no. Your wires are what make you, you little man. Yeah. See? You can fly. I can't do that. Now you don't need to see cable wires and boxes in every room. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Welcome to the family, Dad. I've been hearing good things about Sprint's new network. Oh, it's unbelievable. Fewer drop calls, better call quality. It's fast, right? They have a new network with a new network. You can also text. Yes, you can also text. It's trade good. I don't know where to go with it. Join America's newest network now with faster speeds, fewer drop calls, and better call quality. And for a limited time, get a switching bonus worth up to six hundred and fifty dollars. After connection, I'm selling myself. They buy the big logos. Before using your new Bank of America credit card, which rewards her for responsibly managing her card balance. Before receiving $25 toward her balance each quarter for making more than her minimum payment on time each month. Tracy got the Bank of America card Better Balance Rewards credit card, which fits nicely with everything else in life she has to balance. That's the benefit of responsibility. Apply online or visit a Bank of America near you. I take Privacy Go DC each morning for my freaking heartburn. Because you can't beat zero heartburn. Privacy Go TC is the number one doctor recommended treatment for heartburn medicine for eight straight years. One pill each morning, 24 hours. Zero heartburn. I understand the fact that being made out of delicious chocolate makes me high risk for insurance companies. But I still believe I deserve coverage. Um. Ensuring a delicious piece of chocolate. I think I'll lose my job for that. Okay, so everybody's going to have their new security card in their mailbox on Friday. Because if you look at our chart here, that key gets you into every. The locks. Under the locks. So if you um, remember my chart, uh, there's a pie chart, wedge of that is Saturday and Sunday. Welcome back inside Radio City Music Hall. Trey, Trent, Todd, and Mel here with you. We're going to have to go through the fourth round. Let's get you caught up on the last couple of picks. We left you off at Martavius Bryant. Dallas Cowboys with Anthony Hitchens. Outside linebacker out of Iowa and the Arizona Cardinals with the 120th pick with quarterback Logan Thomas out of Virginia Tech. We thought they might go QB at 20. Instead, they go Logan Thomas. He is an interesting guy. His measurables are off the charts. I'll tell you what, we all project ahead and freshman sophomores, where are they going to be? I've already thought back in 2011 when he was a sophomore. He could be a top five, top ten pick in the first round. Eventually, that year he could play almost 60% of the pass. 19 touchdowns, 10 picks. Then, inconsistent, bad decisions, inaccurate throws, just didn't look like 
he was making any type of progress, actually regressing to the point where he wanted, could he be a starting quarterback? A successful starting quarterback in the NFL. But you look at it, the way to defend Logan Thomas, three different offensive coordinators, not tremendous talent around him late in his career at Virginia Tech. He's huge at 6'6", 250. He's got tremendous mobility. And you think about a guy who can move around, but he was sacked more than I would have liked for kids to have that type of athletic system because he doesn't have that natural feel, that natural instinct in the pocket. My question is, is he ultimately going to be a tight end? Can you coach him up? His work ethic, his action, is there to learn. He's very humble. So, a developmental quarterback behind Carson Palmer is 34. Makes sense if he fails over the next two or three years to develop. You have the option of moving him to tight end. He has everything you look for in a quarterback. Everything except accuracy. Yeah. Except accuracy. So what are the issues accuracy and can we improve his accuracy? That's the question you have to ask, really. I think it, it starts with his footwork. He's got to improve his footwork. I think the second issue I see consistently on tape is his timing. He does not have great anticipation. And the third part with him, when you really study his game, the touch and tempo isn't natural to him. So, so those are three areas, Coach. We use the term accuracy, and I get it. It's shot all times. The bigger issue I would term as natural passing instincts. Picture it this way. You look at a great quarterback play. You can take a string and put it from their eyelids to their feet. And as their feet and eyes move together, they're tied together. That helps timing. That helps tempo. Ultimately helps accuracy. Logan Thomas does not have that at this point. But Logan Thomas is a great kid. Right. He's a great <laughs> learner. He wants to be great. He hasn't been fully developed yet. I've watched him personally train with George Whitfield. Right. He is so engaged in the process, he can't wait to get more. Right. I don't know. Don't I don't have three, four. He's taken a lot of throwbacks before, seen the diamond in the rough, and says, I can get you to do this and stay in your lane. And he has so much horsepower. Who says he can't dominate that one not, thing, too? Not, not only that, I mean, you look at his size, Bruce Arians' offense, he wants to go down the field. He wants to go down the field. And a big time arm. One thing that's interesting, when he walks in a room and there's other stars in the room, everyone seems to gravitate to him. He's the mature guy. He has that hit factor. Even though he's not very loud, he's not... He's not hanging out with superstars out there, but for some reason, when he walks in the room, everyone gravitates to him. He has the hit quality. So, again, there's everything there except the natural accuracy or however you want to talk through. Mel, you mentioned tight end. He was the third most uh, highly recruited tight end out of high school. He didn't want to play quarterback. He wanted to play tight end. We'll see if that becomes a natural transition for him uh, at the next level. Let's go upstairs to Bill Foley. Bill? We talked about the measurables. They're there. But here are the numbers, and I want you to tell me what they tell you. Okay, for his career, just under 56% completion, 53 touchdowns, 39 interceptions. Put that together with what you see on tape. What does that tell you about him as a quarterback? The numbers are poor, especially the touchdown to interception ratio. I don't see accuracy. I believe accuracy cannot be taught that you either have it or you don't. And there are fewer people in the history of football that I respect more with respect to quarterbacks than Bruce Aarons and Tom Moore. And I'm assuming they signed off on this. So I'm going to have to call them tomorrow and find out what they saw that I'm not seeing. Because I went back at 1 o'clock this morning and looked at some more tape because I keep hearing Logan Thomas's name. But there was nothing I could see on the tape that led me to believe that he had a chance to be a very good quarterback in this league. But if Tom and Bruce think that he can, that's good enough for me. All right, this, this is why Bill is great. This is why we're all crazy, by the way. He did that. He, he went at 1 o'clock this morning in his hotel room. The commander-in-chief was doing that. So. Let's get my hair done. That's exactly the conversation. That didn't take long. No, no. I, I have so much respect how Bill this handled that. Because... We're looking at tape, and you see it from an athletic trait standpoint. Some people look, or you look at it from, hey, we know what it feels like to be back there. And the history of the game says you better have A, B, or C to be successful. And I agree with Bill. You watch the tape, and you're like, oh, God, I wish he just yeah, that's what it is. understood the position a little bit more. But I trust Tom Moore. I trust Bruce Arians. They have forgotten more about quarterback development than I know. So, like Bill said, Give them to somebody that's done this, 
Carson Palmer still has a couple good years left in him. Let's see what they can do with this incredible piece of clay. Let's see if they can mold him into a big-time player. Well, you mentioned Carson Palmer. Uh, he does maybe have a couple good years left in him. Will it be in Arizona because he's an unrestricted free agent after this year? Let's go upstairs to Morton Adam. Morton, uh, he's the first quarterback out of Virginia Tech taken in the first four rounds since Michael Vick in 2001. How does this fit into the long-term plans for the Cardinals? Well, I think you guys have pretty much explained the, the whole idea of what Bruce Arians looks for in a quarterback. Is you know, is he a six five and a half, two forty eight? That's Ben Roethlisberger size. Another guy that Arians is coach, but Arians, his alma mater is Virginia Tech, so he is well, very much well connected to to the Virginia Tech Hokies. And there are teams and people who think you look for physical traits and a quarterback and what you can work with. Yes, it's developmental, but he has those physical traits that Bruce Arians loves. Size, some mobility and athleticism like Ben Roethlisberger, certainly an arm, and then see if over the next couple of years you can do something with him. And he even got an up close look at Logan Thomas on March 26th. Bruce Arians flew into Blacksburg, Virginia for a private workout with Logan Thomas, spent the day with them, broke down film, worked him out, even pose for a picture together at the end of the day. That picture will be worth framing right now with Logan Thomas officially in Arizona Cardinals, right? Adam makes perfect sense in this day and age. What probably sealed the pick? A selfie. No question about it between Bruce Arians and Logan Thomas. This is why Adam Shepard has 5 million followers on Twitter. He knows this stuff. We'll see what happens with Logan Thomas, best quarterback still available. Todd loves Tom Savage. A.J. McCarron wants to make of him. Aaron Murray still there. All the SEC records you want. Also, Zach Mettenberger and Keith Wenning at Ball State. Stay with us. The draft continues inside Radio City. They're on their way down. They appear to be crushed in tiny tennis. 58 minutes ago, we gave Ian a Bud Light and asked if he's up for whatever. Then this happened. Okay, let's see the arms. You all look all pumped up. Very good. And they're beautiful girls, huh? Bud Light, the perfect beer for when you're challenged to ping pong by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Dressed like an 80s superstar we can't mention by name because of legal reasons we can't get into right now. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. See more at upforwhatever.com. You are feeling satisfied with outstanding letter. You are feeling exhilarated with front wheel drive. You are feeling powerful with a full cylinder engine. Open your eyes to the six cylinder eight speed Lexus GS with more standard horsepower than any of its German competitors. This is a wake up call. They're supposed to be coming with the food that I want. About what? Okay. And name your price, too. You tell them how much you want to pay, and they help you find a policy that fits your budget. I told you to wear something comfortable. This is a polyester blend. Uh, it'll help. I got you. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Should we call security? No, this is just getting good. The name your price tool. Still only from Progressive. What a catch! Rule 19.79. We are family. If you lose, just with your roots. It's time for a little family reunion. We are family. Sunday Night Baseball, Cardinal Pirates at 8, presented by Taco Bell. Baseball rules on ESPN. On an all-new Guy's Grocery Games, this Mother's Day is a Triple G salute to mom. Today, it's all about honoring mom. We know that you devoted mom and very talented chefs. My boys are going to be so proud. I hope you bring it home to bacon, baby. It's over the top crazy. It's the mother of all shows. Well, this is a special day. I thought I'd bring a very special person in my life in. That's my mom, Penny. As Guy's mom kicks off a brand new season. Tell them, mom. Go get them, lady. Guy's Grocery Games. All new season, all new games. Premieres tomorrow night at 8, only on Food Network. Golf 
Golf Smith. Anything for golf. Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. We are clearly up for whatever all day inside Radio City Music Hall. Trey, Trent, Todd, and Mel, we've been cleaning up the last few picks. We talked about Anthony Hitchens, the linebacker for the Cowboys. Logan Thomas, the quarterback to Arizona. Carl Bradford, outside linebacker out of Arizona State, goes to the Packers. Mark Weston Huff out of Wyoming goes to Tennessee. And the Seahawks, who have traded down and accumulated picks in the fourth and sixth round with some of these trades, finally make a selection. They take Kevin Norwood, 123, wide receiver out of Alabama. We'll get uh, more picks later here inside Radio City Music Hall. But, of course, we also have extended coverage of the draft and everything NFL-related from our studios in Bristol. And for that, we kick it back to the always enchanting and smiling face of one Susie Calver. Hey, Susie. Hi, Trey. Happy to give you guys a little breather and bring in a welcome guest to our draft coverage here. New beginning for the Minnesota Vikings as we welcome in head coach of the Vikings, Mike Zimmer. And Mike, this feels like a long time coming that you would take your turn as head coach in a different chair. How has the draft process been for you? It's really been great, Susie. Uh, the professionals we had up, have upstairs with Rick Spielman, uh, the Wilfs, um, Scott Studwell, uh, they've all done a fantastic job. We've had the, we've had the board set for a while now, and, uh, and uh, we've been lucky to find the picks that we have. It was projected that you guys initially would be looking for quarterbacks on both sides of the ball, on offense and defense. So let's start with your first pick overall, Anthony Barr, the linebacker out of UCLA. Two years as a running back, just two years as a linebacker. How do you see his immediate impact? Well, I think his his biggest impact will be rushing the quarterback. Uh, we're going to find a lot of different ways to use him, use him in the blitz packages that we have, and we're going to use him at linebacker as uh, – as basically our blitzing linebacker. So we'll, we'll try to get him on the field, try to get him on the backs as many many times we can and try to create pressure on the quarterback. And then later, it, it moved back up into the first round to take quarterback Teddy Bridgewater out of Louisville. What did you see as Bridgewater being the, the right fit for you guys? Well, we thought, first of all, Teddy was a great, great individual. Uh, you know, he's got a great family. Um, and, and we went down and worked him right out with Turner and Scott, and, and Rick came down and worked him out in Tampa. And he had a phenomenal workout that day, and we just felt really good about him. You know, he's, he fits in great here in Min Minneapolis. He went to uh, the wild game last night where we beat the Blackhawks, and so uh, he's already fitting into this Twin Cities. <laughs> he told me Thursday night after he was selected, he kind of felt it all along that it would be you guys. And Obviously, Teddy is known for his smarts, and I've got a couple of a good quotes here about your offense from the veterans. Greg Jennings said the offense, the complexity is making his head spin, and Adrian Peterson compared practice to performing heart surgery without a license. What can we expect from your offense this season? Well, I think we're gonna. You can expect a little of everything. You know, Norv does a fantastic job. We've got a lot of weapons with Cordell, Cordell Patterson, uh, Adrian Peterson. Uh, we've got a good offensive line. We've got Kyle Rudolph as a tight end. Uh, we've got some excellent players, and uh, we're going to try to use them to the best of their abilities and put them in the best position to help us win. Obviously, you've got a couple of veteran quarterbacks there on the roster already. How do you see Teddy working in? Well, tomorrow uh, when when all the rookies get here, we're going to keep them all here and start working. And Teddy's going to get in there and throw with those those other two guys. And uh, you know, we're just trying to build competition here throughout throughout the organization the best we can and uh, at every position, whether it's quarterback or running back or defensive tackle. You know, you mentioned getting the rookies on the field last week. You're finally able to get your whole team out there. What were your initial overall impressions? And let's start on the defensive side because obviously that's where you guys really had needed the most work. Right, and it was it was great for me personally just to get out on the field, be around the players, you know. I'd, ra I'd much rather do that stuff than sit in here and do schedules and, you know, what are we going to do about this or that. But uh, it was fun to get out on the field and actually coach again and start talking to them about technique. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, I I've been really impressed with Chad Greenway. He's, he's a true uh, leader. He wants to do whatever he can. Um, uh, Brian Robinson has done an, an outstanding job, but we, but all of the guys, and, and the thing about the Vikings team uh, that I noticed is these guys are hungry, they want to work, um, they're <clears throat> they're excited. Uh, they all told me the the first minicamp they were they were all nervous, they they were like rookies again. So so that was a good thing. 
we, that is a good thing. We saw some of the stats, and the Vikings dead last in, in points, second to last in yards. How far do you guys do you think you guys have to go? Well, we got to go a long way, but that's that's why we're here. We're here to teach and and uh, teach them about the game, teach them fundamentals, teach them about techniques. Uh, try to get it, everybody on the same page, and and that's usually the first thing you try to do is get everybody on the same page, pointing in the same direction, and then we can uh, continue to to build off of that. You know, you mentioned finally being out there on the field, and your players pointed out they've never really seen a head coach as hands on as you. How will you go about balancing that, which you really love and, and out there coaching, but all the other things that you need to handle now? Well, you know, at heart, I'm a coach, and that's what I love to do. I love to teach. I love to coach. I love <clears throat> to try to make players better, um, and, and all of our coaches are like that. I think all of us here in Minnesota, uh, we all want to try to get everybody better, but I'm, I'm going to do my very best to uh, balance it the best way, but everybody knows that at heart I'm going to be over there trying to push him to get him better. Mike, before you go, just one quick update. Adrian Peterson, we know how vital he is to the team. He was coming off some groin surgery in January. How's he doing? He's doing great. He uh, was here for the mini camp, uh, was running. He, you know, I said to him, I said, you're having fun, aren't you? And he said, yeah, I really am. So, so he's doing good, and uh, it'll, he's, you know, obviously one of the best running backs to ever play the game, and we're lucky that we have him here. Everybody's looking forward to the fresh start. Mike, we appreciate the time. You know you have to get back to work. You have two picks coming up in the fifth round. Continued success with the draft process. Thank you, Susie. Mike Zimmer, the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. As we continue our draft coverage. Minnesota Vikings select Anthony Barr. For the beautiful mothers out there, I just want to happy Mother's Day. The Minnesota Vikings select Teddy Bridgewater. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first a passenger crossover to offer an EPA estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales Event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. What you're looking at is the world's largest off-road lineup. Ranger, Sportsman, Racer, all industry leaders, mm. and all on sale now. Sportsman start at just $51.99. Racer's under ten grand. Ranger start at $89.99. Top of the line, XP 900s come with a free winch. Take your pick of the off-road's best, with rebates as high as $1,300 and payments as low as $100 a month during the Polaris XP sales event. I'm Johnny Williams, and my dream was to have a beer with my friends at America's Highest Bar. Shock Top made it happen. Thanks. Shock Top, Belgian style unfiltered weed. Live life unfiltered. So, what kind of car should I get? New or used? Used. Now at Autotrader.com, compare new and used cars and even special offers. So, when you find the right car, there won't be any doubt in your mind. Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. This season's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be best friends with that guy and that guy. We're gonna work so hard, our moves will have moves. I'm gonna make my mom proud. Good game, good game, good game. We'll be doing this a lot. We're going all the way. But I only get to play if my coaches are heads up football certified. Supermarkets, a shopper's paradise. But this is Guy's Grocery Games, where chefs have to think, shop, and cook fast. This game show, finding ingredients won't be easy. Out of stock. Budgets can make or break them. And if they don't cook up a killer meal, they're going to have to check out. Guy's Grocery Games, all new season, all new games. Premieres tomorrow night at 8. Only on Food Network. I'll do. The day we rescued Riley was a truly amazing day. He was a matted mess in a small cage. So that was our first task, was getting him to wellness. 
Without Angie's list, I don't know if we could have found all the services we needed for O'Reilly. From contractors and doctors to dog sitters and landscapers, you can find it all on Angie's list. We found Riley at the shelter. We found everything you needed at Angie's list. Join today at Angie'sList.com. 14 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. Continuing our coverage from Radio City Music Hall, Trey Wingo, Trent Dilbert, Todd McShay, and Mel Kiper Jr. Let's get you caught up on the last few picks. And let's start with the linebacker, Mel Carl Bradford, going to the Packers out of Arizona State. I mean, about the way the Packers organization identifies players that fit with the do physically and athletically. This kid is six foot and a half, six one, 250 pounds. Tremendously powerful, strong, athletic kid. Really had a good career at Arizona State. When you look at the production in terms of big plays, that's what you want if you're going to be a guy that's going to impact the football team as a potential starter. Six fourth fumbles the last two years, 20 sacks and 40 tackles for loss. Now, Will Sutton and Bradford were a dynamic duo two years ago. This past year, Sutton fell back. Bradford is consistent once yeah. again. I am definitely going to get the quarterback. Good at sniffing out running plays. They can stop behind the line of scrimmage. Like Paul Bradford, this kid is strong, he's fast, he's athletic. I think you got a kid for the Green Bay Packers can play a long time. He's a special teams player as well. And I'll tell you, he was impactful in a conference that's a lot of athletes. He was one of the best in the business in terms of physical capability. Tested pretty well. Came that early as a junior, but this is a kid I think he's ready for the NFL. Pretty good board there by the uh, Green Bay Packers. And again, if you weren't with us yesterday, Richard Rodgers' dad from Cal had two laterals in the play uh, against uh, Stanford in 1982, that unbelievable play in the game that people remember year in and year out. Okay, let's get you caught up to date on some other picks while we are away, and we'll continue along with the wide receiver, or the, excuse me, the quarterback, Mark Wesson Huff out of Wyoming. Yeah, he's, he's a corner who can play safety. He's a personal defensive back at 5'11", 196 pounds. Really good measurables when you look at it. He's got the size, as I mentioned, four fours, the 40-yard dash. He's got solid cover skills. If you're going to ask him to be a nickel back, I'm not sure that he's ever going to be a great perimeter full-time starter, but the thing is with him, at cornerback, he's aggressive, he's willing to support the run, he's going to do what you ask for him in terms of coming off the edge and playing with discipline. His ball skills are not great, he'll get out of jump and miss time his jumps at times, but there's a lot to work here with in terms of developing, and again, you really like the versatility for the Tennessee Titans. Again, you look at the Titans selection here. With uh, Bishop Stanky, 18, almost 1,900 yards, and they went up front a little toughness with Taylor Lawan, the left tackle out of Michigan, whether or not he'll play there, and Daquan Jones, another Penn State defensive lineman drafted. After that, we've got the wide receiver, Kevin Norwood, out of, out of Alabama. Mel, you really love him. This is Seattle Seahawks. Now, this kid's not a spectacular player. What he is is a very solid, reliable one, consistent, durable. I like the fact that he improved every year in terms of reception total with the Crimson Tide. And A.J. McCarron has yet to be selected. And a lot of A.J. McCarron did from a success standpoint, production standpoint. Kevin Norwood was a key. Came back to the quarterback, always was aware of where A.J. McCarron was. And he talked about a blocker, helped have the run game there. 6'2", 198 pounds. I thought he played like more of a 4'5", 5'6", 4'6", guy. He runs a 4'4", at the combine. It reminded me of that when he came on the radio today. I'm faster than you thought I was and a lot of people thought I was. Keeps the chains moving tight. This be a two, maybe, probably more of a three or a four time, but a kid who gets it from an overall fundamental standpoint and a knowledge standpoint of what it takes to play wide FBI. Here's FBI, football intelligence, off the charts with this guy. All right, here are the Alabama players so far selected in this draft, and again, not what it used to be. Uh, so far, we've got Mosley, Hockland, Dixon, and a couple others. All right, Cleveland Browns on this clock. One of the two picks they have remaining in this draft, 127. Let's go to the Browns' table. Cleveland, please announce your selection. With the 27th pick in the fourth round, number 127 overall, the Cleveland Browns select Pierre Desir, cornerback, Lindenwood. All hail the pride of Lindenwood College, Pierre Desir. All he did was, you know, 
Buddy Ryan once said to Chris Carter, all he does is catch touchdowns. All three of the show does is catch interceptions. 25 of them in his career. Kid comes from Haiti. And it's an unbelievable story how he got to where he did. He makes a lot of plays, Mel. Well, he's not a wide receiver. He's not a drafted one, but he's a corner. I thought should have gone in the second round. So great value pick for Ray Farmer and the Cleveland Browns. That had Justin Gilbert earlier in the draft. Kid can intercept passes when he gets the opportunity. He puts himself in the right position. He's long, he's athletic, and he has tremendous ball skills. And this is a kid that's not going to be intimidated by the competition. Todd, you saw him up close in person. Yeah, he, he wasn't intimidated when he came to Mobile, Alabama for the Senior Bowl. He's He's got above average to good field awareness and eyes and coverage. And I think when he gets the NFL, that's going to help him make this transition because it's not an easy one going from the small school to the National Football League. He's got the size, he's got the frame, he's got the long arms that you need to be a press cover corner, and as you yeah, said, the, the ball skills. I really like this guy. Well, it, look, it's a fantastic story. Just look at the Brown selection. Still, by the way, waiting for a wide receiver. Pierre Desir is in. He started out at Washburn University in Topeka. He wanted to go back home because he has two daughters, and he wanted to help have his family help out with trying and raise them closer to St. Louis because the family was in St. Charles, Missouri. Again, one of those ridiculous rules, Washburn wouldn't let him out of his scholarship. So he had to go pay his own way to Lindenwood College, pay his own tuition for a semester, did all kinds of different jobs, cleaned sewers, worked in sewage to get it done. Those days are done for Pierre Desir. Let's go back a few picks now and take a look at the Chiefs taking another OW potentially, running back to Anthony Thomas out of Oregon. Well, they just can't say this lost their OW back to McCluster, so now you draft one in the Anthony Thomas. Now, very low, slight break. Yeah, that's fast. But he's got beaky, roadrunner type suddenness. He's quick and fast. And they didn't test that fast in the combine at 4 5 0, so people don't think he's that. But you watch him in pads, and he separates. He creates space, and you need the craftsman that knows how to use this tool. Andy Reid is that craftsman. They will integrate it into the system and don't hurt you to perfect on that. Well, listen, they need it because Jamal Charles accounted for 35% of the Chiefs offense last year, the most of any one player in the NFL. And keep this in mind about DeAnthony Thomas. The last couple of uh, running backs out of Oregon have not succeeded. This kid has an interesting story. Nine years ago, Snoop Dogg started that Youth Football League outside of California with some interesting rules. Fathers with criminal records were allowed to coach. He was on Snoop's team, the SYFL Rolling Raiders. They cruised to road games in a tour bus with 27 TV screens and 70 speakers. He was one of the first generation players there. And by the way, playing for the Crenshaw Bears, according to Snoop, Snoop called the Anthony Thomas the Black Mamba long before Kobe Bryant got that nickname. So potentially, they get the Black Mamba here in the Anthony Thomas going to the Kansas City Chiefs. Cornerback, Miami gets Walt Aikens, started in Illinois, had some issues there, ended up at Liberty. Yeah, he started in Illinois in the Big Ten and showed promise there. You think about a safety corner and at Liberty, boy, did he come through with some nice plays. He was not invited to the combine workout, but he did have an opportunity in Mobile at the Senior Bowl practice to get some positive commentary going. He was really impressive at the Senior Bowl. I think he's one of the more underrated corners in this class. I think you're concerned because of the jump he's got to make to the next level, and he doesn't have exceptional speed, but he's got good speed. He runs a 4 4 9, and everyone was so worried about it. But 6 1 2 5 with the 4 4 9 time on the books, with the ball skills are average, they're not exceptional. I think this guy's going to pan out because he's driven. He's intelligent, and he's got good instincts. And that's a big key. When you watch these corners, the instincts really jump out with Aikens. I think it's going to allow him to transition pretty seamlessly. I think Aikens and Desir are two kids that will come into the league and really benefited from what happened in Mobile, Alabama. Because you get down there with these kids, these seniors, all the major universities, you get down to Mobile, and you're under the microscope. It's a pressure-packed environment, and they respond. They didn't look like a fish out of water. They went down there, they competed, and they made themselves prospects. So Walt Aikens not invited to the Annapolis for the combine, now becomes a fourth round pick. Bill Savage, who's a senior bowl guy, still does a great job identifying players. Hey, some decide they're not coming. He's got to make adjustments on the fly. He does a heck of a job. And those kids benefit tremendously from what happens in Mobile. And again, we'll see what happens with Walt Aikens going forward. Actually, served a 14-day jail sentence at Illinois for some theft involving computer equipment. We'll see what happens there. But again, DeAnthony Thomas going to be riding in luxury now that he's an NFL player. Nothing new to him, as we said. He had a pretty nice ride 
when he was in the Crenshaw Bears in Snoop Dogg's Youth Football League. It's all about the NFL now with the Anthony Thomas. Out here, you have to perform. You got to build a crowd from nothing. Find what gets them moving and do it. My Intel Power Tablet can respond immediately. So when I get my crowd, this folk machine won't let them down. It's avocado season at Subway. Avocado, yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about. Whatever you're training for, this super tasty superfood can help power it. Eat, train, and let it rain. Come on, man. You know you can't go wrong with avocado. Enjoy rich, creamy avocado on any of your favorites, like a scrumptious Subway club piled high with ham, turkey, and roast beef. You can't get enough of it. I told you it was delicious. Subway, the fish and training restaurant of Russell Westbrook, Justin Tuck, Mike Trout, and athletes everywhere. Go somewhere you never thought you'd ever be. Go jump in the lake. Go watch your kid catch your first fish. Go to Bass Pro Shops for great deals during our summer kickoff sale. Like ladies gathered v-neck tees for under $10 each, redhead summit two men shorts starting under $20, and browning x vault spinning combos for under $40. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Chain James Heath wheeled an imposing lead. James accelerated to the basket. Drop by Bob. Quarter three. Got him all. The next best must rise in Brooklyn. Then Portland heads home with a lot to prove and little time as the top seeded Spurs hit their stride. Oh, oh, the, scores again. the NBA playoffs keep net on NBC. Spurs Blazers at 10.30 on ESPN tonight. I am the original safety feature. The fraction of a second between fender and bender. I am the carpool buddy who never changes the station. The last thing on your mind when you shift in the drive, but the first that touches the road. I'm not just any tire. I am a Yokohama. Really? On April 1st, 2014, the President of the United States announced that over 7 million people had enrolled in health care reform. Well, if you missed the deadline, you may still qualify to a special to enrollment right. period. Yeah, the free sense. health hotline is still accepting calls. Call now to find out what you're entitled to. So many people do not take advantage of the benefits offered to them by health care reform because they don't call. All callers will get the Together yeah, Health Group Christmas hey! pricing plan free. No, 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 no. Call the free health hotline now. Call 800-425-6168. Call now. For more of Aloe Black, download his album, Lift Your Spirit. Now available on iTunes. And there is the family of Lindenwood University. Quarterback here this year, the Browns' fourth round pick celebrating his selection yeah, just moments ago at the 127th overall selection. This year goes to the Cleveland Browns, a quarterback to Cleveland, and we take a look at Cleveland's draft to see where they are right now. They have not taken a wide receiver to top. When Josh Gordon is now facing a year-long suspension from the NFL for another positive test. And when Nate Burleson, another wide receiver of the Browns side, fractured his arm. Here are the Browns picks through three rounds. Quarterback Justin Gilbert, Johnny Football, Joel Vittonio, Christian Kirksey, Terrence West, Pierre Desir. They are not scheduled to have a pick in round five. They are not scheduled to have a pick in round six. And that means they will not be taking or not eligible to take a wide receiver until round seven more. That is unless they make a trade back for a wide receiver. People in Cleveland wondering what's going on. All right, and they haven't ruled out, obviously, still taking a wide receiver. And also, let's remember this. Undrafted free agents. The Seattle Seahawks had 21 undrafted free agents on their roster when they played in the Super Bowl. Now, they were all guys that 
they didn't sign. But those guys, the Stone players, the big up there, Ray Farmer, the general manager of the Browns, said they can still trade for one later. Uh, there's free agents out there like Santonio Holmes. Uh, they do have a, 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 a Pro Bowl caliber tight end there in Jordan Cameron. And the other thing, I'm sorry, they have Greg Little there. But the bottom line is, is they wanted to kind of have this model as Ozzie Newsom has set up with the Baltimore Ravens, which is stay true to your board, don't reach, and this is what they have, Trey. All right, Jordan, Adam, thanks very much. It's interesting. We're cheering on the draft here, find out what's going to happen with the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, you can get a wide receiver, but you want to get wide receivers that you think are going to be good. It's not just about getting a body to play the position. It's about getting a body to play the position correctly. We'll see what happens if this gamble, for lack of a better term, works out for the Browns. We told you up here this year we'll pick up our coverage here looking at Trey Boston, another safety out of North Carolina going to Carolina. And Trey Boston, strong eyes, really good with his instincts, and it's his overall understanding of space and where he needs to be. Really impressive, this guy. He's physical. He gets in position a lot. He'll break up a lot of passes. Average with his ball skills. 13 interceptions over his career. Thought he could have had more based on what I saw in tape. But he's a good athlete. He has good range. And what he brings to the table, I think, is that he's a, he really understands the game and he's going to be a great special teams player. That's one thing I've got in my notes here. Special teams, special teams, special teams. Love his mentality. Tremendously confident football. Yes. Not early in his career, I thought he may be an early round. Then kind of leveled off, didn't progress after that. And he showed flashes of brilliance at times early in his career with the uh, Cardinals and Chapel Hill. Well, there you see the Carolina Panthers obviously addressing a need early with the lack of wide receivers on the team. Kelvin Benjamin getting a edge rusher and Tony Ely to play behind Johnson and Greg Hardy. They get the offensive lineman Trey Turner, and now they get Trey Boston. So they lead the league in trays, which, again, I'm in favor of. Just putting that out there. Uh, we move on, taking a look at another smart selection here by the San Francisco 49ers. Big corner, shocking here at the NFC West. Dante Johnson out of North Carolina State. He has, I'll tell you, the hip flexibility, the turning motion for a kid his size to be a corner, at least get an opportunity to play that position, get yeah, move inside. That would be something that could be in the cards for Dante Johnson. Here's a kid that tested pretty well. Uh, you look at his size, his speed, his athleticism. Can he be a corner at the pro level? I, I think he's got a chance of use properly. I think the bottom line is he's got to continue to improve his press technique. But when you look at him, he's going to support the run. He's strong in the upper body. He does a nice job when he, when you look at him in terms of his instincts. I think he reads receivers really well with their routes. I think he reads quarterbacks' eyes well. And he's going to be he's going to be good when you put him in certain underneath zone areas. So I like this pick. I thought Dante Johnson picked him off the board in the third round. 49ers continue to get good value with Johnson in the fourth round. Well, listen, he's over 6'2", and he said he believes the way Richard Sherman plays has paved the way for bigger corners. By the way, this is the first North Carolina State player taken in the draft. It is the latest we've had to wait for a member of the Wolfpack to be drafted since 2010. And then we take a look at running back James White out of Wisconsin going to the Patriots. What a career uh, James White had. Caught 39 passes this past season and 34 the three previous seasons combined. So he became more of a complete back this past season. That's going to have to be his role. He also has some returnability. Yeah, this is a kid who runs about a 4 5 7, strong in the upper body, decent athlete, but he improved in terms of showing more versatility. And that's where his role will have to be with the return yeah. game. And he throws down opportunity to catch the football. Third straight year, by the way, we've had a Badger running back go. Obviously, the big one last year was Monte Ball, and the Broncos are counting on him huge now this year with the departure of Noah Sean Moreno. All right, this is an interesting pick here. Safety Brock Marine out of Brock Marine out of Minnesota goes to the Chicago Bears. Yes, he is the younger brother of Patriots running back Shane Burry. And he's on the all-tape team. You don't get many cornerbacks that are on the all-tape team, but I just love the way he plays the game. You can watch him all day long. 
He's got the versatility you look for. He's got explosive closing burst. He runs a 447 at six foot, uh, 200 pounds basically. And when I watch him, he doesn't have the biggest hands. But he has 22 pass breakups, four interceptions, and he's going to support the run. This Chicago Bears team is continuing to try to get versatile, more athletic defensive backs. And I think Brock Marie immediately on special teams and sub packages contributes to the Bears. Again, you know, he's the older, Shea Green is his old brother, the running back for the Patriots. He was asked, Brock, was, do you want to play with your brother? And he said, no. I think the biggest part of me just wants to hit him. I can't wait until we meet on the field. And that's going to happen October 26th. Bears, Patriots. We'll have some Verino and Green crime for chance in that game. It's going to be a chance to get things going. We continue here in the draft. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Built the Seahawks Super Bowl championship. They get outside linebacker Kevin Pierre Lewis out of BC. This guy flies now. I mean, he, he runs all day long. He's got great speed. He's your classic. Will linebacker, the weak side linebacker, you might even think about moving him to a sub package, the linebacker role, almost a safety, because he can cover, because he's got the speed to cover, but he's got some developing still to do as a player. He gets, he gets in on a lot of tackles, but he's not complete yet. He's got to get smaller and show that he can hold up at the point of the attack. Yeah, you're talking about breaking down in space and making a tackle, a four tackle. He would be a villain. And he showed up from box to college for the game one of the Eagles. He was the best defensive player. He was all over. Field, tremendous tackler, real good range, very instinctive football player at six foot half, 232 pounds, 39 vertical, and you talked about the speed and the range, 446 to 451 at the combine. You can fly around, Pete Carroll wants athletes, here's a kid who'll get it done. So speed and tackling, go and cover kicks. And yeah. competitive. Yeah. Well, the, you know, we've talked a lot, guys, about the NFC West and what the Niners have done in this draft and what the Rams have done in this draft. Take a look now at the board for the Seattle Seahawks, the defending yeah, champ. They have made back several times in this draft. What do we make of the players they've acquired so far? Well, I'll start here. Just a global thought on the Seahawks is they dominated these rounds for the last few years. Right. So whether you think these are great prospects now or not, Pete Carroll and John Snyder They have, earned the right for us to think they probably will be. Amen. Right. Because if the Seattle Seahawks do anything better than everybody else in the NFL, it's they get their guys, integrate them into their system, and teach them how to play football their way. And these guys fit the athletic mold of the players they're looking for, but more importantly, knowing Pete Carroll, the competitive temperament that he's looking for. Guys that'll come in right away, be pros, and fight and claw and climb for everything they get. It's kind of like what they did at wide receiver. You've got a speedster in Richardson from Colorado who runs really good routes but has got to get stronger and has got to become more consistent catching the ball. But if he can do both of those things, he becomes a big-time playmaker. Might not be ready to be the contributor right now. And you've got Norwood from Alabama who is a possession receiver and is as ready as any receiver in this draft to step in and contribute, but he has a ceiling and is more of a possession guy without that top end speed. So Norwood plays now, and maybe you hit big on Richardson down the road. And I'll tell you, Cassius Marsh from UCLA, athletic with versatility. Is he a tight end? Is he a defensive end situationally? Good play. All right, we'll see what happens with Seattle. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans are now on the clock, which are caught up on the other picks in just a minute. They still have not taken a quarterback yet. Will this be the time where they go for the quarterback? Let's go to the table and listen in. Houston, please announce your selection. With the 135th pick overall, the Houston Texans select Tom Savage, quarterback from Pittsburgh. So the former Penn State coach and Bill O'Brien takes Pittsburgh's Tom Savage. If you think about it, and if you know anything about Bill O'Brien, this makes a lot of sense. You know, Rutgers, there he is throwing a touchdown pass with a scarlet. I thought he would have finished his career there. Ends up in Arizona. But quick, he's a hit for the final campaign. Took so many hits. When you watch him play, you have to feel sorry for Tom Savage. He was really attacked by defensive line. Sacked with 43 times on the year. And he can spin the foot. He will hang in there, utilize that pocket, step up in the pocket, roll away from pressure, even though he's not going to win any races. This is a kid who can throw the football. I think he's a team guy. The guy is really round around him. They like, obviously, his attitude, his approach, guy. Coaching staff had to love him because he put so many hits and kept coming back game after game after game. He looks the part, and I think, especially for Billy O'Brien, 
He's got the stature. He's got the arm. The tape shows that he can process information. Todd, I know he's been on this guy for a long time. I, I absolutely love this fit because Bill O'Brien can work with quarterbacks very effectively. He knows how to work on mechanical issues. He also just knows how to bring them along. He was part of the development with Tom Brady, and I, excuse me, I think he's going to do a really good so, job okay. with Tom Savage. We've been talking a lot recently. But he sets his protections. He knows how to do things that you have to do at the NFL level. You're going to see here, there's a threat of eight coming. They wind up sending eight. He had set his protection early. He hangs in there, stares down the gun barrel, and drops that ball in. I'm not going to call it a dime, Dill, but it was a pretty nice throw. Oh, for it. Then there's some quarterbacks in this class that struggle when pressure comes late. He does it. He's used to it. Turnstiles and offensive tackle all year long. I think it helped his game. Yeah, He's used to seeing pressure, and he is handling it, I think, so much better now than he was earlier in his career. He needs a lot of reps, but he's in the right place to develop with Houston. This is, like I said, a terrific fit. Put some things in perspective here. He's the highest Pittsburgh quarterback drafted since Dan Marino. Went in the first round in 1983 because of his travels from Rutgers to Arizona and back to Pittsburgh. He went over a thousand days without playing a football game. And he kind of reminds you of a poor man's Blake Portals, doesn't he, a little bit? Got the size, got the arm, and obviously that's someone that Bill O'Brien saw come up at UCF and take care of business at Penn State. For more on Tom Savage and his quarterback attributes, let's go upstairs. Six-time NFL Executive of the Year, Bill Poley. Bill, what do you make of not only the pick, but where he's going? I love the pick. When you did, when you evaluate a quarterback, you ask yourself three things. One, does he have fast eyes? Can he process information and get the ball out? Two, is he accurate? Three. Can he handle pressure? Does he panic under pressure? Or does he keep looking down the field and try to make a play? And is he accurate when he has to make that play? As uh, Trent calls it, in conflict. The answer to the question in all three cases with Tom Savage is yes. On top of that, he has a powerful arm and good feet. If you're going to develop a quarterback, and he needs developing, there's no question about that. He hasn't played enough. He hasn't met the Bill Parcells test for uh, uh, college starts. you got to have something to work with. And in this case, there is plenty to work with. They, It's not going to come this year, but the Texans may have found their quarterback in the future. All right, Bill, thanks very much. You had a follow-up thought here on Savage. I agree with everything that's been said. My concern is it's because of where he's going and who they have right now as a quarterback on the roster. Will he get that developmental time? There's this – unfortunately, everybody right now is saying you draft a quarterback, you have to play him. This kid needs a couple years to learn. Don't throw him in fire too soon. Well, they, they have Case Keenum who played okay in certain spots last year, and Ryan Fitzpatrick, who has proven to be a serviceable starter over time in the NFL. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, but again, you got to love his moxie. When he went back to Pittsburgh, he paid his way on, was working in the scout team, and became this close to quitting, and then was like, no, I'm going to see this thing through because I want to play football, and now he's been drafted by the Houston Texans. For more on that, and Tom Savage, let's go back upstairs to Chris Morton. So Morton. Uh, Trey, this is a pick that Greg Schiano, the former Rutgers coach and also the former Buccaneers coach, signed off on with anybody who inquired, including Bill O'Brien, the Houston Texans coach. And that's because for Schiano at Rutgers, this was the best recruit or highest rated recruit that he had at Rutgers. Tom Savage coming out of that Philadelphia area. And as a freshman, he set the records for passing at Rutgers and the conference. I think they still stand. And then he kind of felt like he had arrived, did not have a good spring for Rutgers. And then they went into the season, he got beat up a little bit, wasn't performing well, and actually they then, as Shiano said, went more to the wildcat phase with Mohamed Sanu, who's now with the Cincinnati Bengals. That combination of eventually created him losing his job, unhappiness, transferring to Arizona, and then Rich Rodriguez obviously – Became the head coach in Arizona. Not a fit. You got to go find a school. Go to Pitt. You got to sit out. Thousand days almost between starts. Everybody feels like, boy, if he only had one more college season, the guy might have been a first round caliber pick. Shiano did tell Bill O'Brien and others he believes this guy could be a 10 to 12 year player. 
in the National Football League. Yeah, Morton, to that point, Savage himself admitted the biggest mistake he made was leaving Rutgers. He probably just should have stayed there. So with Savage off the board, here are the best quarterbacks still available. A.J. McCarron, Aaron Murray, Zach Mettenberger, Keith Winning out of Ball State, and David Fales. Isn't it interesting? When all said and done, the SEC, best conference of football, those are all SEC quarterbacks still waiting to be drafted. Stay with us. The draft continues. Ladies, one sugar, one cream. One cream, no sugar. Black, no cream, one sugar. With a bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddles. Why does she get a McGriddles? That's the way she takes her coffee. McDonald's fresh brewed McCafe coffee and the epic bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddles. They're great apart, but amazing together. So how do you take yours? And that's why she's captain. Really? Really. There's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. It's here. The new Sea Dew Spark. And it's bringing the fun your family has been dreaming of. Designed to be lighter and more nimble than any watercraft out there. So it's easier to own and an endless thrill to ride. But the biggest rush is realizing you can actually own one now. The Sea Dew Spark, starting at $49.99. If I give this to you, are you up for whatever happens next? <laughs> Two seconds ago, we gave Ian a Bud Light and asked if he's up for whatever. Then this happened. <laughs> hey, John! Bring it up! Bud Light, the perfect beer for when no one would believe the wild night you had if it wasn't all secretly filmed and broadcast to the entire world. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. See more at upforwhatever.com. The Nissan Pathfinder with intuitive four-wheel drive. An adventure worth sharing. Nissan, innovation that excites. Honestly, the off-season isn't really off for me. I've got a lot to do. That's why I got my Surface. It's great for watching game film and drawing up plays. It's got one note, so I can stay on top of my to-do list, which has been absolutely absurd since the beginning. With Skype, it's just really easy to stay in touch with the kids I work with. All right, Russ, you're good to go. Hi, right, fellas. Hi, right, Russ. Back to work. There you go. Adaptive one brakes, guaranteed noise free for life. Noise free. Yeah. Thanks to Napa Know How. And brakes, dude. Sorry about last night. Are you still mad at me? They don't make a sound. Brakes. Come on, I get out. I get out. <laughs> Insist on adaptive one brakes. Draft continues. Time for the Experian Draft Score inside Radio City Music Hall. And Logan Thomas, the numbers. We look at him going the course to the Arizona Cardinals, and the yardage is okay, but it's the touchdown to interception ratio, I think, about as we continue to evaluate Logan that has people concerned. Way too close. Way too close to one on one. But then if you look at the combine numbers, I don't even know Logan Thomas, is. the measurables, as we said, off the charts. And, and the intangibles are off the charts, too. When we 4 6 one, 35 and a half inch vertical, and 118 inch broad jump, I mean, these at are 6 6. And they're exceptional numbers. So, horsepower. power. I haven't wanted to bring it up because I really want to see the, this guy see it through. But there's a great athlete there to be trans. To, Potentially, if it doesn't work, the quarterback can move to tight end. Larry Webster is another player who could wind up converting to tight end when it's all said and done. We've been tracking this guy throughout the whole process from Bloomsburg. Started out as a basketball player for three years. And he transitions to the football field and has been really impressive and really intriguing. 
Watching this tape wasn't easy. It's a little bit more blurry trend, as you know, than some of the compared to some of the SEC. But watch the athleticism and the hand. Showing him, get it under, then exploding the quarterback. He's raw. Very raw, but you watch him at the pro day. You watch his workout at 6'6", 252 pounds with those quick feet and 4'5", These are numbers very similar to who? To Debbie and Clowney. Right. And then the scouts come and say, you know what? We'd love to see you run some routes. Pro day, runs routes, catches the ball well. Who knows what you do with Larry Webster out of Bloomsburg, but he's got the bloodlines. Trey, I'm sure you know about that. That's and he's got a lot of Larry. potential. 11 years as a defensive lineman was a third round pick for the Dolphins in 92, won a Super Bowl ring with some guy named Trent Dilfer uh, leading the way for the 2000 Ravens. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Larry Webster, well, two things here. Okay, he played four years of basketball at Bloomsburg and only two years of football mm -hmm. before converting mm -hmm. there. And then, of course, we now have a Bloomsburg player drafted still waiting for a Texas or a Georgia player to be drafted. Okay, Dakota Dozier, the Paladins of Furman are on the board with the offensive lineman out of Greenville, South Carolina. Six, three and a half, 313 pounds, the tackle with Furman, going to kick inside the guard in the National Football League. And a heck of a year, he's going to actually hit as a pass block, an electric quickness. The overall package is still as you need to be a blindside pass protector. He's going to move inside as a run blocker, like his top of the point, and get to the seventh, second level. Look like the way he drops into the little close. Well, listen, he's coming to New York, he's coming to the right city, he has other skills. Dakota Dozier played the cello from the 6th through the 12th grade. He says, not many people my size can say they play an instrument. Nobody in my family had ever done anything like a musical instrument before, so I was like, I'll try it. I played it every day. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. So maybe the Met, maybe something like that for okay. Dakota Dozier in his spare time here in New York. We move on with four picks. The Ravens go in the Ravens out of Chanticleer Drive out of Coastal Carolina. Here's another guy that performed well at the Senior Bowl and had found a lot of scout size. He's highly productive throughout his career. Not a great receiver. Never going to be a home run threat. Runs in the high four five. Got him timed at four five eight at six foot, two hundred and twenty nine pounds. But he's a team captain. Outstanding effort. He makes the defense earn every single tackle. He's going to grind out yards at the end, and he's effective in short yardage situations because of his power, balance, and determination. Really good fit for the Baltimore Ravens here. They have issues at the running back position. Scored 27 rushing touchdowns this past year, averaged 6.3 yards per carry. You talk about a big back with ability, the 4 5 8 40, good vision, hits the hole with quickness. To me, as a big back, a pounder for a team that needs help at that position, needed a running back, Talia Farrow, I think, is a guy who will make that roster, will contribute. If his hands improve, now, I did catch 23 passes out of the backfield, two of which resulted in touchdowns. He improves in that area. Talia Farrow's running ability, pure running ability for a 230 pound back. I think he could translate to the pro level. I will see how that shakes out for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Meanwhile, uh, the next player taken was Prince Shembo by the Atlanta Falcons, the outside linebacker out of Notre Dame. And if you know anything about uh, this story, there's a lot of uh, things that have gone on with Prince Shembo at his career. It was at the Combine, Shembo admitted he was the player involved in the 2010 case that unfortunately uh, led to the suicide of Elizabeth Lizzie Seberg at St. Mary's College, who alleged she was inappropriately touched by a Notre Dame player. No charges were ever filed against Prince Shembo when he was at Notre Dame. No one ever talked about it. He told people at the combine he was instructed by Notre Dame not to talk about the case. The head coach, Brian Kelly, and other people at Notre Dame had a different scenario and a different version of that story. But this is the player that was involved in that case where Notre Dame police and authorities did not even uh, contact him until 15 days after he was Seabrook's suicide. So a lot going on with Prince Shembo, the outside linebacker from Notre Dame, now going to the Atlanta Falcons. Lots more for you here for the draft. We'll give you the highlights of Prince Shembo when we continue. The draft continues here inside Radio City Music Hall. Still lots of valuable players to be taken off the board here in New York. ESPN's coverage of the 2014 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. 
and the all-new Sea-Doo Spark, the most affordable watercraft available. A lot of people fear the unknown, but for you, it's refreshing. And refreshment is what you're searching for. Fewer calories, fewer carbs, more to look forward to. Michelob Ultra, long live the ultra life. I mean, the guys walk into this place. You would have thought from the name of it, it's going to be packed with sailors. So I immediately picked out the biggest guy in there, and I walked straight up to him. Now, he looks me square in the eye, and I swear he says, Welcome to Navy Federal Credit Union. <laughs> Whoa, friendly alert. I got a great auto rate out of that guy. With rates last across the board, it's a great time to buy a car. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. How do you know? Until it's actually pretty cool. Except when he's hungry. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. As the official hotel of the NFL, we're always looking for new ways to be your competitive advantage. And we think we found it. Welcome to Home Field Advantage, Wood Courtyard, the official hotel of the NFL. has done it again. Call now and receive the new Warrior Signature Series Love Wedge absolutely free. No gimmicks, no catches, no purchase necessary. A $150 retail value free. All we ask is you give us an accurate evaluation of the club's performance because your feedback is vitally needed before it's released to retail stores. Warrior makes this new 60-degree Love Wedge with deep-cut precision grooves combined with rough surface optimization technology and a sleek gunmetal finish. This club will help you get more control and greater backspin, providing you with pinpoint accuracy. Get the new Warrior Lob Wedge today, and all you pay is for shipping and customization. It's time to make Warrior Signature Series Lob Wedge your new weapon of choice. No purchase necessary and no catches. It's absolutely free. Call now and you may also qualify to receive the matching 52 degree gap and 56 degree sand wedge. Absolutely free. Some restrictions apply. Ask your representative for details when calling. Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. Back inside Radio City Music Hall, we told you the story of Prince Shemble and everything that went on with him before the break. Mel Todd, what does the tape tell you about the outside linebacker? I think Average Instincts is a football player. I think what he does best is come off the edge and attack. I think his best games were against offenses that were... They were really good. We're not that complex, and we're not spreading you out that wide. Usually, like Michigan State, I think it's his best, the best game of his career. But he was allowed to just attack up the field, go get the quarterback, and not even worry about the play action. When you turn him loose, he can make some big plays. Now, a little bit limited for my views, and I think you've got to put him in the right position in order for him to be successful. The next one dimensional play. Yeah. I think that's what you get with Prince Shembo. You put his hand on the crane and say, hey, go swim in the direction of the quarterback. One of those sacks you saw, it stripped us in a fumble pause against Tom Sapp. That was a very poor Pick Panther offensive line, but he had some quickness off the ball, and he will play hard for four quarters. Finished with 34 uh, games started in his career at Notre Dame, 24 and a half sacks. Or 24 and a half tackles for loss, rather, and 19 sacks. So you look at the, the Falcons' board. Uh, again, the issue with them, they needed upgrade interior protection and a pass rush. They're hoping both those players will work for them. Then there's Cameron Fleming out of Sam Houston State. 
Sam Houston State on the board. Still no Texas. Still no Georgia as he goes to the Patriots. The big kid, 6'5", 323 pounds. And you look at this kid, he's got to be more consistent. Times you watch him, yeah, he gets his hands on a defensive line and drives his legs and buries the guy. At other occasions, yeah, he just doesn't get the desired push. It's not contact, fails to sustain the block. And he's frustrating, guys, because you thought well, this could be a late first, early second round pick. And then other times it's like, boy, he's probably more of a fifth, sixth, seventh round draft choice. He's got to level it all, be consistent week to week, even series to series at Stanford. It's all some inconsistency. Hey, look at that talent. He's not overly mobile, but he's strong. He's really – that's the thing. He has heavy hands as a blocker, and I think he's got to work a long time and work hard with this guy with his footwork in order to get him to a point where he can be a starting tackler in the National Football League. But if you get him there – there's a little bit of boom factor here because he's so powerful at the point of attack. And again, he out of Stanford, not saying why that happened. I have no idea. Oh, I know why. It's 147. That's why. Uh, we continue. Time for our GMC Never Say Never moment inside Radio City Music Hall. Guys, we have we have moved past that ethereal plane from the fourth round to the fifth round. And if you look at some of the great value picks all time we've seen in the fifth round. You can find big time players here later in the rounds inside Radio City Music Hall here in New York City. Some of those players we're talking about, oh well, yeah, the highest paid player or defensive back in the NFL, Richard Sherman, $40 million guaranteed in his contract. Cam Chance, the player, you want to talk about good fifth rounds, back to back years? Cam Chance were in Richard Sherman in Seattle. Robert Mathis. Had an unbelievable year late in his career this year for the Indianapolis Colts. Rodney Harris and a guy we know well. Mark Brunel, our guy that now works for us. I'm Dr. Kevin Green and Hall of Famer Mike Webster. Out of the 1974 draft with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We are into the fifth round of the draft. And once again, Chip Kelly going to a well, and he knows very well, Oregon players defensive end Taylor Hart. I produced Deion Jordan two years ago. He thought, oh, the sky's the limit for this kid, Taylor Hart. Consistent player, versatile player, gets all blocked, good at stopping the run. Pass rush, regressed a little, only three and a half sacks this past season. But he forced four fumbles because he's relentless. He's a try hard player, gets those covered sacks, those hurries that you want, and he goes to Chip Kelly. Another Oregon player, Josh Huff, wide receiver, went earlier. I see Taylor Hart more as a backup rotation guy. That's the worst. Versatility, six foot six, 281 pounds, and nobody knows him better than Chip Kelly. Again, the second player this year that Chip Kelly has taken in the draft out of Oregon, almost like wide receiver Josh Huff, so he's going to a talent pool that he's intimately familiar with. Washington Redskins, again, another receiver off the board. This time it's Ryan Grant out of Tulane, Todd. I like Ryan Grant. I, he's never going to be your speedster or guy who's going to threaten vertically. But when you look at him at six foot, 200 pounds, at that 464, he accelerates quickly. Now there's a cap on it. Again, no, no real second gear, but what he does best is what you just saw right there. Track the ball, adjust to the football, bring the football in. He has, he ranks among the elite in this class. I, four or five elite receivers with ball skills, and he's right there. He has a big catching radius. He does a good job going up and getting the ball in one-on-one -on -one situations. And, so he doesn't run fast, but if he gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, he will go up and contend for the ball, and more often than not, he's coming down with it. He had a really strong week at the Senior Bowl, and I thought that was very important for him to show against good defensive backs that he could get the job done. I don't think he's ever going to be more than a three or a four, but I think he can contribute. Well, uh, Trent, on the team he's going to, a three or four is what they'll need. When you look at the Redskins as they're constructed and the, the weaknesses – that they needed to address. Some people question Trent Murphy going early, but it helps with Kerrigan and Arakpo. They've addressed some needs on this Redskins team. They have, and these players pan out. I you to watch the Redskins, and you said this, up, up, through, up through the whole entire draft process, is they needed state, not citizen. They address the state needs with outside back offense, tackle, and so on. But let's see if these players were drafted in the right with the right value and if they develop and can add some toughness and some state to this Washington Redskins team. Who seems to have a bunch of sizzle to begin with, yeah. so they needed to get the other part of that equation in this year's draft. We're in the fifth round now. Let's continue updating you on the latest pick. It's Kadeem Edwards, the guard out of Tennessee State. 
He's six four and a quarter, three hundred and thirteen pounds. He moves to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now level of competition is gonna be a concern. That's why you drop down this far uh, in the draft. But you look at a kid with that kind of size, he has pop at the point as a run blocker, and he has pretty good mobility for a kid his size. So get the job done, getting to the second level. Notice that in a couple games this past year. In pass protection, good punch, decent footwork, anchors pretty well. Competition's an issue. Did 26 reps at the combine, ran a 5 2 5. Could he never be a starter? I think he can. At worst, a decent backup in the NFL. And that's what I like about him is there's something to develop there. You know, in terms of his physical tools, it's just a matter of giving him some time. You see that power there at the point of attack. It'll be interesting to see. He's one of the players that you put in game three and you. To me, he's not where he needs to be, but you think to yourself, boy, if he worked with the right coaching and in the strength and conditioning program and getting right with his eating, I think he's really going to benefit from becoming a full-time football player with professional help around him. Uh, we've seen uh, early on they're going for some big playmakers on the outside. Now we take a look at another Florida State player, the seventh seminal taken off that national championship squad. It's Outside linebacker Telvin Smith going to David Caldwell, Gus Bradley, and the Jaguars. Really like this pick yeah. because versatility. You know, there's not a perfect spot for him because he's 218 pounds, he's six foot three. But when you look at him, he plays sideline to sideline. He can cover extremely well. He can match up against your running backs. When you got a guy in the slot, a Dexter McCluster type, he can cover. He can cover one on one, and then. When you look at him, he's an instinctive playmaker. Well, I thought this year read his keys more uh, with discipline and got in the right place at the right time. He hits hard for a little guy, and he plays hard for a little guy, and he's going to bring a little bit of attitude to that defense. And Gus Bradley has got some guys with some attitude already on that defense. This is a Gus Bradley type of football player. And we've seen some tweeters like this, yes. long, lean, fast players be drafted by defensive staffs that have vision for that kind of down box safety hybrid type player. That's a good bet. He's a steal. When you go to the biggest games, and he was consistent all year, but he stepped it up. ACC championship game all over the field, making plays in a variety of ways. National championship game, he's all over the field again. Two biggest games of the year after he had a real good season. Really even stepped it up to another level. Telvin Smith, with that versatility and the instincts to create big plays and be around the ball so much, I'll tell you what, Gus Bradley, those defensive players, and it's taking play. Seventh Seminole taken so far this year. That's one more than Notre Dame for the most players drafted. But this is nothing new. Last year, Florida State had 11 players drafted. We still have a few rounds to go. We'll see how many more can be taken out of Tallahassee, but that's 18 players so far in the last two drafts, taken out of Florida State. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a Sankey, now we got us a Yankee. It is David Yankee, the big guard out of Stanford. Smells guy. I like David Yankee. I like the fact that, hey, when you play outside a tackle and then you move inside the guard, here's a kid who's big. I think he'll bring some intensity. I think you look at a Stanford lineman, you know he's a smart kid. He will battle you hard, and he brings the kind of physical prowess. You coach him up, you bring him into your system. He comes out of Stanford, you know he's already had that. He's already been in a pro offense. He's already had all that to do with you need. I think David Yankee, as a pure guard, like a mid tackle, as a pure guard, the Minnesota Vikings will have a chance to become a starter. And I think a very good one. You know, it's a small world we live in. We're a global community embodied by David Yankee. It's a big body, by the way. His mother, Dorina, born in the former Czechoslovakia. His father, born in Ghana. They met in Australia, but of course they meet in Australia. He lived there, and then he moved to Atlanta when he was eight, and this was David's comment on his world travels. I moved from Australia when I was only eight, so I didn't really get an Australian accent, but I didn't get a Southern accent either. Missed out on both cool accents. <laughs> only a kid from Stanford would put that kind of perspective on his life story and where he's been in his world. For more on David Yankee, let's go back upstairs to Bill Polian. Bill, you know a little bit about this kid. What do you like about him? I like mo most everything about him. When you're blocking at Stanford, you're blocking for the running game. When you're blocking in Minnesota, you're blocking for AP. What you have to do is get a body on a body. This is a huge body, a big truck who can move, who's tough, who's a better athlete than you think. He's pro-ready. I wouldn't be surprised if he steps in and plays early. He is not a tackle. 
He's a run-blocking guard, and those people are valuable in the NFL. No question, Bill played every position on the offensive line except center at Stanford. Even lined up a couple of times at tight end. I'm not sure they'll use him in that formation with Kyle Rudolph in Minnesota. Meanwhile, best quarterbacks available. SEC, SEC, SEC. Before we get to Keith Lenning out of Ball State and David Fails, we will see where these quarterbacks fall as we continue to go through the fifth round. Another wide receiver off the board. Another one not going to the Cleveland Browns. It's wide out Devin Street out of Pittsburgh, one of Tom Savage's favorite targets. Yeah, and he stepped up with Tom Savage all catches. And I thought there were a couple focus drops, but overall he caught the ball well. Wide contested, doesn't separate very well. But when you got a big body at 6'3", 190 pounds, if you don't separate very well, you got to know how to use your body. And I thought Devin Street this past year really learned how to do a better job of boxing defensive backs out and, and getting between the defender and the football. And you see there, too, the longer arms going out and reaching and tracking the football. He ran a lot of pro routes, and he had a pro-style quarterback and a pro-style arm growing to him. I think he's going to be ready to play as a probably number four in the NFL and contend for that spot as a rookie. Studying Tom Savage, I was really surprised this kid wasn't getting more traction. He popped out on film because I think what you said, he's, it fit the pro game's eye. Yes. He's running pro routes, the timing's there, he got between the defender and the ball well, he was trustworthy, I think he's a nice fit. We talked about this a little bit when we looked at the Raiders board earlier. Obviously, they made some mistakes. The Cowboys in solid job so far, who they're drafting and when they're drafting. Another pick for the Falcons. It's another cornerback, Ricardo Allen out of Purdue. Played a lot of football for the Polo Makers. Ricardo Allen did 5-9 and change, 187 pounds. Holds up a two record with four interceptions returned for touchdown. Six interceptions this past year, four tackles for a loss. He'll throw his body around. He's a risk taker with really good ball skills. What limits your enthusiasm is the size issue and the fact that he doesn't have great recovery speed. Only around a 4 6 1 at the combine. Vertical 35 and a half. I still think he can push his way on to a lot. I think he can take that Atlanta Falcon team. Maybe it was a time because he was on a team who played a ton of football. Team and right away died out of high school. Made a lot of big plays. Is a stop. Lack of big time speed of Washington State. He's a little guy that was never afraid to mix it up. All same team for you. Honorable mention. Honorable mention. Don't just give away no. Five nine. Why it's a question. Five nine one eighty seven runs the four six ones outside the measurables. What you see on tape is a first or second rounder. That's how good of a football player he is. I'm interested to see if he can make it. This is how persnickety Todd is. He's on the honorable mention all tape team. Ricardo. Hope you'll stay with us as we're honorably mentioning the draft until it's done. Stay with us. Data Wing Beast, more bold and tense player. Celebrate Mom with Bud and Bloom or Classic Roses, just six ninety eight at Lowe's. Ooh la la! I have some latest brioche French toast. Can't wait to try that. Topped with cinnamon roll filling and cream cheese icing. This is like a cinnamon lover's dream. Don't miss new cinnamon swirl. One of three brioche French toasts at IHOP. It's like French toast. I have French toast. Yeah. Why do results matter so much? It's probably because they are the measurement of everything you do. For a wireless company, results come down to coverage, speed, and legendary reliability. So go ahead, stream, game, video chat. That's why Verizon built America's largest 4G LTE network. Because the only thing that really matters are the results you get. So for the best devices, the best network, and for best results, use Verizon. Where can an investor be a name and not a number? Scott Trade. I'm never alone with Scott Trade. I can always call or stop by my local office. They're nearby and ready to help. So when I have questions, 
I can talk to someone who knows exactly how I trade. Because I don't trade like everybody. I trade like me. That's why I'm with Scott Trade. Scott Trade, proud to be ranked best overall client experience. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first eight passenger crossover to offer an EPA estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales Event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. You're from Brazil, huh? Yeah. Don't worry, man. This is your year. You're going to win the whole thing. You just have to avoid Spain. Yeah, but they don't have Ronaldo. I love Ronaldo. I don't care about Ronaldo. We got a strong defense. He's got a squad from Howard. Nobody can stop Messi. Nobody can beat him. Argentina, France. Germany's got a strong team. We look great in the ball park. But if we go to penalties, we are doomed. I would like to introduce uh, our new head football coach of the Houston Texans, Bill O'Brien. I'm really, really excited to be uh, the new head football coach of the Houston Texans. I can't wait to get uh, working and get going with Rick or put together a great football team. With the first pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Jadavian Clowney. You just don't be there one pick in the league. You come in with an uh, attitude about yourself. Come in ready to play, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, and that was just Thursday night. Feels like we've covered a lot of ground since then as we welcome in the head coach of the Houston Texans in this Bud Light team report, Bill O'Brien. And Bill, it seems like since you were hired January 3rd that you've been on the clock. So after all this time, when the card finally went in, what were the emotions like for you? Well, it's an exciting night. You know, it was a night uh, uh, that was uh, built up with a lot of anticipation and I felt like uh, between our coaching staff and Rick Smith and his crew of scouts that uh, we had a good plan and, and uh, the plan went, went accordingly and it was an exciting night for the Houston Texans. Well, you made Jadevi and Clowney sweat it out. There was the lead up and then all the time on the clock. What kind of options were you weighing during that time? Well, there are many options that you weigh. I, I think any coach in this league would tell you that, uh, you know, when you have the number one pick, there, there are a lot of different ways you can go with it. And I, I felt like at the end of the day that when Rick and I sat down, you know, we all said to each other, look, this is a guy that can come in here and, and make an impact on our team and make an impact in this organization. And, and that's what we did. We had a plan going that way. But again, there were a lot of options out there. and we, we went with the one that was best for our organization. There was all the talk of it once in a decade type of talent and then there were the questions and one of the questions was how would he fit in Romeo Cornell's defense how do you see it well I think he fits well uh, I think any any rookie that comes in here on offense or defense has to uh, find his own role has to understand the way we do things and get with our program but I think when you talk about JD here's a guy that uh, has had a successful college career uh, he's going to come in here and start off as an outside linebacker, and then obviously we're going to move him around. You know, I think in, in this day and age in the NFL, there are a lot of different packages defensively, and he's a guy that's going to be inserted into all of those, and, and we'll see which one fits him the best. But, again, we're excited about our whole draft uh, to this point, and, and we're looking forward to finishing up with a strong draft uh, tonight. Yeah, Bill, you said at, at J.D.'s pro day that if he was going to play outside linebacker, then there'd be a lot of work to do. So what's in store for him? Well, I just, like I said, I think, Susie, any rookie that comes into this league, uh, there's a ton of work. I, I believe that it's such a big jump from, from the college game to the pro game. Uh, it's not just J.D. It's, to me, any rookie that comes into our organization has to understand, again, uh, the work ethic that goes into being a good professional football player and what it takes to, to be a part of our program. And so, you, you know, I think just like any, any rookie coming in here, they, they've got to come in here with a good work ethic. They've got to... Uh, you know, basically keep their mouth shut and go to work and, and follow the lead of the veterans and the coaches. And I think that's what uh, all these guys are going to do. And that's, again, a good reason to, to go out there and pick them. These guys uh, came came off as impressive guys to us, and we're excited about the way the draft's going to this point. Yeah, we just had, you know, so much time in the lead-up to it to analyze Jadevian. And one of the other questions was about the passion. So through the process and all the time you got to spend with him, what did you learn about that? 
I enjoyed our time together. Uh, you, you know, I think we all did. I speak for everybody in the organization that when we when we sat down with him and uh, we we had the chance to speak to him, whether it was at the combine or on his campus at South Carolina or here in Houston, he came across as a team guy. He came across as a guy that understood that he he had a long way to go in certain areas as far as learning the game and and he was a very humble guy, a very genuine guy. And I think those are the things that stood out to us the most that that here's a guy that has a lot of talent but understands that he's going to have to come in here and work hard and, and really try to reach his potential the best way he can. And as you've touched on, the rest of the draft class so far, guard Xavier Sofilo, tight end C.J. Fedorowicz, it, it seems like, you know, you're really trying to work in the trenches. Is that sort of the philosophy of getting things going here? Well, I think the philosophy is with, with the whole draft process is to, to do what's best for the organization. So we sat down as an organization – coaches and scouts and we got together and we said look these are the th these are the things that we're looking for in, in in offense and defense and special teams and and then we went out and graded these players and and I think uh, w when we make the pick we, we always keep in mind you, you know how does this guy fit our organization is this the best thing uh, for the Houston Texans and, and I think to this point Rick and his crew uh, our coaching staff we, we've done a good job of trying to find fits and now these guys have to come in here and, and take our coaching and be good teammates and, and learn how to play the pro game. And we all waited impatiently for you to select a quarterback. What was your overall outlook of this quarterback class and why you waited so long? Well, I think it was a really strong quarterback class. You know, I've said that a bunch of times. Uh, I've, I've watched all of these guys on tape, and, and they're all really good players. I think at the end of the day, again, like I said uh, in the previous question, you know, I, I think we want to try to find what was the best fit for the Houston Texans. And, uh, with all the positions, with all the draft picks that we have. And so when, when it was time to make this pick this afternoon, you know, obviously Rick and I had talked about this, and, and, and Tom was a guy that was sitting there, and we had a really good experience with him at Pitt, uh, at his pro day, uh, interviewing him, sitting down with him, and, and we're excited to work with Tom Savage. Yeah, Tom Savage out of Pittsburgh in the fourth round. Obviously, there needs to be some development, but what are you most looking forward to, the tools that he has that impressed you the most? Well, first of all, I think he's a, he's a good kid. I think he's an honest guy. I think he's grown up in his years in college. I think he was very honest about that. I think he's a guy that uh, has a good arm. I think he's an accurate passer, and, and he's smart, and uh, he's an articulate guy. I, I think the one thing you look at when you play quarterback in this league, you know, are you accurate? Are you able to communicate with your teammates? You know, all the things that go into – to being a good quarterback here, and, and, and you know, we're, we're just, like I said, we're excited about uh, working with this guy and, and, and getting him in, in our program and teaching him how we do things offensively. Well, obviously, it's so early on in the whole process for you. You finally got to get your team out there on the field. Your other quarterbacks right now on the depth chart, you know, uh, Fitzpatrick and, and Case Keenum. What's your plan right now? How do you see things right now? We're going to let these guys compete, Susie. You know, I think that uh, in this league, uh, my experience in this league, you know, is that uh, the, the most competitive teams are the ones that have the most competitive rosters. And, you know, we did. We had a three-day mini camp leading into this draft, and it was a very competitive camp. And, and uh, you can tell that our guys are, are willing to come in here and work hard and compete. And the, the rookies, they have a long way to go. You know, like I said earlier, it's, uh, it's not an easy league to come into. It's a big jump. And, Hopefully these guys jump in, get with our program, and, and take the lead of the veterans and, and jump into the competition. But, again, that's, that's what it's all about. We, we're we're going to try to you know, create competition at every position, and that's what we're doing. Um, Bill, we appreciate the time. We look forward to seeing how the process plays out. You've got five more picks coming here in the sixth and seventh rounds. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Susie. And Are you up for whatever happens, sir? <laughs> Two seconds ago, we gave Ian a Bud Light and asked if he's up for whatever. Then this happened. Ian! <laughs> 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 Ian! 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 Ian!
to the places that shape you. The decisions you make make you who you are. Create your custom engagement ring at Ritani.com. You design it, we handcraft it, you see it in person at your local jeweler. No risk, no obligation. Ritani, a smarter way to buy an engagement ring. Start today at Ritani.com. Need to be salty and sweet? Harness the power of my new salted caramel peanuts. Guys, been working on this all night. Are the sound effects necessary? Mm -hmm. Are you necessary? Randy. Todd, what do you think? I like your hair. Just turn them down a bit. They're deafening. Mm -hmm. How about we turn you down? What do you think, Todd? Make them louder. <sighs> Salty and sweet. A new way to harness the power of the peanut. At any minute, you could be a victim of fraud. Most people don't even know it. Fraud could mean lower credit scores, higher mortgage rates, and not getting the home you really want. It's a problem waiting to happen. Check your credit score, check your credit report at Experian.com, America's number one provider of online credit reports and scores. Don't take chances. Go to Experian.com. Hey, Dad. Whoa. Easy, Chief. All right. I heard you tell Mom that wires are ugly. I was talking about the cable wires we used to have dangling from our TVs, but... Now we have direct TV, so we don't have to see those wires anymore. But are my wires ugly? No. Buddy, no. Your wires are what make you, you little man. Yeah. What? Oh, see? You can fly. No. This is awesome. I can't do that. Now you don't need to see cable wires and boxes in every room. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. This season's going to be awesome. I'm going to be best friends with that guy and that guy. We're going to work so hard, our moves will have moves. I'm going to make my mom proud. Good game, good game, good game. We'll be doing this a lot. We're going all the way. But I only get to play if my coaches are heads up football certified. Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. Welcome back to our draft coverage. You're inside Radio City Music Hall. There's Michael Sam, SEC Defensive Player of the Year, waiting for his name to be called. And don't yawn. It's going to be a big day, Michael. When your name is called, we will have it for you. We will share that moment with you as Michael Sam trying to become the first openly gay athlete drafted into the NFL. And when it happens, you will see it here. It will be an historic moment, a barrier cross, and we will have it for you here on ESPN's coverage of the draft. As we continue to roll on, we'll get through the Last few picks, we told you about David Yankee and Devin Street, Ricardo Allen, the cornerback out of Purdue, and Benet Benwicki, the cornerback out of San Jose State. Yeah, Benet Benwickery is a corner average size, 5'10 and 3 quarters. You see there, 182 pounds. Does not have great top end speed, 4'6'3 at the cornerback position. But I really like his instincts when I studied him with the paint. And I really also like his ball skills. 12 interceptions the last two years. Not afraid to get physical. He can press guys. I think he's at his best when he's allowed to play zone and react to the ball. And you see there, consistently on tape, he's getting himself in good position to make plays on the ball. And whether he finishes it with an interception or a fast breakup, which he did 15 times the last two seasons, in addition to those 12 interceptions, Ben Wickery's a player. They've always just seemed to be around the football when I studied his tape. All right, then you see the offensive tackle going to Tampa out of Purdue. And then there's Aaron Lynch, Mal, the defensive end out of South Florida, started his career at Notre Dame. He started in a big way at Notre Dame, Trey. With the bond to it and Aaron Lynch, they look like bookends. They look like they're going to be dominant players together throughout their career. Lynch leaves, goes to South Florida. Remember, he had seven tackles, up and five and a half sacks at Notre Dame with six starts. This past year, six sacks. Well, when they have tackles for loss, to me, unimpressive in certain games. Now, the weight situation, the 3 4 defensive end, drop weight to be a 4 3 defensive end in South Florida. I think you look at a guy who now has an opportunity to be, be an outside linebacker, play on speak some, who would be a down defensive end. Where's his role? Figure out your weight, maximize your ability. He did not do that in the latter stage of his career. He was blocked rather easily by some tackles, didn't dominate the take over games, like you really thought he could. There's, there's a lot of intangible issues to work through here. 
but on his tape, there's still some explosiveness and juice, and he can rush the passer. So I like this pick. You try to develop him. If it doesn't work out, fine, but there's something to work with here. Look at what the Niners are doing. They're loading up on rushers and linebackers in case there's an issue with Alden Smith, whether NFL-related or legally, end of our moment. The five to it in the second round. But these two kids were freshmen. Aaron Mitchell is something equal to the five. I think there's a second round pick the two is and there's Lynch dropping until day three into the later rounds so, again if you can maximize this kid and get him to the physical prototype where's his weight what can he be want to speed down walk him up a little bit find a way to get all that talent out of Aaron Lynch he's got a lot of it to that point 270 at one point of Notre Dame dropped to 249 he said he was prescription for Adderall he stopped eating that's why the weight drop He's put on weight since then. The question is, what position is he going to play and what weight does he want to come in at? But you've seen the flashes from Aaron Lynch, and we'll see if it continues to be a straight grab for the San Francisco 49ers. We are moving on to the Tennessee Titans selection of Avery Williamson, another linebacker out of Kentucky. Avery Williamson, now nice head by Tennessee here. Position need at depth at inside linebacker. Good speed. Good size, be a teamer right away, contribute on special teams, great intangibles. This guy's going to play hard, coaches love him, going to integrate in the National Football League very well, Todd, I know you like him a lot. Kentucky linebackers have been transferred pretty well to the National Football League. They make a million tackles in college and everyone writes them off. They think it's just a scheme thing that they're not able. Now, he's not like some of the other guys who come out, he doesn't have the the athleticism, but he does have that straight line speed that Trevor was talking about. I liked him when I watched him on tape, and I, I don't think he's ever going to be that every down linebacker, but he all versus the run, and he makes some plays when he is on the field, and he does drop it with a wing attack where he can stop yeah. those inside running lanes. His range, sideline to sideline, limited, but between the tackle, he is a run stuffer. When you look at the draft of the Tennessee Titans, they went deep up front. They get Bishop Sankey, ran for almost 1,900 yards last year for the Huskies. Daquan Jones, the defensive tackle out of Penn State. Look, almost every year you're going to have a defensive lineman out of Penn State taken because of the great coaching by Larry Johnson Sr. They went up, and now Avery Williamson, the inside linebacker out of Kentucky, goes to the Tennessee Titans. The New York Giants take safety, Nate Foray, and this is a kid that's got a lot going for him on and off of the field. Yeah, Nate Foray, watch tape of him, and I really like the playmaking ability. And he, when he was around the football, it seemed like he went up and made plays, and he was physical and aggressive. He's only 5'10 and a half, going 193 pounds, and he ran a 4 7 1, and he's still getting drafted in the fifth round. Those are terrible measurables for the position. Tells you how good of a player he is on the tape. The instincts and the recognition skills, he makes his reads quickly. He flies up the alley and supports the run. The ball skills are good. Six pass breakups and 20 pass breakups in, uh, in the last three years. So he's a guy that was constantly around the ball, and I think the best thing he does is support the run. And I also think, what do you have? A guy who loves hitting, loves running down the alley. Hey, go cover those kids. He's a tackling machine. He yeah, is. That's it. Uh, you think about what he did at San Diego State year after year. 94 tackles, 99 tackles. He's all over the field making plays. Limited physically. Those computer numbers were you. You never count them out, though. And Tom Coughlin, certainly for the New York Giants, saw a kid who gives it every, lay, lays it on the line. He will yes. fill his guts on the football Last field. two picks. Not the great measurables. Andre Williams and now uh, Bray. But they both are really good football players that play hard and are going to bring character and are going to help on special teams. To that point about character, the last two picks for the Giants, we talked a lot about Williams and the things he does. Nate Beret has a plan for his life after the NFL. It was a dream to make it. But when he's done, he wants to go back and run the family business. The family business is a non-for-profit group called the Beret Group Home. It's a bunch of five houses that provide residential care and support for psychologically disturbed young men. That's what he wants to do. So he'll give you everything he has on the field. But to love a kid like this who has a plan for what his life is going to be like after college, much in the same way we talked about Andre Williams, the running back out of Boston College. Those are the kids you really feel like no matter what happens on the field, they're going to find a way to succeed one way or the other. Okay, so we're talking safeties, we're talking running backs. Trent, you know this, it's a quarterback-driven league, still the best available. And here's the question, okay, let's play SEC quarterback roulette. M, M, or M? Which one's off the board first, McCarron, Murray, or Mettenberger? I think it's fit at this point. 
uh, who falls, who falls in love with who. I think Zach Mettenberger probably has the highest ceiling of those three from the SEC. There's some other concerns there. I think Aaron, uh, A.J. McCarron's a guy that, like we said, is going to go there. He's going to do everything he can to integrate in the system. He's a winner by trait. There's, you got to see if there's more physical traits there once you get him in camp. All right, let's get more on the SEC quarterbacks and all the quarterbacks still in the draft. Let's go upstairs to the balcony, Adam Schefter and Chris Morton. Well, Trey, we're now well into the fifth round, and Alabama quarterback A.J. McCarron, who's suspected he will be gone in the first two rounds, is still on the board, and we don't know when he'll be picked next. A lot of questions as to why A.J. McCarron has dropped this far. And I think teams looked at his skills and saw a good quarterback, but somebody that was limited in his ceiling. And I think the other thing that hurt him was in talking to multiple executives around the league, they felt like A.J. McCarron rubbed them the wrong way during the interview process. He did not make a positive impression. He was critical of other people, of other obstacles, of other situations. I think it just didn't leave a great taste with some of the teams that he interviewed with, and now he's sitting here in the spot that he never thought he would be in. Yeah, you look at the, uh, Aaron Murray of Georgia, Zach Mettenberger of LSU. Both guys had torn ACL injuries late in their seasons last year for their teams. Now, on Aaron Murray, if, if he didn't have the knee injury, people say, look, He's small. He's short, barely about six feet tall. Some people believe he played short, but he was highly accomplished. He played in the pro offense, well coached there, certainly by Mike Bobo, the coordinator, and Mark Rick, their head coach. Mettenberger is a guy with Cam Cameron, his, off, his offensive coordinator at LSU. People got to see big-time throws every week he played. Problem for him, there's a red flag, character red flag on him, and this diluted sample at the Combine – during the drug test, he raised the red flag, even though he was supposed to be producing a letter from his physical therapist from that surgery to say they have instructed him to drink a gallon and a half of water every morning. And there's one other SEC quarterback we still haven't heard, Trey, and that's Taj Boyd, the Clemson quarterback. A lot of people thought he was drawing some comparisons to Steve McNair, could potentially be a hot pick coming into the season. I think what has hurt him, if you speak to some NFL people, is the fact that he's been inconsistent throwing the football. I think the feeling is he'll still be picked before the draft is through, but clearly it's not going to be in an early round trade. Hey, Adam and Mork, real quick question about the diluted sample when we talk about it with Zach Mettenberger. A lot of times in the NFL, they'll look at a diluted sample as a positive test or a failed test. So in the case of Mettenberger, who has the issue you talked about with the surgery and the cramping, and the case of Timmy Jernigan, the defensive tackle out of Florida State. How is the NFL going to perceive that test? Does this mean they enter the league in the program? That is correct. What happens is they go through the evaluation by the league's uh, substance abuse uh, chief physician, which is Dr. Lawrence Brown, and he can assign it to somebody else. And they do an evaluation on these guys to see whether or not they need to be further tested for a stretch or just straight out go to counseling or enter that program for two years, be subject to random testing over that two-year program, uh, and certainly they are, just as all NFL players are, available to go ahead and appeal it, uh, and Mettenberger certainly, I know, is pushing that part of it, saying he's been instructed, had been instructed by his physical therapist to drink a lot of water. All right, Lord and Adam, thanks very much. Just wanted to get that cleared up as we enter the Bud Light Fan Forum, ladies and gentlemen, using the hashtag Fan Forum. They're up for whatever it's up like. The question from Tony Calvello, which quarterback drafted is now in the best position to succeed? And, of course, you want to get in the fan forum, you've got to use the hashtag fan forum on Twitter. And Trent, your whole life is now hashtag when you talk to your kids. So as we, we come through the lights here uh, at Radio City Music Hall, let, let's take a look at this, yeah. okay? Let's take a look. It's a fantastic yeah. question. Which quarterback do you think right now, whether today – or yesterday, or Thursday, is right now in the best position to succeed given the talent around him and the team he's going to. Without hesitation, I can say Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, he goes in a position where he was, he probably was drafted exactly where he needed to be drafted. Uh, the pressure will not be immense. Uh, he's got really good talent around him. He's got Norman Scott Turner, coach, and Norm Turner knows as much about quarterback development as anybody in this league. There's one other thing I don't think people are talking about. The room, the quarterback room in the NFL is really important. 
He's going in there and competing against two really good dudes here, Christian Ponder and Matt Castle. They will embrace him, they'll compete every day, and they will share their wealth of information they've learned over the years with Teddy Bridgewater. I think it's a really good thing. You know, you mentioned Norm Turner. I think that's a critical element uh, of this discussion here because what, is, what does he already have in Minnesota? A running back yeah. in Adrian Peterson, a tight end. And Kyle Rudolph. Does that in any way sound familiar with other places that Norv Turner has been an offensive coordinator? It's perfect formula, and Norv knows how to keep people in their lane. Teddy Bridgewater was the best of all these quarterbacks at executing his offense, staying in his lane. Norv will do that. He will do that, but he's going to be expected to win this job. I mean, that's going to be the expectations of all Viking fans. Come in and win this job. They don't have any hopes for Ponder, Castle. They want him to be the man. Whoever Minnesota drafted was going to be expected to be the quarterback. Track. I think Bortles. I, I'm going to go to Bortles as my guy because if Jacksonville has Chad Henney. They can let him go out there, see what happens. They drafted Marquise Lee. They drafted Allen Robinson. I think this organization is intact. I think uh, Gus Bradley's a heck of a football player. Oh, yeah. And great. the players love him. Yep. The way they finish the season, Gus Bradley will establish himself as a great football coach. We know he's a great defensive mind. He's already added veteran pieces. I like the fact they drafted Aaron Cole, but they're going to redshirt him. I think Blake Bortles is in the best position for future success. I think, I think both of you guys are right. I think we spend so much time leading up to the draft talking about who this player is, what are his skill sets, what can he do, what are his physical limitations, and then it's like the draft's over, and we rarely go back and revisit. The scheme fit and just the overall fit with the team is so hugely important with the development of these quarterbacks. Bridgewater's in a great place. I agree with Garoppolo. Uh, uh, with, Portals. He's in a great place. I actually think Johnny Manziel from the scheme fit is in a great place in Cleveland. I'm a little worried about wide receiver what, now. What Garoppolo. receivers he's throwing? Yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo, though, is in the perfect place for him yes. in New England. He's not ready. He's a small school quarterback that's coming to the NFL, and now he's going to play behind Tom Brady and have time. Johnny Manziel is a different case. He's you're going to play on him every right level. Now. On every level. You're going to play him right now. But to me. Garoppolo is in a great fit because he's got to learn the NFL language. He has to get used to the small windows coming from the FCS. He's got to learn how to protect the ball. He has a horrible fumble percentage at the quarterback position, and the small hand span we talked about is just nine inches. So there are things in his game that have to improve, and I think with his fast eyes and with how quick he is going through his reads and his accuracy as a passer, he's got a chance to develop into a good starter. And you get a good starter in the late second round, that's a great find. And the other person we didn't mention is Derek Carter. I'll give you some gray balls to do develop Freeman in Tampa before Freeman went sideways. Knows how to develop young quarterbacks. Derek Carr's a very good situation. Well, Garoppolo will learn from Brady had a whole lot of that football. It's all about quarterbacks. You want gamers, guys that'll last with you. Four quarters or overtime. Except for Trent, he's leaving. Whatever. Only Trent's good gone. First half. He, he did a great first half. Thanks, we appreciate it. Good. First half was well, never good in the two-minute drill anyway. We're going to finish this puppy up going home. Oh, my back time. hurts from carrying Dilfer for two and a half days. <laughs> okay. Somebody <laughs> Look at you. You are more than just an average Joe in a new outfit. You are a magnificent man about town, a towering icon of style. Are you ready to look this good? Is your wife ready? Is the world ready? All the best men's brands, waist size 38 and up. DXL, you're looking good. Buy one full price Harbor Bay tea or pole and get 75% off a second. The Big King you love, just chicken down. Introducing the new Chicken Big King with two crispy chicken patties and our signature king sauce. The new Chicken Big King, now part of our two for five dollar menu, only at Burger King, where taste is king. Here's your forecast: rain, 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 rain all week long. Except today, looks like it's gonna be a hot one. Let your man out. Through the essence of man. Does your car's trim look old, faded, and gray? Introducing McGuire's Ultimate Black, our longest lasting trim restorer. McGuire's Ultimate Black quickly restores a light new finish to sun damaged plastic and rubber surfaces. Its breakthrough UV clear coat technology provides long lasting shine to keep them looking like new longer. 
Give your car that lightning look with Meguiar's Ultimate Black. When people ask, how'd you do that? Tell them Meguiar's. Rule 19.79. If you lose touch with your roots, it's time for a little family reunion. Sunday Night Baseball, Cardinals Pirates at 8, presented by Taco Bell. Baseball rules on ESPN. On an all-new Guy's Grocery Games, this Mother's Day, it's a Triple G salute to mom. Today, it's all about honoring mom. We know that you're devoted moms and very talented chefs. My boys are going to be so proud. I hope you're bringing home the bacon, baby. It's over-the-top crazy. It's the mother of all shows. Well, this is a special day. I thought I'd bring a very special person in my life in. That's my mom, Penny. As Guy's mom kicks off a brand new season. Tell them, mom. Go get them, lady. Guy's Grocery Games. All-new season, all-new games. Premieres tomorrow night at 8, only on Food Network. Stand back, Suburbia. Behold, the Craftsman Tractor. With an industry-leading 6-inch turning radius that's 66% tighter than a John Deere tractor. And with a top speed of 7.5 miles per hour, it's 26% faster. It's the antidote to other tractors. That's the quality and innovative performance you can expect from Craftsman. Exclusively at Sears. <laughs> Well, a little dreary in New York City today. It's raining outside as we continue the draft here in Radio City Music Hall. It's raining rain outside. It's raining picks inside Radio City Music Hall. We continue to work our way through the fifth round of the draft. You know, this is what we call an upgrade. And Dilfer had to leave. The Commander-in-Chief, Bill Polian, joins us now on the set with us. Nothing against Trent. But this is a value pick in the fifth round you take, right? He had me at 1.30 a.m. He's up yeah. watching Logan Thomas at 1.30 in the morning. That's a good reminder for all the young scouts out there, by right. the way. He doesn't have to be watching Logan Thomas at 1.30 in the morning. That's what he's doing. He Cheers, my book. Yeah. Hey, you know what I'm going to be asking you, Bill? I want to know how many of your top 100 are still on the board. Yeah. And I want that guy. Yeah. Well, there's a reason you win this six times, the NFL Executive of the Year, as we continue to work our way through the fifth round pick. Bill will be here with us through the end, and we told you about Avery Williamson and Nate Parade. Hey, the Baylor Bears are on the board. Cyril Richardson, the big guard out of Baylor, goes to the Buffalo Bills. We've got Jeremiah George, the inside linebacker out of Iowa State. Arthur Lynch, the tight end out of Georgia, goes to the Miami Dolphins. Also going, we have Farrow going to Denver out of LSU. Remember, almost the entire starting defense for LSU was drafted last year. Shaquille Richardson goes to Pittsburgh. Karan Reed, by the way, with this selection out of Princeton in the common draft era, no player before Karan Reed has ever been selected in the first five rounds, and now Karan Reed is the first player out of Princeton in the common draft era. The defensive lineman out of there to go in the first five rounds. Last year, Mike Catapano was the seventh round pick in the Kansas City Chiefs. First time since 82 and 83 that the Princeton Tigers have had a player selected in back to back years. Bob Serrace doing a really good job for the Princeton Tigers. Let's look at some of the highlights here of some of these players. And we'll start. Todd, we'll talk about Jeremiah George to the Jets. Bill Poley and I had a tough assignment in the dead of winter. We got sent to Southern California to watch players and scout them at the NFLPA All-Star Game. Oh, Jer how are you? Jeremiah George was one of the best players, I thought, that week of practice and in the game. Very instinctive linebacker, always around the ball, reads his keys, gets in position a lot faster than his 4'9", 140 would indicate. Doesn't have great size, he's 5'11", 234 pounds, but again, he plays hard, he plays with leverage, he's not a striker as a tackler, but he's a very reliable tackler in space. So, 133 tackles last year, very productive, does all the little things right, and you just think special teams when you look at him because he can run down the field and he tackles well in the open field. Plays for him with a 3-4 a because he can get in there and slump. There you look at the Jets board. It started with Calvin Pryor, then went with Shaq Evans, and now, of course, as we said, they pick up the cello playing tackle out of Furman, the Paladins, Dakota Dozier, and now they get Jeremiah George, the inside linebacker out of Ohio State. We continue to look on. 
Tell us about Hilary Barrow out of LSU. Yeah, he's not the big play performer. Some of the other outside linebackers are, but he's consistent and he's productive and he's very well coached. Tremendous football IQ. John Chavis does a great job coordinating that defense. He raves about Lamine Barrow. Lamine Barrow is a guy who's cover. He's a guy that has outstanding range. Production early this year wasn't what I thought it would be. Then he came on and became a leader of that defense. And at the end of the day, he still led the Tigers with 91 stops, five and a half behind the line of scrimmage. A guy that can cover very effectively, very good tackler, and he knows where everybody should be lined up. He's a leader of that defense, and he comes in ready to play because of John Chavis. Now, John Chavis, that LSU defense, that was the only defense that could frustrate Johnny Football. And he did a great job in back-to-back years against Texas A&M and Manziel. And Levine Barrow had a lot to do with that. If he learns to process quickly, he'll play well in the NFL. Well, they'll need him to process quickly. Of course, he'll be playing alongside DeMarcus Ware and Vaughn Miller at linebacker when Vaughn Miller comes back from the knee injury. He suffered a torn ACL late. Uh, in the season of the Houston Texans. And there's the Princeton Tiger, Karan yeah. Reed. So impressive at the Senior Bowl. Had sacks on back-to-back plays at the Senior Bowl. And it showed flashes all year long for the Princeton Tiger. 6-2, 2 3 He's got speed. He's got, most importantly, slipperiness as a rusher. He can play as a three technique in a Tampa two. He can play as a three technique in the uh, Seattle style defense. He's relentless, but most importantly, speed and slipperiness, which is what you need to watch the passer. What's the most important thing in the NFL? Inside pass right. Absolutely. He's got it. Well, look, you look at the draft by the Lions. This is a nice draft. They get the playmaking tight in there, deep run. Kyle Van Noy reunited with his college roommate at BYU, Ziggy Yonsa. When he was asked about it, he said, bro, I'm not even kidding. It would be awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. They get an athletic freak in Larry Webster out of Bloomsbury State, and now Karan Reed out of Princeton. By the way, I saw Princeton up close and personal this year uh, at Georgetown. Karan Reed can do some damage. And Bill, go ahead. This is your moment. This is my moment. There you go. Karan Reed. Is from Mount St. Michael Academy in the Bronx, New York. I'm a proud alumnus. Yeah. Way to go, Karan. There you go. Uh, Karan Reed. This again, he's from Princeton. He'll have a career when his football, football playing days are over. By the way, he grew up the son of a pastor. Uh, Karan was on the executive board of Princeton's Christian Faith and Action Group. Uh, he also sang part of Old Nassau, an all male a cappella group at Princeton. So, He's a man of many talents, and we certainly wish Karan Reed all the best as he goes on to the NFL now with the pick. Meanwhile, we continue to take a look at Arizona, and they get Ed Stinson, the defensive end out of Alabama. It's a really good fit because obviously Arizona running the 3 4, looking for guys that fit that system, and that's what Ed Stinson is. It's a five technique to play for Alabama. He can kick outside the left defensive end. He does a really nice job, I think, with his arms getting into guys' bodies, you see right there, standing them up, and then going to make the play if the opportunity presents itself. But most importantly, he's going to play with discipline, with power, and do his job, as you have to do inside this defense for the Alabama Crimson Tide with Nick Saban. I really like Stinson as a player. 6'3", 287, he's got the measurables you look for. He's got the strong hands, 33 and a quarter inch arm. He fits the prototype. Left defensive end in a 3-4. That's where he'll fly yep. in Arizona. This is a perfect scheme fit. Well, you look at the Arizona Cardinals, started with Dayon Buchanan. By the way, lettered four years in golf in high school, only two years in football for Dayon Buchanan. Troy Nicholas, the tight end out of Notre Dame. They get one of Mel's favorite players, John Brown, the wide receiver, pick returner, played for the Gorillas of Pittsburgh State. Now they get Ed Stinson out of Alabama. And why is this pick important at the moment in the grand scheme of things? Well, uh, the SEC likes to say they're the next best thing to the NFL. Stinson is the 31st player selected in this year's draft out of the SEC. They moved one ahead of the ACC this year, so it's a real tight battle between the SEC and the ACC right now. A little more than halfway through the fifth round, it is the SEC one pickup on the ACC. Meanwhile, once again, we go back to the Eagles and what they've done, and they pick up another pass-back player this year, two from Oregon, and now they get the kid out of Stanford. 
two years ago, you were on 12. I think that would be special. Ed Reynolds had a great year two seasons ago, 2012. Six interceptions. Led the team, most by a player since 1973. This past year, though, fell back a bit. Wasn't the ball off. He was a 6'1", 207 pounds. Not a tremendously fast, rangy safety, but you look about the instincts he has, which I like. Athletic ability, not as good as some of the other top safeties. I thought he would have been wise to go back to the Sanford for another year, Bill. But he did Chip Kelly again, comfortable with those Pac-12 players. Ed Reynolds has a chance to be a good player. Going to run a lot higher in another campaign out in Palo Alto. He's bad played in the NFL, worked for the NFL office for many years. Good bloodline. Very smart. He's got a chance to be a box safety. You play him up around the line of scrimmage, that's his dad's linebacker bloodlines. He can make plays. It's in the back end with range where, where he uh, kind of falls a little short. But if the anticipation is there, and it is because he's a bright guy, he's got a chance. Just looking at my scouting report here. Strong eyes, awareness, diagnostic skills. He's going to be in the right position to go make a play. Right, you know, it's funny, we seem to have had a conversation about that with a lot of the Stanford kids, whether it was David Yankee or some of these other people. Not exactly the measurables you want, but you value the football intelligence that they have to have to get into Stanford to begin with, and that translates on the field, does it not? Yes, it does. Very definitely does. My son coached there for two years with Jim Harbaugh, and they really, really, they get by against superior athletes because they play smarter and they play tougher. And that translates to the NFL. You know what I've noticed, too, with the Stanford guys? They understand and appreciate the, the concept of team better than a lot of other players that you, that you watch. Maybe it's because they realize they don't have the elite talent and they, they figured it out that if you got to do all the little things and work together as a team. But all of these guys, when they get to the league, that's what the feedback you get is that these are team players. Well, it's interesting, too. I mean, you had Trent Murphy, who David Shaw said was by far the meanest, nastiest player on that squad. And they had Shane Scott that is still on the board. With a whole hawk and uh, the, the face paint. So they still have another guy that may be drafted. Meanwhile, Kansas City Chiefs are on the clock. They need wide receivers. Where will they go? Let's go to the podium. With the 163rd pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Aaron Murray, quarterback, Georgia. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the first of the three SEC last name M quarterbacks to go. It is Aaron Murray out of the University of Georgia. Aaron, of course, just like Zach Mettenberger, Torrey ACL late in the year. Well, he left SEC now with every single record you'd want as a passer. And he did. And I think when you look at a veteran, a guy that played a lot of big games, a lot of football in a traditional offense, I think you look at the reads and what he had to go through in terms of progression, getting the ball out of his hand, going through, finding that third and fourth option. He did that. He's only a little over six feet tall, doesn't have a great arm. He's going to draw comparisons to every six foot quarterback. He doesn't have a great arm. He draws comparisons to Drew Brees. He can move around. Around, but he's always looking to throw and find an open receiver. He's a tough, competitive kid. People say he couldn't win big games when he did this past year, uh, despite some injuries that they had. Then he was injured himself. Aaron Murray, can he be Drew Brees? Probably not. Can he be a successful starting quarterback? I wouldn't count him out. As I looked at the tape, I saw Drew Brees time and time and time again. Quick release, move around in the pocket, leader, forceful. And then, lo and behold, up would come the interception where you'd say, why did he do that? Right. And, and and it got a little bit better this year, yeah. although some of it showed up toward the end. Now, maybe he was injured. So the bottom line is, does he have a chance? Yes, but he's got to clean up the interception. And Andy Reid knows quarterbacks. Well, I mean, he grabs quarterbacks like no other. Not, not only that, but let's be honest, they're trying to work out a contract for Alex Smith, and that thing is going a little less smoothly than they'd like it to go. Guess who signed Kurt Warner? Out of college, but nobody else wanted his lunch. I'm going to say it was John Andrew Reid. John GM of the Green Bay Packers yeah. at the time. Keep now this in mind, it. he leads the SEC in career leader in completions, passing yards, and touchdown passes. Okay, so a quarterback's off the board going to the Kansas City Chiefs. It's Aaron Murray. It is the Bengals next up on the clock. Let's go to Cincinnati State. Yeah, we'll make make your selection. With the 24th pick of the fifth round, number 164 overall, the Cincinnati Bengals select A.J. McCarron, quarterback, Alabama. Of course. Of 
course, we went all day to find out where these SEC quarterbacks are going. Back to back, it goes Aaron Murray, and now it's A.J. McCarron, Todd. McCarron has the prototypical measurables you look for. 6'3", 220 pounds. He's a winner. You have to start there. You really do. 36 and 4 is a starter. Two times he won the national championship as the starting quarterback. And while he was at Alabama, the Princeton Tide won three national championships. When I watched him on tape, I was disappointed with the mechanics. I thought he got into some bad habits, not transferring his weight from back to front. It's coachable, it's correctable, but he's got to improve it. I thought some of his best tape was when it was off script. When things went poorly and he was outside the pocket making things happen and finding receivers. But when pressure class looked late and he was not expecting it, then he would get into trouble. I don't think he reacts very well initially to inside pressure. So there are strengths to him, there are weaknesses. He has average arm strength, but in this system with Cincinnati, he can come in and has a little bit of time to work on the mechanical issues and try to improve. Well, there's going to be pressure on Andy Dalton if he doesn't play into the playoffs this year. And I'm not going to take anything away from Andy Dalton. He's done a great job. He's done the playoffs three straight years, but he's got only one touchdown hit, seven turnovers in those three playoff games. Everybody knows that there's somebody to come along and challenge Dalton. There's going to be that opportunity. Can McCarron do it quickly? Transitioning from Alabama to the NFL remains to be safe. Bill, we'll get your take on this kid. Like I said, West Coast offense. Well, his arm gets stronger once he's in the leg. I like his feet in the pocket. I think he's an underrated athlete. What do you think of A.J. McCarron? He was hard for me to evaluate, and here's why. Because Alabama is so good, I jokingly call it the 33rd franchise. If he virtually always has a clean pocket and a clean secondary, you've got to commit an eighth defender to the box against Alabama. So you don't really know what he's going to be like when he faces these kinds of difficult situations. Really develop. The chances are he's pretty darn tough if he played for Nick Saban. That you know. So he's got a chance to develop. Andy Dalton is uh, maybe not exactly what the Bengals want. This is an interesting battle to watch in camp. Well, yeah, Andy Dalton's also in the last year of his contract. Right. His rookie contract is the second round pick. But your point, A.J. McCarron has addressed that in the past. He's like, well, at the next level, I'm going to be playing with NFL players, so I don't see why that's a negative. We'll see how it translates for A.J. McCarron in Cincinnati. For more on the quarterback situation, which is now really interesting for the Bengals, let's go up top to Adam Jeff and Chris Morton, guys. Well, listen, you know, you guys just talked about Aaron Murray and Amy Reed's affinity for quarterbacks. Don't forget their general manager, John Dorsey was in Green Bay for such a long time, but they always drafted quarterbacks, especially in this range, who eventually either became a starter or a tradable commodity. Aaron Murray recovered from an ACL injury, had a very good pro day. He's mature, set a lot of records in Georgia, and Kansas City was one of those clubs that was enamored, even with Derek Carr, if they had traded back out of the first round. So quarterback was always going to be Something that the Chiefs acquired when they get one in Aaron Murray, a guy certainly that Andy Reid likes. And with the 164th overall pick in the fifth round, the Bengals took former Alabama quarterback A.G. McCarron, which means there are now two rookie quarterbacks in the state of Ohio. McCarron in Cincinnati and former Texas a and quarterback Johnny Manziel in Cleveland. Now McCarron steps into an instant situation, Trey, as you alluded to, Andy Dalton in the final year of his contract. They have not gone very far on talks for a new deal, and so maybe McCarron will get a shot. The Bengals wanted their shot at Teddy Bridgewater. Didn't get it, but they did get A.G. McCarron. Do not plenty more of plenty more. Back to Radio City Music Hall. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first eight-passenger crossover to offer an EPA-estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales Event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional-grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. Welcome to the family, Dad. I've been hearing good things about Sprint's new network. Oh, it's unbelievable. Fewer drop calls, better call quality. It's fast, right? Ils ont un tout nouveau réseau LTE avec un spectre très bon. You can also text. Yes, you can also text. It's Trey Good. Okay, I, I don't know where to go with that. 
Join America's newest network, now with faster speeds, fewer drop calls, and better call quality. And for a limited time, get a switching bonus worth up to $650. Happy connecting from Sprint. Four minutes ago, we gave Ian a Bud Light and asked if he's up for whatever. Then this happened. Bud Light, the perfect beer for when you're a little freaked out by this bachelorette party, but these ladies seem nice enough and Richie Watts is killing it, so okay. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. See more at upforwhatever.com. Come on, lay your arms up. Why do you have to put on a sweater? Because we are going out to brunch. Why? Because it's Mother's Day, and on Mother's Day, sometimes you have to wear things that you don't like to wear. Now we get to drive and sit in traffic, go to a fancy restaurant, and order a bunch of overpriced entrees. They're really small. Things like quiche, <coughs> which is egg pie, believe it or not. Make her Mother's Day meal special by making it yourself. Rockin' Saturday night, huh, Lefty? I know that's her for her kid. Ooh, pretty progressive mom. Oh, my shoot some yeah! oh! That's one way to get him to sleep through the night. Wow, look at mom. Oh, Blend it with a PG-13. Starts May 23rd. What you're looking at is the world's largest off-road lineup. Ranger, Sportsman, Racer, all in the leaders and all on sale now. Sportsman start at just $51.99. Racers are under 10 grand. Rangers start at $89.99. Top of the line, XP number for the Take your pick of the off-road units. With the as high as $1,300. As low as $100 a month. During the Polaris XP sales event. ESPN's coverage of the 2014 NFL Draft presented by Bud Light is brought to you by GMC, the official vehicle of the NFL, and Sprint. Welcome back inside Radio City Music Hall. Trey Wingo here with the Commander-in-Chief, Bill Bowen, and Calvin Shea, Mel Beckham, Jr. Mel, best quarterbacks available. We still got Mettenberger waiting for his name to be called as... Jeff Matthews out of Cornell is a very interesting prospect. I'm telling you, we're talking about hands. He's got huge hands, and he throws a nice ball. You know he's smart coming out of Cornell. I thought maybe sixth round for Matthews. We're going to be at the end of round five now. I think he'll be a nice acquisition. Todd, you like Connor Shaw? I do. He got just one game in South Carolina. I thought he improved as a passer. does not have a strong arm. But if you talk about a guy you want in your locker room as a backup who's going to study and help the starter study and help the starter prepare. So to me, Connor Shaw, I, we always knew there was going to be a late round pick. I think he's going to be a good value, and he's going to wind up sticking around the league for a long time. He's a coach's son that loves the game. If you have Johnny or RG, he's a perfect fit as a backup because of the mobility. Because he run the same out. Yes. And he showed a lot of toughness, by the way, at oh, South yeah. Carolina. He hung in there and took big-time shots. Left South Carolina with most of the winningest records in terms of a starting quarterback for the game time. Let's get you caught up on the last two picks, and let's start on the defensive line. Ryan Carruthers out of Arkansas State going to the Chargers now. I like the pick. I watched this kid off this year. 6'1 in the quarter, 337 pounds, tremendous strength, super strong. 32 reps at the combine for the Red Wolves. I think it'll be, end up being a rotation guy. But at the Red Wolves, when you watch them week after week, the kid made plays. Much more productive this year. He plays with good pad level and leverage. He can be very disruptive. Solid run stopper. I think you look at him and you say, boy, he got into the backfield. He's got that wrestling background for his high school career in Tennessee. He's not going to be a pass rusher. He's not going to be a guy behind the line. But he can handle the run responsibilities, take one to double team, and 337 pounds of that kind of strength. He can. I like to pick. The best nose tackles going all the way back to Curly Cup are wrestlers. Right. There's a direct correlation. Golden, 
Bob Golick, not Mike. <laughs> the, the direct call Mike, Mike was okay. Mike oh, was okay wrestling. Right. But he wrestled a little bit nicer. Right. 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 Yeah, that's right. right. To that point, Ryan Carruthers thought about he thought he was going to Stanford on a wrestling deal, but then he grew past 285 pounds, which was the limit in the NCAA, so he had to go play football, and now he's a member of the San Diego Chargers. Meanwhile, we take a look at the next pick. It's a defensive end, Jonathan Newsom out of Ball State, going to the Colts. Yeah, the last two years, it's 16 and a half sacks. He's 6'2 and a half, 247 pounds, runs in the low 47s. He got him at 473. Got the long arms you look for, 33 inch arms, quick first step, adequate bend around the edge, and I thought he closed very well. Has some pop as a tackler. Good fit, I think, here as an outside linebacker in this Indianapolis 3 4. They see Robert Mathis like abilities here. He's not as fast as Robert Wright, and that will be the that will tell the tale. Is he fast enough in the NFL? Well, the other thing he brings a little baggage. He got the ball state after two seasons at Ohio State under Jim Trussell, departing after the 2011 tattoo scandal that led to Trussell no longer being the head coach. Also missed spring practice because of an academic issue when he was arrested in August 12, in August of 2012 for marijuana possession. So we've seen some flashes from him. There've also been some things off the field that you're going to have to deal with when Jonathan Newsom comes in. Bidding sincerity, safety out of Alabama, coming back from an ACL issue, goes to the New Orleans Saints, who have already kind of loaded up on safety anyway. He's been around football his whole life. I mean, he, I tell you, he's got a tight coaching son. He's got a guy that really understands the game, loves the game, does everything the right way. Jamie had the injury, but when you look at it, he made a lot of big plays, smart kick. Understand that to read the quarterback's eyes, those really should be built. Well coached, fundamentally sound. Special teams obviously back up safety, but Vinny Sinceri was a key element at this safety defense. In the Ryan defense, you need a guy to get everybody directed at the back end because it's so complicated. Think Jimmy Leonard yes. with the Jets. That's who he is. To get everybody lined up, he doesn't have the measurables you want, but he's got, got it up here, and he's a coach himself. Well, again, he's been around the game for as long as you can remember. And actually, out of all the people that are coming back from an ACL, uh, ESPN insider Lewis Reddick saying many sincerities return from that ACL is as good as anybody's, whether it was Aaron Murray, Zach Mettenberger, or anybody else that was draft eligible. But we've been on a little bit of an Alabama getaway here, for lack of a better term. And what we've seen out of the uh, time. There you go. Uh, C.J. Mosley, Ha Ha Clinton Dix went early. Cyrus Quanjo went in the second round with Buffalo. Then we've seen in the fourth and fifth rounds, Kevin Norwood, Ed Stinson, A.J. McCarron, and now Vinny Sinceri, both of those picks. The last three picks uh, coming, three of the last eight, I believe, uh, have come from Alabama. So uh, you, know, you never know. That's uh, always going to be the case with a Nick Saban coach punch. Now we have Marky Spruill, the kid out of Syracuse, the linebacker going to the Falcons as they continue to add rushers. Yeah, and this is another guy that Bill and I saw at that NFL PA collegiate bowl. He flies. Now, change of direction, not quite there, but you get him on a straight line and point him in the right direction, he'll get there in a hurry. Go this way. Closing burst is tremendous. There's the quarterback. Exactly. Go get him and finish. And that's what he does. I mean, he's only 229 pounds and 6 foot 1, but he runs in the four fives. He explodes up the field. And on third downs, he just torn him loose. 13 and a half career sacks. Very instinctive, effective blitzer. And he blitzed from the inside and from the outside. Really good pick because this is a specialized nickel player. Yes. To be on the field in nickel situation. You can line him up inside or out and rush him, and he can cause problems. And cover kicks, too. Yes. If you look at the Falcons board there, you saw Rashid Hagelin, you saw Prince Shembo. Now you get Marquis School. Why are they doing this? Only 61 sacks for Atlanta the last two seasons. Second worst in the NFL. They got away with it in 2012 when they were the number one seed, and they only had 29 and a half sacks that year in the NFC. Plus, they've gone to a power 3 4 approach which means that you need situational players like this to come on the field in nickel situations. The power guys can't, can't rush in nickel situations. Exactly. You see the success, whether it was this year in Seattle with waves of defensive linemen coming in. Go back to the early 90s when Jimmy Johnson's Dallas Cowboys had a rotation of seven 
eight defensive linemen, and that's where you get that constant pressure because you're always getting fresh legs attacking the quarterback. And just to, to look at the fifth round winding up, look at some good players coming off the board. Guys at least have roles in the NFL, whether it's special teams, situational packages. This is a deep draft, and we're at the end of round five, and I think this could be a record number of players that make NFL rosters out of this draft. I don't see a lot of guys that look like they'll be overmatched and will be cut from a roster and won't have a future in the NFL up until this point of the draft. It's certainly not yet. This is it. And this is a result of all those juniors coming in. And Thomas, to mention up real quickly, all the vast majority, all the six picks coming into this draft, upperclassmen, the seniors, guys with experience, and usually their team captains, highly productive football players. You got a bunch more in this draft. All right, the draft continues as we're coming to the end of the fifth round here. When we continue here in Radio City News about what to make of the Philadelphia Eagles and the selection that Chip Kelly has made. We'll have Chip Kelly join us when we continue here as the draft continues. The Radio City News call coming to the end of the fifth round of the draft. Honestly, the offseason isn't really off for me. I've got a lot to do. That's why I got my surface. It's great for watching game film and drawing up plays. It's got one note, so I can stay on top of my to-do list, which has been absolutely absurd since the beginning. With Skype, it's just really easy to stay in touch with the kids I work with. All right, Russ, you're good to go. Hi, right, fellas. Hi, right, Russ. Back to work. <laughs> Go somewhere you never thought you'd ever be. Go jump in the lake. Go watch your kid at your first crush. Go to Bass Pro Shops for great deals during our summer kickoff sale. Like ladies' drawstring shorts starting under $10 each. Redhead men's stocked in polo shirts for under $13. And take half off these rugged shark men's boat shoes. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Hi, I'm going to go Okay. I thought you were going to... Done. It's a phenomenon that's happening across America. Hey, buddy, I'm going to mow the lawn and then play catch, right? Okay, look at my lawn. It must be the Toro time machines. To get trimmer close time courtesy with smart speed with a 30-inch wide Toro time master. Cut your mowing time by over forty percent. Now get special savings during Toro days. Change in the speed wheel in an opposing lead. The next best must rise in Brooklyn. Portland heads home with a lot to prove and little time as the top seed of Spurs hit their stride. The NBA playoffs. Heat Nets at 8 Eastern on ABC. Spurs Blazers at 10.30 on ESPN tonight. On October 1st, 2013, health care reform launched all across the United States. Health insurance for all Americans is finally here. The free health hotline is now accepting calls. Call now to find out what you're entitled to. So many people do not take advantage of the benefits offered to them by health care reform because they don't call. All callers will get the Together Health Group prescription pricing plan free. Get the health insurance you deserve. Call the free health hotline now. Call 800-425-6869. Call now. On April 1st, 2014, the President of the United States announced that over 7 million people had enrolled in health care reform. If you missed the deadline, you may still qualify through a special enrollment period. The free health hotline is still accepting calls. Call now to find out what you're entitled to. So many people do not take advantage of the benefits offered to them by health care reform because they don't call. All callers will get the Together Health Group prescription pricing plan free. Call the free health hotline now. Call 800-425-6168. Call now. 2014 NFL Draft continues as we focus on Philly in his first year as NFL head coach. The Eagles rode Chip Kelly's high-flying offense all the way to a division title. The Eagles' first since 2010. And people wondered if his offense would work in the NFL. As we say hi to head coach of the Eagles with our Bud Light team report. Chip, welcome in. And I know you like to keep the pace going. So let's get right to your draft class. In the first round, you actually move down, take a, a defensive player, defensive end, Marcus Smith from Louisville. All he did in the FBS was 
get one sack every game. Why was he the right fit for you? You know, we transitioned when we first got here from a, it was a 4-3 defense um, for many years, and then we came in and we're now running a 3-4 scheme. Um, really like Marcus's athletic ability. Really, he's a true outside linebacker uh, with the ability to rush and to drop into coverage and um, just thought he was a great fit for what we do schematically and has a huge upside. And then you went wide receiver, wide receiver. We know about Jordan Matthews from Vanderbilt, the, the most receptions in SEC history. You've had your eye on him for a while, hadn't you? We have. He's uh, you know, just a unique kid and, and uh, special in a lot of different ways. But um, when you just look at him from the tangible aspect of 6'3", 215-plus pounds, he ran 4'4", 6 at the Combine. You know, the all-time leading receiver in the SEC, and, you know, the, everybody knows how well they play defense in that conference. Um, everybody knew when Vanderbilt was playing that they were going to throw it to him, and he still was productive. Um, and then you add his work ethic and intangibles off the field in terms of he graduated from Vanderbilt in three and a half years. Uh, and when every person you talk to associated with that program talks about him, they talk about how competitive he is and the confidence that he has and that no one's going to outwork him, and that was very evident to us. And, we were excited, and one of the reasons we, we moved up in the second is we didn't think he was going to be there when we were picking at 54, so we, we had to go up and get him. And you probably had a little intel on Oregon's Josh Huff, right? Know a little bit about him. You know, <laughs> I think that that's one of the luxuries of, of us coming here just a couple of years ago. We, we, we've got a pretty good knowledge of some of the guys in the draft, and, uh, you know, you're getting an explosive wide receiver. Um, he's played running back for us. He was an inside receiver for us at – at Oregon uh, is a great special teams player, physical football player, is tough, um, got a great work ethic, you know, another kid that we thought really fit for what we're doing on the offensive side of the ball, and then um, moved on to today, we're really focused on some defensive players. All right, well, you know, it's so easy for everybody to draw the comparison and say Jordan and Josh could take the place of Deshaun Jackson, who you released, and you've stressed that with Deshaun, it was about fit. He wasn't the right fit. So what is it you're looking for from your offense? Well, I, I think obviously if people keep forgetting we have Jeremy Macklin and our two outside receivers will be Riley Cooper and Jeremy Macklin and that's where Deshaun played and now uh, replacing Jason Avon is really where uh, Jordan and Josh come in in terms of being inside receivers. So um, we see a ton of man coverage. We need people that can separate. Um, not, not anybody really gets open in this league. Everybody's so good at coverage that they're there. So you have to make a lot of contested catches, and there's a lot of jump balls that go along. And, you know, we felt like if we could get bigger, uh, we, we got bigger at the perimeter. We got, you know, Riley Cooper on one side, Mac on the other side, and then, and then some real size on, on, in the slot. I think that's going to help us because every, battle, every ball is going to be contested in this league, and you've got to be a physical guy to be able to go get it. You know, it seemed like fans kept focusing with Deshaun on the stats and all the production. Is it tough to make people understand it's an evolution process and, and that's why you're moving on? No, I don't know what everybody's thought process is. And, and uh, I know Deshaun's going to be very productive in how Washington uses him. But, you know, we have to put together what's the best team for us. And um, I know he's going to be a successful player. He's got a lot of really good football left in him. And um, in this league, you have to make tough decisions at certain times. But, um, you know, we, we've got to figure out what's the best direction for us, and that's the direction we went in. Chip, clearly one of the league's most efficient offenses, and you've locked up the eight guys who, who played the most, who got, had the most snaps. What does this mean going forward? You know, we, we've, we, we've got a vision on how this is going to look here, uh, and um, uh, with great leadership from our owner and, and our general manager and in terms of explaining what we, we want in football players and how do we do that. Um, and when those guys can say, hey, you, you target them, you know, we, we know who you want, and they can lock them up and get them under contract for us, I think it really bodes well for the future. And Nick Foles coming off that sensational season. How would you like to see him improve? You know, you just watch Nick. We've been back since April 21st, and uh, the confidence that he brings when he walks in the building now, it's his second year in the system, has a great understanding of our offense. You watch him helping out some of the younger guys now and kind of telling them where they need to be in certain play calls and how he carries himself. Uh, last year at this time, he was learning it and competing with, with Michael, you know, to see if he was going to have an opportunity to even play. And now he's coming back, all coming off the Pro Bowl, and you know, throwing 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. Uh, you know, so I think for Nick, just like everybody on offense, we're, we're hoping year two is better than year one. Well, something your entire draft class has in common, they're all college grads. Why is that so important to you? Oh, yeah. 
Well, number one, I think it shows you the intelligence factor. Um, but really, number two for us is that it, it shows you that they're committed to establishing goals and, and following through on their goals. And in, in that um, you're going to face some adversity, whether it was in school going going through or on the football field or whatnot. But you got you got you got a bunch of driven guys, and, and I think that's just one evidence that that they are driven, and it kind of shows you what we're looking for here: that combination of mental toughness and and. Uh, that high football intelligence, and, and that's just another indication for us when we look at that, that that factor. Playing smart football in Philly. Chip, thanks for your time. Look forward All right, Susie. to seeing what's in store. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles adding to the arsenal, trying to maintain the top spot in the NFC East as a 2014 NFL draft continues. I'm Johnny Williams, and my dream was to have a beer with my friends at America's Highest Bar. Shock Top made it happen. Shock Top, Belgian style, unfiltered weed. Live life unfiltered. That's for Heidi? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. She's going to love it. Right? No. no. She will not. Four words. He went to Jared. 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 Trust us. Now step away from the jersey and nobody gets hurt. Jerry, the Galleria of Jewelry, has a selection larger than ordinary jewelry stores, including unique styles you won't find anywhere else. The perfect gift I love it. for an almost perfect guy. That's why he went to Jerry. <laughs> What does an apron have to do with car insurance? An apron is hard work. An apron is pride in what you do. An apron is not quitting until you've made something a little better. What does an apron have to do with car insurance? For us? Everything. I have no idea what you're saying, but count me in. This season's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be best friends with that guy and that guy. We're gonna work so hard, our moves will have moves. I'm gonna make my mom proud. Good game, good game, good game. We'll be doing this a lot. We're going all the way. But I only get to play if my coaches are heads off football certified. Every Sunday is an opportunity for breakthroughs and comebacks, upsets and miracles, and for new stars to become legends. NFL Sunday Ticket on Direct TV is your opportunity to become the most powerful fan and choose the matchups you want to watch. That's every day, every Sunday, no matter where you live. For the most football on television, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS to order NFL Sunday tickets only for Direct TV. Big news, baseball fans. For the first time ever, catch all the action of MLB Extra Innings on Direct TV at home, online, on your tablet, and your phone. Every team, no matter where you live, every player, no matter where you go, you can preview up to eight games all on one channel. It's a steal. Game changing features at a game saving price. Put the game in your hands with MLB.tv and MLB Extra Innings on Direct TV. Welcome back inside Radio City Music Hall. It's round five coming to a close here in the 2014 draft. That means we have two more rounds to go. Trey Wingo here with Bill Polian, Todd McShay, and the venerable one, Mel Faith. When we left off, we were talking about Marquis Strill and why Atlanta would continue to go after more pass rushers. The inside linebacker, actor, backer, the English, out of Syracuse. Ronald Powell, outside linebacker, went for the Saints. And then the San Francisco 49ers pick up Pete Brazier, the cornerback, out of Florida State. Now we continue. Jordan Tripp, outside linebacker, goes to the Dolphins, out of Montana. Jimmy Statton, defensive tackle, out of Middle Tennessee goes to Seattle. Offensive tackle Wesley Johnson out of Vanderbilt goes to Pittsburgh. Devin Kennard, 
the linebacker out of USC goes to the Giants. That name be, may be familiar to NFL fans. His father, Derek, played 10, 12 years in the NFL, won a Super Bowl ring as an offensive lineman with the Dallas Cowboys. And pick 175, ladies and gentlemen, center John Urschel out of Penn State. Look, we all have our favorite players in the draft. You all have certain kids that just sort of like. Allow me, if you will, this introduction of John Herschel, ladies and gentlemen. John Herschel is ridiculously intelligent. It's the only way to describe it. His mother saw him reading a math book when he was 12 years old in upstate New York, and she said, who reads a math book? So they sent him to the University of Buffalo to take a math class. He was doing so well in that math class, the kids in the class that didn't know he was 12 asked him to tutor the college kids. We'll have more on John Urschel and what he does a little bit later, but let's talk about him on the field first. What do you like about John Urschel? As, as a football player, I think he's very consistent with his angles. He does a great job of getting his hands inside and working to finish. Now, he's not the most powerful guy, but he, I really like the wide base that he plays with and the consistency that he showed on tape. He can continue to get stronger, not an elite athlete, but I really Mel thought that when you look at him, I thought he had a chance in that third, fourth round range because of how consistent he was. The football intelligence, it's there, obviously, and just natural instinct to the brains, and he got a lot better as the senior, senior season went on. He definitely did. I thought you talk about guys coming out of high school. You talk about Urschel and the way he developed at Penn State. Uh, now he's going to be in line to maybe be a backup role player with the Baltimore Ravens. But you get guys that come out of high school so highly rated, and they uh, don't develop into that type of prospect once they get into the NFL. And sometimes a guy like Urschel comes along and they make some maximize his ability, becomes a late round pick, and now's a chance to pick that Baltimore Ravens squad. Offensive lineman has to be smart. It's a complicated position. Next to quarterback, they have to be the smartest, and he obviously has all of that. Allow me, from what to New York. Yes. Allow me to <laughs> expound on that, if you will. How smart is he? He graduated in three years with a 4.0. He's already got his master's in mathematics. He's working on a second master's degree in math education. His Twitter handle is at math meets football. He taught two classes at Penn State. What were their names? Uh, the names of the classes he taught were Integral Vector Calculus, which, of course, we all took. And then, of course, he also taught a section of math, trigonometry, and analytic geometry. In fact, Bill O'Brien, the head coach at Penn State, had a chart set up for freshmen, sophomore, juniors, or seniors by color codes so they know if they were in a class where they would miss practice. It was red, yellow, green, blue, all those colors. And there was one color that was purple. And Bill O'Brien said, that is one purple. And the assistant said, that's Urschel. He doesn't go to class. He teaches class. John Urschel is one of those guys that you know he'll figure out a way to make it work for the Baltimore Ravens in Penn State. At Math Meets Football, now you know the rest of the story. One of my favorite players in the game. Love story time. We continue now taking a look at Ronald Powell, the outside linebacker out of Florida, going to the New Orleans Saints. Well, oh, it goes to Rob Ryan. I think there's a guy, top high school prospect in the nation in 2010. He leaves the Gators with six sacks right away. Unfortunately, 2012 had to sit out that year for his ACL during a spring game. Comes back this past season, led the Gators with four sacks. Wasn't as disruptive, though. But he's a quick switch athlete. He goes from point A to point B in a hurry. Is 6'3", 237 pounds. Think about long uh, arms. You think about a 4'6", 5'4". You think about a guy size. It's in the NFL. He can develop. He is a hitter. He's a guy that plays a little reckless at times. But he was talented coming out of high school. He still possesses that same physical and athletic ability. The injury set him back. Didn't allow him to really finish off as strong as he would have. Now he's two years removed from the ACL. They're hoping that Ronald Powell, in that Rob Ryan defense, with all that special potential, can flourish. He never met a fight that he didn't like. And I don't hey, Rob, 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 Rob Ryan. Ryan's going to love this guy. <laughs> Along those lines, that was the 169th pick that they got in exchange for Darren Scrolls, so no pressure on Powell here. Offense, our outside linebacker, rather, throws the trip out of Montana, goes to Miami. Jordan Tripp is an outstanding player. 
He stepped up in, uh, in, in, in level of play at the senior ball and distinguished himself. He's got numbers. Uh, four, six, seven for the 40, and six, nine, two for the triangle drill. Those are making numbers for players in the National Football League. That's what outside linebackers run. Here we see taking a fumble to the house. You can see the speed there. But he's got toughness. He's got acceleration. He's got a nose for the football. And he proved at the senior bowl that he could step up in and uh, level the competition and handle it. Much like a guy named Jordan Sen, who was an outstanding special teams guy for us with the Colts. And with the Carolina Panthers. Well, he was a four-year starter for the Grizzlies, and he said this. I don't want to sound arrogant, but I believe I'm the most personal linebacker in the draft. And he said the only reason I'm not a first-round pick is because I didn't play at Alabama or Texas. You're going to get your chance, Jordan Tripp, with the Miami Dolphins. Moving on, we take a look at Wesley Johnson, the big offensive tackle out of Vanderbilt, going to the Pittsburgh Steelers who need help up front. Yeah, I really like this pick for the Steelers because uh, of the I don't know him that well. because of the versatility that Wesley Johnson brings. 6'5", 297 pounds. He's a little bit undersized as the tackle position, doesn't have the ideal life, but he projects to maybe center or guard in the National Football League. And he's played four out of five positions on the offensive line for Vandy. This guy's a classic overachiever. Plays with a chip on his shoulder, blocks through the whistle. He's tough. He's smart. He's a consistent competitor. And that versatility, as you mentioned, Trey, the team that's looking for help over that offensive front at multiple positions, I think it's really valuable to the Steelers. Now listen, this is, a, this is a Steelers team that sort of lost its identity over the last couple of years. And you look at their board. Ryan Shazier, they know how to develop linebackers. Stephon Tewitt, it could be a perfect fit in that defense for Dick LeBeau. They get the change of pace guy, Three Archer, to go along with Le'Veon Bell. And perhaps Shaquille Richardson, the cornerback out of Arizona, may be more important than anybody. Why is that? The Steelers had more defensive backs over the age of 30 take snaps in the NFL than any other team. They have got to get younger on the back end of that draft or back end of that defense and then Wesley Johnson. Okay, you mentioned Kennard, Devin Kennard, the linebacker from USC. Devin Kennard goes to the New York Giants, flashing sometimes. Yeah, I think you look at a kid who's got great versatility, no question about that. You think about a defensive end, outside linebacker, middle linebacker, he did it all. When you watch him, I wasn't as impressed as you thought you would be, considering the talent this kid brings to the table. Didn't see explosiveness as an edge pass rusher. Yeah, I can't envision him as a guy who's going to be a sack artist. As a run guy, he's average. The fact they saw action in so many positions gives you a chance to be a backup type in the NFL. I think he's versatile, he's coachable. I just didn't see enough to project him as a starter in the NFL. Yeah, I thought he was about average across the board. Devon Kennard, he's been there for a while, has experience, defensive end, inside linebacker, he played in 2010, outside linebacker, he's played. I think they're going to try to see if they can get him to improve with a little bit of work with his hands as a pass rusher and maybe contribute on special teams. At this point in the draft, I think it's a ball. They like the versatility. Yes. They like their linebackers to be interchangeable. And he gives them that. But listen, they're trying to revamp everything that they're doing with the New York Giants after a disastrous season. They strengthen that offensive line a little bit coming into the draft to be a free agency period. They picked up a couple of running backs. And obviously they got to rebuild that to Now they want to make sure they're tougher on the inside because so many of those Eli Manning interceptions, he led the league because he had no time to throw and he was just bailing out. All right, it is the Tennessee Titans that are now on the clock. Let's go listen in to Dave Gardy, Senior VP of Football Operations for the NFL. With the 178th pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Zach, Zach Mittenberger, quarterback, LSU. Well, here we go. The run of SEC quarterbacks continues. It was Murray, then McCarron, and now it's the third of the SEC M boys, Zach Mettenberger. Zach Mettenberger goes in the sixth round to the Tennessee Titans. And listen, first, before we get into the discussion, what do you like about his take? I like his size. I like his arm. I like the way he throws the football. He benefited from having Jarvis Landry, who never dropped any catchable balls. And Odell Beckham Jr., who really developed this season into a wow factor player. He had a line in front of him that did a good job for the most part. 
And he had Jeremy Hill running the football and a host of other backs in that stable back for Les Miles. You look at it, and Cameron obviously helped this situation. Now around him, kid. He's not going to give you any mobility. you got to protect him with a strong offensive line. He's going to get sacked a lot. He's had the injuries as well. Yeah, you, know, you look at Mettenberger, the arm, the size, the season he had, had a fault to them. You thought maybe into the second or third round discussion, but there's other issues involved here, Todd. The scouting, the scouting report doesn't change. We can sit here and think about all the negatives, and I think there are a lot of them. I was not a big fan. I heard as early as second round with Mettenberger, and I didn't see it. Some others did see it, though, and, and the bottom line is, at this point in the draft, you can see why, you can understand it. You bring him in as a six-round pick, you hope he has a chip on his shoulder, you hope he's learned some lessons, and he's ready to, to go and do the right thing. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not he's going to be able to transition to the National Football League level. And I think the biggest thing, though, if he's going to, is he's got to improve inside the pocket with his quickness, the awareness, and beating the blitz with his eyes. Yeah, I don't see any quick twitching, and that's especially true with his feet. They're planted in the ground. They don't move. You can't avoid it. Hence the injury. Secondly, he hasn't always done the right thing during his career, and you want your quarterback to do the right thing all the time. You want everybody else on that football team to look up to the quarterback and say, this is our leader, and he hasn't measured up in that area. Well, to that point, he started out of Georgia, and it was a vicious battle and competition with Aaron Murray for the starting quarterback there. Ran into some of that trouble you're talking about. Had to leave Georgia, ended up at LSU in a sort of a circumlocutous route. He's had that injury twice now with the knee. He does stand in there and, and take the hit. There's no question about that. They'll stand in there and deliver the throw. But as we said, he's one of those players that had a diluted sample at the combine. For more on that and what may be ahead for Zach Mettenberger, let's go back upstairs to ESPN Insiders, Adam Schefter, and Chris Borges. Guys? Well, whatever the character concerns are, and some of them went back to Georgia, and then obviously with this diluted sample test, which they have tried to explain away as being instructed by the physical therapist to drink a lot of water. And that's what we're saying, produce the diluted sample. On the other hand, knee surgery, but he has been healing well. Uh, this is a guy who would have gone, I think, in the second round or third round had he not had these issues. People do like the fact he played for Cam Cameron uh, his last couple years at LSU. Uh, pro offense, you see all the pro throws. But for the Tennessee Titans, listen, Cam with and I'm nice to throw from the pocket. And, uh, and, and there's obviously Jake Walker's up. Issues about the Liz Frank uh, injury to coming back from, and Charlie Whiter's the only healthy quarterback for sure. And then there's the contractual situation with Jake Locker as well. The Titans did not pick up the fifth year option, so Jake Locker's headed into the last year of his contract and really what amounts to a make or break year there in Tennessee. As for Zach Mettenberger, he took only one visit during the interview process from the time of the combine all the way up to the official end visit date, and that was with. The Tennessee Titans, who had no plans to take a quarterback early on, but they get Mettenberger here at this spot in the draft in the sixth round. More to come from Radio City Music Hall. Get there anywhere. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first eight-passenger crossover to offer an EPA-estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional-grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. It's out there. It's that voice in your head. Making sure you sleep through that yoga class. Convincing you that one donor couldn't possibly lead to another. Average. Average blames the camera for those extra 10 pounds. It sets a treadmill on a mosey, a stroller, a wire. Need an excuse? Average has a move. Skip the gym. It'll probably be too crowded anyway. Average. Yeah, take it easy there, fella. 
The average has memory issues. I forgot to work out. I forgot to work out. And memory issues. To work out. It's crowning achievement. Everyone gets a trophy. Average is good. Average is good. No. Average is average. You can beat it. And it starts at GNC. Matt. Last time. Yeah. Nate, I'm shot. What are you doing? Oh, come on, Matt. Knock it off. Come on, Matt. That's it. Everyone on the sideline. Welcome to the rescue mission. So I'm going to go ahead and put you guys to work. Gospel does not define you as men. What defines you is your character and your honesty, in which you guys will become when you move on to life. <laughs> All right, so I'm Matt. This is my assistant coach, and we're gonna cut you guys today. Big move, put it up. Good shot. Check it out. Got direct TV. And we can put TVs anywhere without looking at all those wires. Hey, and I have cable. Wires are so ugly. Well, I mean, some wires are. Some wires are what, honey? Really great. <laughs> really great. Hello? Uh -huh. Who said they were weird? Nobody. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. I said weird. Yeah. I said, yeah. I said not weird. Now you don't need to see cable wires and boxes in every room. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Time for a GMC Never Say Never moment. Looking back as we have moved into the ethereal plane of the sixth round, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Brady, that worked out okay. 199 pick in 2000. Scott Bueller used to keep that draft card on his board in New England. I'm not as smart as I think I am. Because otherwise, I wouldn't have waited until the 199 selection to take him in 2000. Not enough arm strength, said the scouting report. Now, what do they know? Oh, I know, John. Don't worry. So, other notes again. Six round picks. Alfred Morris, Trey Deuces. All he did was sell his college. He says, shut up, you gangster. Now, go get off my lawn. Uh, Alfred Morris, of course, set a Redskins franchise record his rookie year. Cracking from Hogwarts, Greg Hardy has done a really nice job. Antonio Brown has been a deep threat for a long time for the Steelers. We mentioned Tom Brady and Matt Hasselbeck. Long time center out of Harvard. Another smart kid, Matt Burke, 173rd. And if you want a 200 yard, 200,000 yard rusher, we've got that as well. Running back Terrell Davis went to the Broncos as the 196th selection in 1995. As we continue here inside Radio City Music Hall. We do this because we love it. The diehards are still with us, by the way. <laughs> Diehard fans are still here. We appreciate those guys as we power through every year. The sixth round, they are here every year. Let's get you caught up on the latest few selections. And another wide receiver is gone. It's the kid out of Wisconsin, Jared Aberderis, who's had some issues with head injuries over his career. Yeah, he has, but he has been so productive. Whenever he's out there, 100%, you watch a kid that went up against Bradley Roby. You see here the first round pick, and against Bradley Roby, 10 catches for a career high, 207 yards and a touchdown. He's a good route runner. He's got outstanding hands. He'll compete hard. He's getting off press may be an issue in the NFL. But he's got like, outstanding natural pass receiving skills. He's using more reverses, as Wisconsin did. Very effective on kickoff returns. Average almost 26 yards per return. Locates the ball. Makes the over-shoulder catch. I think the ball skills are there. Catching traffic, getting off press is going to be a problem. That's going to be a little stronger. But he's going to have Jordy Nelson to work with and learn from Jordy. Came in as a second round pick out of Kansas State, though. And he won't have to get off press because they'll play him in the slot. Think Brandon Stokely, Wes Welker. That's the kind of receiving talent he has. He's quick. He gets open, he catches the ball, and he's fearless. It's a Packers fan fired up right now. Absolutely. <laughs> the concern, though, is the concussion issue. Uh, understanding of a couple of scouts that he suffered three or four, but he says he's only had one, and he added it wasn't even that bad. So you have a discussion about what exactly is the concussion total. The race for Abadero is coming in from Wisconsin to the Green Bay Packers. We'll see what happens here. Let's move on and take a look at some other players that have been drafted. 
as we continue to get through the start of the sixth round and at the end of the team, sixth round or the beginning of the September, another defensive lineman tough going out of Alabama, defensive end Jimmy Payne. Yeah, here is another uh, player from the 33rd franchise. He is a five-time <laughs> He is a three-four left defensive end. He's got great quickness off the ball. He is a very good power player. I would have liked to have seen him be a little bit better as a pass rusher. We're seeing good highlights here. He did not do that consistently enough, but what we just saw there against Mississippi is what he does. He will stump the run, and he's in the right scheme now. He can play gaps, uh, which Alabama does at times. But the best thing he does is step in and take people on. And for the Houston Texans 3-4, that is an ideal fit. All right, so you look at the Texans. Look, they have really stuck to their board, but in much in the same way, you always say, let the board talk to you. It seems like San Francisco, St. Louis, and Houston have done that in Jacksonville really well through this three-day bus. Sticking to the template and letting the board speak to you. Absolutely. That's the way for it. Yeah. Yeah. The Texans have done a great job with their GM, Rick Smith, and new head coach, Bill O'Brien. Take a look at some other draft needs. And who's coming up? With John Jalapio out of Florida, the guard. Yeah, he's a very talented player. The, the negative is really with him is the durability. You look back over his career, he had a torn meniscus in 2012, <laughs> underwent surgery. He had a medical red shirt in 2009 just starting out. He had multiple injuries early in his career, including back. As a player, he's average in pass protection, good run blocker, though. Lower body strength, size, the tenacity you need to develop into an effective drive blocker. I think he has good awareness. He picks up most blitzes and stunts and pass protection. Locates blockers on the second level. And I really like his toughness. He's an aggressive, hard-nosed, play-through pain type of player. New England Patriots, if you look at what they've done, Brian Stork. Physical, aggressive player at the center position for Florida State with great awareness. Cameron Fleming, a developmental yeah, player that doesn't move all that well. But down the road, he's got the power and he's got the football intelligence. And Jalapio, if he can stay healthy, continue to develop, they've got another interior offensive line. Interesting linebacker. trend here. They're going more for power players than they ever have before. Could that be transitioning away from the franchise, Tom Brady? for the future when they're not quite as fast on Well, to that point, how did they win that game against the Colts? It was with Garrett Blunt and four rushing touchdowns. Tom Brady didn't have one. Keep this in mind as you look at the Patriots draft. They've drafted three offensive linemen already. Uh, Tom Brady was sacked the most in any season in 2013 since 2001. So either they're moving to power or they're trying to protect the guy while they got him for a little while longer. As we all know, mobility doesn't get better with age. Yes. And, and Tom Brady, if you force him off the spot, that's the most effective thing you can do as a defense. So they recognize they need help on the interior offensive line to try to give a little bit more protection to Brady up there. That's a very good point because for years and years, People have said in preparing for the pass, get Tom off his spot and he's a different quarterback. And the numbers showed that last year. He was about a 56% passer when he was off his spot. Now that's sacrilegious for Tom Brady. Right. So this may also be an attempt to shore up that middle a la New Orleans, keep those rushers out of the middle and give Tom a clean pocket to step into. And Bill, again, Bill Belichick and the organization, they love SEC players, the Florida Gators in particular. They have Dominic Easley, now you get how he up, got a host of others. The SEC in Florida, Belichick really gravitates to that. That's true. Uh, listen, he had a connection with Urban Meyer when he was there. We'll see if he starts going the Ohio State route now that Urban Meyer is up with the Buckeyes. But again, they're trying to protect uh, Tom Brady going forward. Really, Logan Mankins is a solid guy. It makes Solver. Uh, that they have on that offensive line. All right, you always say, kids, don't go blue. But the Texans have done that. They take Alfred Blue, the running back uh, out of LSU. What do we think about this pick? Well, he's, he's a talented back. They kind of got lost in the mix, if you will. It seems like they throw running backs on trees down in Baton Rouge. Blue, blue just wasn't getting run, so he decided, hey, it's time to go move on to the NFL. He's 6'2 and 3'8, 223 pounds. He runs pretty well. 4'6'3. Really liked his competitiveness, his determination, the fact that he only fumbled once in 348 total touches in, uh, in over his career. And then you look also at the power and balance that he brings. Now, doesn't have great lateral agility. 
improve as a blocker and in the passing game, but I feel like he's one of the best players in the key target. Runs at a good pack level and holds on to that football. That lead is as close to the NFL as you'll find in the running game. It's a fresh hole, power running lead. And he's a good back for that style of play. He's a very good complimentary back. Understands the role. He understands the right. role already. Jeremy Hill was the man. Right. That was the guy. Now Bill, Jeremy Hill was the man. And that, they had a stable of running backs who were out this day with the Bayou Bengals. By the way, I love that at LSU. I'm not getting playing time here, so I'll just go to the next level again. Oh, well, I get a better shot. <laughs> I get a better shot. Hey, for real. LSU player. Debbie Ford franchise. Exactly. Now, this is interesting. Andrew Luxem is the other corner that was opposite. Kyle Fuller at Virginia Tech. But because of injuries, these, these two really didn't play that much together in their time at Black yeah, That's a shame of it. I mean, Anton actually looked like he was primed to become an early round. He's at 5'11 and a half, 213 pounds. Best year came in 2012, his junior campaign. Led the team with five picks, 16 pass breakups. Forced a couple fumbles in the year, unfortunately. You think about this past year, injured, away from football. ACL injury, came back, then injured again, late ankle injury, November 9th against Miami, fought in play the rest of the year. Had he been able to perform his safety, cornerback, provides versatility, special teamer again, try to figure out where he fits best in terms of coverage and the system. And you know, during that time period when he's learning, first, second year, he'll help you on special teams. NFL people always look to comparison. Cam Chancellor plays the same way. Tough, physical, not quite the ball hawk, but he can run. There's, a, there's, there's some similarity there. And this is a great program for producing defensive players. Well, and you mentioned talking about late players, back-to-back uh, -back fifth round picks for the Seahawks. Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman. Talk about stealing guys late in the draft. No question. Okay. He's actually faster than Cam Chancellor. We've got another quarterback off the board. It's one that Trent likes, and I know it's one that Bill Polian <laughs> likes. David Bales out of San Jose State. There he is. He's too small. He's too <laughs> slow. He doesn't have a good arm. All he does is throw touchdowns. <laughs> All right, he transferred a couple of times. He started out at Monterey Peninsula Community College. He's 6'1 and 5'8 inches, as you alluded to, 212 pounds. Doesn't run all that well, 499 or 40. But he has fast eyes, and he can go through progressions. He has quick feet, and he's a competitor, and he's going to come in and he's going to work his tail off. He's got a lot of the intangible aspects, the durability aspects. He's stayed healthy throughout his career. And the accuracy that you look for at the quarterback position, though. The ball placement, yeah, the David Taylor, I think is excellent. It goes beyond just putting the ball in an area. He can put the ball where it needs to be placed. And to me, intermediate areas, short areas, his ball placement is as good as it gets. He can move the pocket and throw accurately. His vision is good. Same with Seward, breaking open late. And I also like his passion for the game. David Taylor cares about his team. Losing is not an option. Uh, this is a nice pick for the Chicago Bears in round six. Well, keep this in mind, too. He's the fourth San Jose State quarterback draft that took the AFL-NFL merger in 1970 and the last since Mike Perez went in 1988. But you know what you like about this kid? He went to Nevada, Bill. He ran the pistol. He was there behind Colin Kaepernick. And, and Chris Alt, the head coach there who just retired, had a very candid conversation with David and said, We like you. You're a good player. Probably never going to play here. And he's like, you know, okay, I got that. I'll go and find another place to get it done. There are a lot of people in the Mountain West Conference who say, where is David Fass going to be drafted? Where is he going to go? Because we think he's as good as the big-name quarterback who went higher. Derek Carr. And yes. Yeah. And that game, by the way, was about 67 to 62. And he went head-to-head -head with David Carr, and I thought won the back. It's an interesting situation, too, because obviously you've got Jay Cutler, but the backup that they just signed, Jordan Hall, who spent this offseason working, working with Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles. And he's a stud of a young quarterback coach, and he really understands that. And, and I think at this point in Jordan's career, he's going to be really helpful for David Bales in this situation and working with him and just being around guys that understand the game and understand some of the little mechanical things that you need to do. Also, there are two guys in the National Football League who are quarterback whisperers. Andy Reid and the coach in Chicago. Yes. Mark yeah. Trestman. Mark Trestman. Absolutely. They get the job done. If Mark believes in his kid, he'll make it. Well, just look at what he did with Josh McCown last year when he came on for Jay Cutler. He did a great thing. And Josh McCown went from a 
journeyman back after having a really good opportunity to do some things in Tampa when they signed him in free agency. So it is David Fales now going to the Chicago Bears where he hopes not to fail. Meanwhile, we're in the sixth round. Still some big names out there. We keep you up to date when we continue. The draft rolls on from New York City. A lot of people fear you, you know. For you, it's refreshing. And refreshment is what you're searching for. Fewer calories, fewer carbs, more to look forward to. Make a low ball trip. Ball to live the old There you go. Adaptive warning brakes. Guaranteed noise free for life. Noise free. Yeah. Thanks to Napa Know How. And brakes. Dude. Sorry about last night. Are you still mad at me? They don't make a sound. Breaks. Come on, I get out. I get out. Insist on adaptive one breaks. Efficiency. Performance. Safety. Integrated technology. These are things you can learn. And then there are the things you're just born with. Now, well-qualified lessees can lease a well-equipped Dart SXT for $149 per month or get $2,000 cash allowance. Whoa. What do you got there? Very pomegranate meal. Do I just squirt a little? Or you can squirt a lot. It really changes your water. It changes everything. Mio. <laughs> Supermarkets, a shopper's paradise. But this is guys' grocery games where chefs have to think, shop, and cook fast. This game show, finding ingredients won't be easy. Out of stock. Budgets can make or break them. And if they don't cook up a killer meal, they're going to have to check out. Guys, grocery games. All new season, all new games. Premieres tomorrow night at 8. Only on Food Network. Stand back, Sophia. Behold, the Craftsman Tractor. With an industry leading 6 inch turning radius that's 66% tighter than a John Deere tractor. And with a top speed of 7.5 miles per hour, it's 26% faster. It's the antidote to other tractors. That's the quality and innovative performance you can expect from Craftsman, exclusively at Sears. Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. Well, we continue here inside Radio City Music Hall as we are in the sixth round. We'll keep you updated on all the picks as they are announced across the stage or by the uh, team tables. Uh, but for the moment, we are delighted to be joined by this Bud Light team, reported by the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Jim Harbaugh joins us. And Jim, we've been talking about this over the last three days. Bill Polian says it all the time. You want to let the board talk to you. And it seems like the Niners and you and Trent Baalke have done a great job of looking at the players you had on that board and addressing needs, starting with the first pick through the last that you've made so far. Yes, I think Trent did a, did a great job on exactly what Phil was talking about there, let the board talk to you. Also, uh, uh, fielded a lot of calls over the last three days. Uh, uh, Would-be trades, trades that we made, it was, uh, it was, it was quite, a, quite a, a flurry. Uh, and Todd and shaved and shaved in about three days, and uh, I have newfound respect for all those people that trade for a living. Uh, watching Trent go, go through the last three days, uh, it was it was impressive, and he did a great job. It was quite a game of pinochle, Jim. You guys made five yeah. trades 
in one day, and you got back a pick you had traded away in the fourth round. Um, listen, it, it seemed like as we went through the, the early picks here, you obviously addressed the secondary because you have three fourths of your starting yeah. secondary go. You get this, the kid Jimmy Ward out of Northern Illinois. And then it seemed like you also went for a couple of linebackers because obviously there's some concern there with Alden Smith and Navarro Bowman coming back from injury. Yes, I mean, uh, you, you, you said a lot of, a lot of the things there. Um, and I, I just want to say this, that uh, congratulations to everybody that is involved in this process, and, uh, especially the families and especially the youngsters who, this is so exciting. This is such a, a signature day, such a life-changing changing event. And talking on the phone to, to the youngsters and their, their parents, uh, to screams and yells in, in the background, and just, just the excitement and the joy uh, that this process has brought has, has been uh, been a great thing to be a, be a part of. Right. And certainly, as you see those raw emotions here at Radio City Music Hall, whether the kid walks across the stage or you have the shot of him with his family somewhere, it means so much to them. Uh, it, means, it means a lot to me, too. Because uh, and I'm, 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 we're going to do then I'm going to get to coach these guys. That, uh, they're going to be a part of our team and can't wait to, to meet them tomorrow. And some of these guys are going to see them out there on, on, the, on the field on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, as for all the, all the youngsters that we, we took today and the ones that, that we will be signing as college free agents, uh, I just want to let you know I can't wait to coach you. Well, Carlos Hyde is a guy that certainly stood out to us as we watched the board fall. You, you know how times have changed uh, in college football and the way uh, running backs are drafted. We didn't have a drafted running back in the first 50 picks, the first time ever in draft history. A uh, uh, running back has waited that long to hear his name called. But Hyde is a guy, if you go back 10 years, Jim, he might have been a top 15 pick. I think he's an excellent football player. Um, had a great year this year at Ohio State. And know a little bit about the Big Ten. So uh, as a fellow Big Ten, I'm, I'm welcome, uh, happy to welcome the Buckeye. Absolutely, and he only comes in with 500-plus carries, so you know he's still got fresh legs. I got a guy here that knows a little thing or two about building a team. Bill Polian is here with me, and he wants to ask you a question, Jim. Jim, you, you had a great success with a rookie safety last year. Where do you see Jimmy Ward stepping in? And playing for you this year. Is he going to play in the nickel? Will he play back deep? How do you figure to use it? Oh, Mr. Polian. Um, great to see him. J Jimmy Ward is going to compete in our secondary. Um, not putting any expectations on it. They, other than we're going to have a very competitive secondary. Uh, initially, day one, he's going to be uh, an understudy as a safety and competing at the, the nickel position. I uh, feel like he has a lot of versatility, can cover slots, uh, track the ball downfield. He's played in the, in the deep part of the field. He's made plays there. He's made plays in the box as a safety. He's got a knack, in our opinion, of call it great instincts. He sees a play you know, one step before everybody else sees it, and he's, he's already moving and taking that step. Um, I also love the way he tackles. He's got a, a knack of getting guys down, but he's also got a way of uh, making the appropriate tackle uh, with some force, with some violence. And uh, I think he really loves football. That's um, what, what I base that on. I base that on watching him play the game of football. Uh, a lot of guys, there's some guys you see that will take a play off and may not uh, uh, be hustling on a play, and you make an excuse for that. But uh, not with Jimmy Ward. You never see him take a play off. And any game that you watch on him on tape, uh, you know, is his, is his best game. That's just the way he plays football. You don't have to say what's your best game. The way he plays each week is, is uh, the way he plays. Jim, obviously there are concerns about Alden Smith and whether or not he'll see the field in, in how many games this year, whether it's a suspension by the league or something in the legal system. How are the 49ers preparing for the idea that Alden Smith may not be there for a large chunk in 2014? Alden's been here uh, working out in our off-season program, so we're with him, with him uh, hourly, daily, and uh, that's that's how we're going about preparing. He's he's uh, doing his job. Then of course you make the big trade to get Stevie Johnson from Buffalo. What did you like about him to bring him over from the Bills? Production, 
Um, and uh, I like him. Uh, I've always admired him. I've always thought he was a, a heck of a football player. His team is from San Francisco. Uh, went to junior, junior college here in the Bay Area. I think um, you know, this has, some, has a chance to be something special. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting him tomorrow. So uh, we'll get started on Sunday. Jim, Jim, how is Marcus Lattimore coming along in his rehab? And if, if you think he's going to be ready, uh, he's coming along well. Uh, been out on the practice field for the last two weeks, and uh, he's nobody works harder at it. And uh, if anybody can do it, it's going to it's going to be Mar Marcus Lattimore. Uh, he's still uh, still in the process and watching him play football, watching him. 11-on-11 11 11 football is, is something that he has not done uh, for quite a while. So, uh, again, I'm not going to put any expectations on it other than saying that uh, the way Marcus is wired, uh, the way he works, kind of person he is, that if anybody can come back from the injury he had, it will be Marcus. Well, certainly anybody that saw that injury is pulling for Marcus a lot more. Jim, we appreciate the time, and I'm sure we'll talk to you down the road. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. All right, stay with us. The draft rolls on from Radio City Music Hall, midway through the sixth round. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. This is no time for a change of heart because before contracts with our size of Texas, a man's word meant something. So get back out there and show them what you got. That's going to Grab a seat. The game is on. I take Privacy Go DC each morning for my freaking heartburn. Because you can't beat the sea of a heartburn. Privacy Go TC is the number one doctor recommended for heartburn medicine for eight straight years. One pill each morning, 24 hours, zero heartburn. That was actually pretty cool. That's when he's hungry. You're not you when you're hungry. Snake of Satisfies. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Acadia, the first in passenger crossover to offer an EPA estimated 24 highway miles per gallon. The first in the industry to offer a front center airbag. And during the GMC Spring Sales event, you can be one of the first to take advantage of professional grade offers on most 2014 GMC models. This spring, lease this GMC Acadia for around $299 per month. When you're ready to turn up your night, turn to Bud Light Black, the next generation of smooth. Brewed with top shelf ingredients for a bold, slightly sweet finish. Turn up your night and make it platinum. Okay, so everybody's going to have their new security card in their mailbox on Friday. Because if you look at our chart here, that key gets your every Locks. Under the locks. So if you will, um, never mind chart. Where is it? Pie chart, where did that is? Charlie and Sunday. GFTM is covered the 2014 NFL draft presented by Bud Light and brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And Buffalo Wild Wings. We be sports.
We continue inside Radio City News at all three. We go back all the time with Shea and Mel Factor Jr. Let's get you caught up on the last few picks. Minnesota with quarterback Kendall Maine. Kendall James out of Maine. Mel, one of your favorite players goes to the Bucks. Wide receiver Robert Heron out of Wyoming. Nice player. And Todd likes him as well. He can fly. I mean, he's got the ability to catch the ball through a lot of open field. He can beat you down the field vertically. And he's a tough kid. Yeah, really productive, too, when you look at him. T.J. Uh, Jones, wide receiver out of Notre Dame, goes to the Lions. Matt Hazel, Chanticleer Pride once again. And then we take a look at Kendall James here, what we're talking about the cornerback. Well, we've got to go back to the draft labs with Pick Shea and I. We had to pick a guy who was under the radar. Kendall James, the guy I liked all year. Things were reluctant to throw at James. Just the kid proves himself early on. Colonial Athletic Association, Bill Polio knows, has produced a lot of players that moved on and played a very high level in the NFL. 5'10 and a half, 180 pounds, tremendous speed, runs in the 4'4", the 4'4", range consistently, vertical is 39 inches, he can come in, transition as a dime, work his way up, Kendall James has NFL ability. By the way, it's Robert Haran, they're not telling us is the pronunciation there. As you look at the picks by the Minnesota Vikings, finishing up with Kendall and James, the cornerback out of Maine. As we continue to weave our way through the last few selections, here's Robert Haran, the wide receiver out of Wyoming. Robert Haran, only 5'9", 193 pounds, but he runs in the 4'4", 4'4", 80 was timed at. And I just like his suddenness. He's a quick twitch athlete who can get in and out of his breaks quickly. As you see there, he catches the ball, pucks it on the run, transitions up the field quickly. So here's a guy you got to get the ball and let him make plays with it after the catch. He was very productive. You go back last year, 937 receiving yards. The year before, averaged 21.2 yards. I like his ball skills. I like his big play ability. I think he has a chance to develop into a good contributor as a slot receiver. Certainly hoping so, as uh, Aron, of course. All run speed. Oh, there's point. no question about that. Listen, they, they got an all rebounding team already with Mike Evans, Austin Safari, Jenkins, Fitz. Vincent Jackson already there, Mike Glennon. This is yeah. the shooting guy. There you go. You, well, you got to have someone to distribute the ball at some point. Uh, as we move forward, if you look at the Tampa Bay selections and what they've done now, is they've taken Robert Brown, the wide receiver, out of Wyoming. I can tell you that Robert Griffin III is very happy because he's reunited with his Baylor running back, Lake Seastrunk. All he did was average 9.1 yards per rush last season before getting injured. First Baylor back ever, back-to-back. Thousand yard seasons. There you go, another bale of bear for you. What you just saw is a Chase, uh, C Strunk's uh, strong suit in spades. He is speed, world class speed. And it's a great fit with the Washington Redskins because he is not a shake and bake runner. He will be great as a downhill one cut runner and get up the field and use that world class speed. And as you can see here, He's got some toughness. He'll break tackles. But the most important thing with him is he is a big-time home run hitter. You hope you can coach him to catch the ball and get more involved in the passing game where he can be a weapon. Well, he could be. I'm not sure that it's necessary. He's a guy that coached the, 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 the man. Just saw a little shake and bake there in that highlight, so we'll see what happens. The Reds are loading up on the town, maybe provide a little uh, rest for Alfred Morris when Lake Seastrom comes into the game. That continues from here. It also continues from Bristol. And for that, we say hello to Susie Coffey. Hey, Susie. Hi, Trey. And let's talk a little Buffalo Bills because they certainly kicked off their draft with a bang as we welcome in general manager Doug Whaley. And, Doug, your head coach had talked about wanting a bold move or moving up in the first round, giving up your number one next year. The wide receiver Sammy Watkins is certainly bold. What was behind this? Well, we just believe that we need to surround our quarterback, E.J. Manuel, with playmakers. And we felt that Sammy Watkins was the best playmaker in the draft. And I wanted to go and prove out our coach wasn't a liar. So we made this bold move, and uh, we, we think we'll, we, we did the right thing for the Bills Nation. Well, let's hit rewind, because before the draft even began on Thursday, we traded Stevie Johnson to the Niners. What was the thinking there? Well, actually, the draft happened uh, on the next day after the first day, and it was uh, just a, a, a combination of things that we thought were mutually beneficial for every party involved, be it Stevie, San Francisco, and us. And every decision we make is for the best interest of Buffalo Bills going forward, and they erase this playoff drop that we have. Doug, all the days are blending together. 
Forgive oh, me. Trust me, I definitely know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I don't even know if it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's it's definitely Groundhog Day. I do know tomorrow is Mother's Day. But after the Watkins pick, you went very heavy offensive line. So what does that say about what you expect from EJ? We expect a, a, a nice leap, and I always believe there's a, a great transition from first year to second year because most rookies don't know what to expect when they come into an NFL camp or NFL uh, program. So he's been in it for a year, so he knows what is expected of him on and off the field. Before I let you go, let's just hit on, on offensive tackle Cyrus Quanjo of Alabama because there were some concerns coming in about injury, about his knee, and, and I know he wanted to put some of those things to rest. You certainly vetted it out. What did you find? We found uh, that uh, our medical staff did their due diligence and they were comfortable with uh, everything that came back from the research that they did. Uh, we also looked at uh, his time missed and his games that he missed and they were minimal, so maybe none. So we uh, feel his availability will not be a problem. Sounds good, Doug. We appreciate the time. One more pick to go, right? Before you wrap things up. Well, Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are ready just as much as we are. Except then we don't have to deal with unrestricted free agents after that. <laughs> good luck the rest well, of the way, Well, that's the fun Doug. part. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. <laughs> Sounds good. And for this time of the year, every team has the same type of optimism. Hopefully, the Bills put that drought to rest. The Cleveland Browns have traded the fourth pick to the Buffalo Bills. With the fourth pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Sammy Watkins, wide receiver, Clemson. That is evil in this world. <laughs> Latte or Olay? Cozy or cool? Or exactly the way you want it. Until boom. It's bedtime. Your mattress is a battleground of thwarted desire. Enter the all new Sleep Number Classic Series, designed to let couples sleep together in individualized comfort. Starting at just $699.99 for a queen mattress. Here's the softest. The Sleep Number setting is 35. You're the rock, 60. And snoring? Sleep Number's even got an adjustment for that. Find your Sleep Number setting only at a Sleep Number store. No better sleep. with Sleep Number. Photography, it's about capturing the moment. It's holding your breath until something takes it out of you. It's performance without hesitation, which is exactly what you get with a tablet powered by Intel. <laughs> What you're looking at is the world's largest off-road lineup. Ranger, Sportsman, Racer, all industry leaders, and all on sale now. Sportsman start at just $51.99. Racers under ten dollars Rangers start at $89.99. Top of the line, XP900s come with a free winch. Take your pick of the off-road bets with rebates as high as $1,300 and payments as low as $100 a month during the Polaris XP sales events. As the official hotel of the NFL, our team is constantly helping you to be great in the high-stakes world of business travel. One team, one dream. For Courtyard, the official hotel of the NFL. This season's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be best friends with that guy and that guy. We're gonna work so hard, our moves will have moves. I'm gonna make my mom proud. Good game, good game, good game. We'll be doing this a lot. We're going all the way. But I only get to play if my coaches are heads up football certified. Thank <laughs> you.
Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. Welcome back to the NFL Draft 2014 Radio City Music Hall. These are the diehards. These are the people we love. Hunter, we're in it for the long haul. Huh? Hunter perspective. You got the diehards here, too. You know, the, These are the tape junkies right here. A lot of crazies, one or the other, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, I, I would, I'd rather be nowhere else than right here with you guys today. <laughs> but the where would you rather be than right here, right, right now? now yeah. As we go through the last few people drafted, we told you about late sea shrug. Bennett Jackson, quarterback out of Notre Dame, goes to the Giants. E.J. Gaines, quarterback out of Mizzou, staying for a home game for him, going from Columbia to St. Louis. Told you that T.J. Jones, the wideout out of Notre Dame, going to the Lions. By the way, they had a big problem with drops last year, and it's the second straight year they drafted a wide receiver from Notre Dame. They took Theo Riddick in the sixth round last year. Pat O'Donnell. Hey, punter! The first punter is off the board. 4-6-2, 40-yard dash, most reps, 23, the bench press of all the specialists, in case you're interested. Uh, I am, in fact. Uh, and then we got Jordan Sumwall, Zach Fulton, Keith Wedding, by the way, the first Ball State quarterback draft since Nate Davis, and only the third all-time, Mark O'Connell, back in 1981. And Brandon Dixon, the quarterback, is also off the ball. But let's go back to T.J. Jones and what we think about his game. T.J. Jones is a very interesting prospect. He's a guy who can fly. He's got very good speed. As you can see here, he's got home run speed. And he also can run good routes. He's strong and competitive. He'll get off press. He'll block very well. And he adds this dimension, which is big time speed. Had they had a stable quarterback situation at Notre Dame this year, which they did not, obviously, he would, I think, have gone a lot higher in the draft. He's a guy that's going to come in, I think, and make a team, as we see him here, get off press. He's strong, he's physical, he'll fight you. Red zone receiving, get up there and get the ball, nice hands. This is a good player and a good fit. One of the most reliable pass catchers, in, I think, in this class. Really reliable with every kind of throw over his head, adjusting behind his back. He caught everything. You know, we talk a lot about some boards. I think the Lions draft is very intriguing with Karan Reed, Kyle Van Noy. Now they get T.J. Jones and they have Eric Ebert. There's a lot of potential in this group that the Lions have put together so far. You know what Jim Caldwell's motto is? Yeah. Smart, fast, physical. Princeton, Kyle Van Noy. Yeah, that'll work. They've got that going for you. Okay, let's get you up to date on some of the other picks. Matt Hazel out of Coastal Carolina now. Went for Jarvis Landry and the Dolphins did earlier in the draft. Now they get Matt Hazel. Get out of Coastal Carolina who had a 183 career reception put them number one in school history. You got Jerome Simpson. Now you got Matt Hazel. Body control is excellent. Love the way he tracks the ball when going vertical. He tracks it extremely well. Made some tough catches that I saw. Good hands. Decent speed. He's not a sprinter. He's not a burner. He's a 4-5 guy. 36 and a half vertical. Solid in those areas. Dominated that level of competition. He will make Miami's football team. Matt Hazel is a guy when I brought up the teams, the non-1A players that have a chance, he was one of the guys that was immediately mentioned. Keep an eye on Matt Hazel, Jeff Janet, Saginaw Valley is another one. Figured to be a late-round picker, a priority free agent. Good to see a kid like Matt Hazel, who was so productive in Coastal Carolina, get a chance at a sixth-round pick with the Miami Dolphins. And their fifth round pick again, Jordan Tripp coming in with a chip on his shoulder, four-year starter for the Grizzlies. Believes the only reason he's not a first round pick is because he went to Montana instead of Texas or Alabama. All right, up next it's Jordan Sumwalt, the outside linebacker going to Pittsburgh out of UCLA. He's six four, two thirty-five. You really find him on the tape when you look at Bob. And he makes a lot of plays. He can run four seven. As you can see there, he's a tough guy. He can play inside or out. He's got the ability to blitz. He's got good tackling ability in the open field. He runs well. The thing I like about him is he's all football player. He mixes it up. So you can put him inside at that size in a 3-4 or a 4-3 and still have a guy who can make plays or you can put him outside. He's got a lot of versatility, and I'm certain he'll help on special teams because he runs well. Here you see that great anticipation and the knockout hit. This is a tough, tough football player. 
and he didn't get, I don't think, the respect that he deserved. Because when you look at the film, he jumps at it. He, he's got nasty in this game. It's Pittsburgh Steelers want to bring some more, some nasty back, if you will, to their defense, and that's what he, he's going to come in special teams and they contribute right away and try to make that roster as a contributing defensive player. But again, you know, it just seems like when you look at this Steelers draft, we're regaining our identity. Yes. We're going to find attacking players on defense, a couple of weapons on offense, and that's how we're going to build this thing and get a little stronger up front as well. It's a catapult draft yeah. for them. Get them back where they want to be. They don't want to be 8-8. They don't want to be on the outside looking in. This draft, Bill, to go a long way. You got the quarterback. You got a franchise quarterback. You got a couple of Super Bowl rings. This draft to put them in a position to get back where they want to be. Speaking of quarterbacks, the other one that's gone off the board is Keith Wedding out of Ball State. First one since Nate Davis to be drafted out of Ball State. I like this guy. Keith Wedding is a developmental prospect who comes from a spread system, a little bit of a three quarter delivery. He can work on his mechanics, doesn't always step to his target, doesn't always transfer his weight, but correctable things. What you like, 6'2 and a half, 218, fits the prototype. The four year starter at Ball State, won a lot of football games, 11,000 plus yards he passed for, and he was durable throughout his career. Drives the ball down the field and outside the hashes, he has the arm. And I thought, while well, he's not a good athlete, a great athlete, and doesn't run a fast 40, so good pocket awareness and the ability to elude some defenders. So Gary Kubiak comes in as the new offensive coordinator, bringing a quarterback who can compete for probably that third job behind Joe Flacco, Tyrod Taylor, and see where it goes. Tyrod uh, Taylor's going to be a free agent. Exactly. This is a perfect guy to bring in to groom to be the backup because he has enough arm to make those down the field throws did not start at quarterback until his senior year in high school, so you know he's got some potential to grow. Had only two scholarship offers, one to play linebacker at Arizona at Air Force and the other one to play quarterback at Ball State. That worked out for him. He's now a member of the Baltimore Ravens. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Sierra, the first 4x4 pickup to offer a gas V8 engine that gets an EPA estimated 22 highway miles per gallon. The first to offer an innovative cargo bed with LED lighting. And now during the GMC Spring Sales Event, all 2014 GMC Sierras are specially priced, so you get thousands off MSRP. This month, use your special value pricing to get over 8,300 total value on this specially equipped GMC Sierra SLE. I'm Johnny Williams, and my dream was to have a beer with my friends at America's Highest Bar. Shock Top made it happen. Shock Top, Belgian style unfiltered weed. Live life unfiltered. <laughs> Celebrate Mom with Bud and Bloom or Classic Roses, just six ninety eight at Lowe's. Why do results matter so much? It's probably because they are the measurement of everything you do. For a wireless company, results come down to coverage, speed, and legendary reliability. So go ahead, stream, game, video chat. That's why Verizon built America's largest 4G LTE network. Because the only thing that really matters are the results you get. So for the best devices, the best network, and for best results, use Verizon. What a catch! You are 19.79. If you lose touch with your roots, it's time for a little family reunion. Sunday Night Baseball, Cardinal Pirates, and it presented by Taco Bell. Baseball rules on ESPN. You play hard. You work hard, and you feel it in your joints. Fight back with the original copperware. Therapeutic copper compression sleeves designed to help relieve your sore, stiff muscles and joints. It's very important for me to stay active and pain free. Copperware is so great because it helps with compression and brings recovery to the sore area. Copperware is comfortable compression, scientifically engineered with a powerful copper embedded performance fabric that starts working the moment you slip it on. My life has changed because of copperware. It's a heaven sign. Don't live with joint and muscle aches or limited mobility for one more minute. Get your choice of one compression elbow sleeve or knee sleeve for just $19.99. Order right now and we'll send you a second knee or elbow sleeve. 
Just pay additional processing and handling. Get your two copperware sleeves today for just $19.99 plus processing and handling. And get moving again. To order copperware, call 1-800-365-0354 or go to copperware.com. Call now. Inside Radio City Music Hall, we continue to work our way through the 2014 draft. 200 picks are gone, 56 left to go as we're closing out the end of the sixth round. It was a busy Thursday and an anxious Thursday for Johnny Manziel. All smiles when he came in. Had to wait a little while and have a few nervous laughs in the green room before he finally got the call. At 22, he was going to the Cleveland Browns and, of course, making the money signal one more time as he walked across the stage to get his picture taken with Commissioner Roger Goodell, Johnny Manziel at 22 going to the Cleveland Browns. For more on Johnny Manziel and what he means to the franchise, let's bring in ESPN business reporter Darren Rebell. Darren, look, for a million reasons, Johnny Manziel is not just another draft pick. He was a commodity when he was at Texas A&M and became a celebrity. With that in mind, we've heard about Manziel Mania and over 2,500 new season tickets sold to Cleveland since they drafted him. How can we quantify him from a marketing and sales standpoint right now? Well, Trey, you obviously talked about those uh, tickets sold. That was in the first 18 hours uh, at 11 o'clock on Friday morning. The team opened up, opened up their store to sell jerseys. Uh, they haven't told us how many jerseys they did sell, but Fanatics, the largest online retailer in the U.S. selling sports equipment, told us, listen to this, in the first 24 hours, they sold more Johnny Manziel gear, more Johnny Manziel gear, then RG3 and Andrew Luck here in the first 24 hours after they were drafted. Now, Nike has Blake Bortles. Uh, they signed uh, um, Carr. They signed all the quarterbacks, including Teddy Bridgewater as well. But Johnny Football is the guy they're going after. They're selling these Johnny Football shirts. They have Johnny Football digital ads. Uh, they put up a version of the digital ad by Penn Station within hours of him being drafted. And there are opportunists all over the place. There is a guy who, in March, who lives in Ohio, who filed for the trademark Johnny Football on March 29th, and he's hoping, we spoke to him, he's hoping that he can cash in on that. Well, I'm pretty sure Johnny will have some cash to throw his way if he feels so inclined. So clearly he is a celebrity. He is more than just a quarterback. He is a guy that draws in people. He's one of the reasons we had almost 10 million viewers on Thursday night, the most we've ever had for a draft. It wasn't Benny. It was Johnny Football calling the 22. With that in mind, how does Manziel's brand stack up to the rest of the draft teams? Well, the stack that I like the most went to uh, Beckett, uh, which which, which looks at cards and, and the card prices. And take a look at this. They told us that the average Johnny Manziel card has sold for $165. Uh, and then you compare it to other uh, players here, uh, over $100 more than the others. So you just look at that. Johnny Manziel is Johnny Cash. It is very clear. And obviously, the business world, Nike, everyone who has a partnership with him just can't wait to do more business. Obviously, though, he has to do well on the field to do better. Well, no question. He's got to walk the line if you're going to play the Johnny Cash card, Darren, to make sure that that is worth something. Otherwise, somebody might have thanked you, Bill. Otherwise, somebody might have spent 166 bucks for nothing of importance. All right, he is <laughs>
and even cataclysmic events like gravel. The durable, removable 3M paint defender system. Protect yourself. Now at these retailers. Hey, Dad. Yeah, you oh, win. Is it cheap? Yeah. Right. I heard you tell Mom that wires are ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been the same thing. Nobody ever directed have to see those wires anymore. But are my wires ugly? No. Buddy, no. Your yeah, wires. What they do. Oh, man. Yeah. What? Oh, see? It can fly. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, you don't need to see cable wires and boxes in every room. Call 1 800 TV. The pit crushed the tiny 58 minutes ago, we gave him a Bud Light and asked if he's up for whatever. Then this happened. So let's see the arms. You all look up on that very good. And the beautiful girls. Bud Light, the perfect beer for when you're challenged to ping pong by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Dressed like an 80s superstar we can't mention by name because of legal reasons we can't get into right now. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. See more at up for whatever happens. Yeah. 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 I remember. I think it's 201. Yeah, 201. 201. The NBA playoffs. Heat Nets at 80s are on ABC. Spurs Pacers at 10.30 on ESPN. Good night. Golf Smith, anything for golf. On an all new Guys Grocery Games, this Mother's Day, it's a Triple G salute to moms. Today, it's all about honoring mom. We know that you devoted moms and very talented chefs. My boys are going to be so proud. I'm home to bring it home to make it, baby. Over the top crazy. It's the mother of all shows. Oh, this, is, this is a special day. I thought I'd bring a very special person in my life. Yeah, that's my mom. Yeah. As Guys Mom kicks off a brand new season. Tell them, Mom. Don't get the lady. That's the lady. All new season, all new games. For yeah. most tomorrow night at 8, only on Food Network. Yeah. Welcome back to the 2014 NFL Draft, presented by Bud Light. <laughs> back with the inside, with the inside of the ball, so we go to the man who cheats the play. Everybody come, let's get it. I can't see what they had, even though it's not my favorite. Now, of course, we got Brandon Dixon, the cornerback out of... That's the magic number. He's got really good ball skills. He's got excellent ability to uh, charge. He's tough and mix it up. This is a pretty good level of play in Northwest Missouri, by the way. It's not up the top of a Division three. Uh, program, it can turn out some pretty good players. Yeah. Here's a scoop and score. Can you get an idea? I just read it. It's probably a term they think of it later, like after the thing. That's a position that they're hurting in, and this is a good team. I think it's 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 a good team. Again, Dakota Dozier, the cello player, 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 the cello
the Paladins also have to take the look at some of the other players, including Dimitri Goodson, who is a quarterback out of Bayer, who has a lot of interest in his team. Playing the back and forth for Gonzaga in the next game week. They they doing the recap on their mic show. Team for the Zags in 2009. They're doing the recap on their mic show. When he was a member of the Zags basketball team, he transferred in 2011 to Baylor to play football and just keep, kept getting better and better. This past year had his best season, three interceptions, 13 pass breakups. His older brother, Mike Gibson, is currently a running back for the New York Jets. He's had all kinds of issues, by the way. Yes, this guy keeps getting better and better with his eyes, his natural instincts. You see the ball skills there. I just like how smooth of an athlete he is and the potential he has to develop and grow and get better. This is a good place for him in the Green Bay. They can work with him. Don't necessarily have to use him immediately on defense, get some special teams. He's got a chance to really develop and become something. He can cover one-on-one, -on -one, which is why he fits the Green Bay system yes. perfectly. Well, if you look at the Packers' picks, it's just hilarious about Goodson. He was averaging 5.2 points and 2.6 assists as a junior, and he said to Mark Few, I'm going to go play football. I was like, what? You're going to be watching on Halloween? And sure enough, he goes to play football, and now, ladies and gentlemen, he's drafted by the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, we take a look at other people drafted, and ladies and gentlemen, it's first, Zach Moore, the defensive end out of the Concordia St. Paul. He's the first player from Concordia St. Paul to be drafted in the NFL. Now, he goes to Bill Belichick. We got a lot better up there than New England with Bill. I think you look at Zach Moore, 670 pounds. As you look at the Patriots selection, this is what Moore had to say, quote, there are several Concordias, so people typically question where the school is located. Not too many people have heard about it. I'm trying to help our small program get, none, get known. Mission accomplished, sack. 21 sacks, twice being named first team Division II All-American for the Golden Bears. Zach Moore, now a member of the New England Patriots. Ladies and gentlemen, allow us to roll off the tongue for you. Offensive tackle, Laurent Duvernay, Tardif, out of McGill, Mel. He developed, obviously, with a 255 linebacker defensive line when he came to McGill. He's about to show one more way to fix the job. Moved to the offensive line, smart hitting, tremendously intelligent young man, good feet, a great tackle for each West Shrine game. Bob knows all about that. Uh, this is a kid that you can develop two, three years down the road, and they have something. He's about 6'5", 321 at East West, probably going to go around 305, 310 when he shows up. He's the second player ever drafted from McGill, which is in uh, Montreal. We still don't have a player drafted from Texas. He's majored in medicine, by the way, and he says uh, there are other people in the CFL that say he's going to be the top-ranked prospect for this year's CFL draft, which comes your way May 13th. So he can either go play in the NFL as a six-round pick, or he can be the top pick in the CFL draft. And, of course, the other player uh, drafted out of McGill was Randy the East-West Shrine game traditionally brings in the best player in Canada, the best prospect in Canada. And believe it or not, many of them get a shot in the NFL and make it for a little while. Hey, Mike Shack came out of there in 1996 as a first-round pick. I remember getting a bill with the L.A. Rams. And you think about Akeem Hicks not long ago. You think about Vaughn Martin. So they had that guy in the Canadian hey, right. Concordia St. Paul in the house. McGill in the house. Texas has yet to be hooked. Then we take a look at Marion Bryce out of Arizona State. I really like Marion Bryce's tape because he's versatile, he catches the ball well, and he does all the little things. Now, when you look at him, the power doesn't have great power, 208 pounds, but he runs hard. And he drives his legs after contact, he fights for extra yards, and the receiving skills. Not even really catches the last two years. He's averaging around 10 yards per catch. 
he really knows in terms of his instincts in the open field, how to elude defenders and when to make the cut back. I, I think he's a good football player. Durability is a concern. Missed the last three games with a broken left fibula, but I think he's going to be fine. Missed the senior bowl, unable to work out. If he's back and ready to go, I think he's going to wind up making this team for the, for the San Diego Chargers. Passing game contributions important for the Chargers. They don't have a reliable third down back besides with it. And this guy will be a good back. I think that's right All right, we move on to another pick. Andrew Jackson, the inside linebacker. Out of the Hilltoppers of West. Kentucky goes to the Indianapolis Colts. He was very productive during his career at Western Kentucky. I make a lot of stops during his college career. Made big plays as well because that's what he makes the tackle. But it's always with that 260 pounds he's got behind it. And always break down in space, but he's very great on the weak foot to his size. If you're not going to make a little bit of a little bell, you can stop the lateral pursuit at 260. We'll match it up in coverage. But between the tackle, as that run suffers, that could be made great to take one of the guard center. Big kid who had, like I say, a very productive, solid career at Western Kentucky. Ton of tackle, well over 100, forced fumbles, got behind the line of scrimmage as well. All right, then, of course, Andrew Jackson, by the way, went to the same high school in Lakeville, Florida, as Ray Lewis. So he has a warm on for a long time to look up to and figure out how to tackle in high school. And he's looking forward to seeing if he can live up to those days. Another Stanford player is up for, and this one is fascinating. It's running back Tyler Gaffney out of Stanford going to Carolina, Todd. And here he is playing baseball. He was good enough. To come to Stanford and play baseball, that's a national program. They compete for national titles. Here you see him with a gaffer. <laughs> you just wanted to call some baseball. No, no. <laughs> I've actually seen him play baseball. I you have. And here he is with a great catch. He played for professional baseball and left the football program. Came back this year. If you want a hard runner, a guy who goes north and south, who gets every yard there is to get, it's Tyler Gaffney. He does not have big speed. He does not have big shake and bake. He's got great vision and the best one of maybe any big time back in America. He doesn't have the measurables to make it, which is why he's in this round. I would not bet against him. Here's what I love about Tyler Gaffney, if you'll allow me, Todd, for a second here. During that 2012 minor league season in the New York Penn League, he was hit by a pitch an unbelievable 20 times in just 38 games. At one point, one pitcher threw behind him, he looked at the pitcher, smiled, moved closer to the plate, took one off the shoulder, smiled, walked to first base. He's a double major in sociology and psychology, and he said, smiling goes a long way. I like pressing people's buttons. Tyler Gaffney will get inside your grill, and he will take one for the team, either running the ball or standing at the plate. Stay with him. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Sierra, the first 4x4 pickup to offer a gas V8 engine that gets an EPA estimated 22 highway miles per gallon. The first to offer an innovative cargo bed with LED lighting. And now, during the GMC Spring Sales Event, all 2014 GMC Sierras are specially priced, so you get thousands on MSRP. This month, use your special value pricing to get over 8,300 total value on this specially equipped GMC Sierra SLE. Я покажу тебе на мельке кусочки. А затем посыплю ей на вашу чашу I have no idea what you're saying, but count me in. Welcome to the friendly, Dad. I've been hearing good things about Sprint's new network. Oh, it's unbelievable. If you want to try cool, better cool quality, it's fast. These are Google as your anchor. Hey. You can also text. Yeah, Thank you. Tony and Barton. I'm very excited. Uh, What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. 
No problem. You 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 waited long enough. How did the call go? Uh, it, it went good. Uh, they called me, uh, you know, to congratulate me and stuff, and they let me know they was about to select me. That's cool. Who called you? You got the call from Coach McCoy, or was it the GM? It was the GM, and then they just start passing the phone to everyone else. And, you know, he said the running back scores were pretty excited. That's awesome. Yeah, you got some good ones there. Uh, Danny Woodhead, Ryan Matthews. What are you looking forward to learning from those guys when you get things started? Uh, just learn more more about the game, you know, um, some of the things that I that I can learn from those guys so I can produce myself and uh, bring my game bring my game to the table and see what I can do. That's awesome. That's Thanks. awesome. Now, has the entire draft process kind of gone the way you expected it to go? Was it different? Did it deviate? Oh, no, I was just being patient. Uh, I didn't overthink anything like that. Uh, I was just being patient. I I can't control anything, so I, I knew I couldn't control it. Then I was just being patient, just waiting for my turn. Cool, cool. And what are you looking forward to the most about being in the NFL? You know, uh, just just to compete. For the most part, just compete with guys on my team, and uh, you know, see if I can get an opportunity to play. That's dope. So, what are the what are the next immediate steps? You and the family gonna go out? When are you heading up to San Diego? What's going on in the next few days? Well, right now they told me I'm, I'm be leaving tomorrow, so you know I guess I got the rest of today to celebrate with my family. Then I leave right away tomorrow. That's cool. And how do they feel about everything? I know they're excited. Are we getting tears? We getting screaming? What what happened when you got drafted? We got we got a little bit of everything. We got tears. We got screaming. We got it all. That's cool. Now, how did you handle the entire cell phone situation? We got a question in here from Google Plus, they want to know whether or not you had a special cell phone. Did you keep that sucker charged? How did you handle that? Well, uh, no, my phone was, all, it was charged already. I wasn't doing a lot of text or anything. You know, it's just my, it just my main phone. I just had it on me in my hand the whole time. I was waiting. And I was just about to walk back inside the room, and then I got the phone call, so I started walking away. That's cool. Well, listen, man, you got, you got some pretty damn good time in there, brother. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, what can the team expect from you? The fans who are out there, what can they expect from you when you step out onto the field? I'm gonna continue doing what I was doing in college. You know, make touchdown. Okay. And what what do you think is the strongest trait that you got from college? What did Arizona State instill in you that you're gonna take to the next level? Coming out the backfield, be able to catch the football. You know, uh, be able to make plays in open space. So you you continue to be a video game basically, right? Yes. So when they give you a nickname, should we call you like Marion Video Game Grice, or like how how should that work out? Uh, I don't too know. I don't know about any nicknames or anything like that. Just, we're gonna um, have we're gonna have to wait for uh, like Ryan Matthews or one of those guys to give you a nickname on that. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, listen, I'm I'm gonna call you Video Game. Is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. All right. Ooh, have you been out to San Diego before? Uh, uh, my ball game was there last year. Right, 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 right. Now, have you so you've been in the facility and everything already? Oh no, I, I haven't. Uh, I didn't. I was just there with my team and uh, we just played there. But I was hurt, so we didn't do too much exploring around. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, listen, man, I'm gonna let you rock and roll. I'm gonna let you go, and uh, congratulations. Thanks a lot, Mr. San Diego Charger man. All right. All right. <laughs> Stay cool. Congrats. Go enjoy your family, man. Good chatting with you. All right. Thank you. Stay cool. All right.